Hello and welcome to Disc Golf Streams coverage of the European Pro Tour. Second stop, Yarva Open. Yeah. I'm I, Andrew Gum. I'm Victor Torgestad. I can't stop myself. Uh, Välkommen till Järva Open 2022. Andra stoppet på European Pro Tour. Uh, I'm sure we have a lot of Swedish viewers today, so that I'm, I'm, I'm going to switch a little bit here and there. Maybe I cannot stop myself. <laughs> so, yeah, we are super excited. And uh, it really feels like this tour is kicking, like really stepping up one notch now. Yeah, very, Coming very exciting. Uh, couldn't be more excited to be here with a uh, very proud Swede. Yeah. <laughs> As you can tell. <laughs> you see a big smile on my face today because, uh, yeah, this is going to be a huge, uh, big tournament. It's gonna we have a lot of great players. We have a course that is one of the most beautiful in the world. You have been there playing this week. Absolutely legendary yeah. place. I was there a few years ago. I fresh off the ferry this morning, was there yesterday, had an incredible time. It, it's so beautiful, so much effort's gone into it. It's perfectly designed, perfectly maintained. There's a great vibe there, so much, uh, so much excitement in the air. You can feel it. Uh, I can feel it in the studio here now. It's uh, great to have you all with us. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you tell everybody what's going on here so they don't miss a second of this action. It really feels like the everyone in the in the crew here, we in uh, us here in the studio, we are a little bit more nervous than usual. We have been looking forward for this for a long time. Everyone here has it's a little bit of a different vibe now, right now. And uh, yeah, Yarva has a special place in uh, a lot of people's hearts. Here we're gonna get a quick look at the highlights from Copenhagen, the first event on the European Pro Tour. It's been a while. Yeah, time flies. Uh, it feels like just a few weeks ago, but it was almost like two months ago now, I think. Yeah, yeah, we, we've been on the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour, and now we're heading into the European Pro Tour swing of this thing. We're going to have quite a few events in a row, actually four events in a row, starting with this Yarva Open, and then we'll have Tuni Open right here in our backyard, and uh, then the Estonian Open and the Turku Open. So lots of excitement this summer on the European Pro Tour. Definitely. Highest, highest level. Uh, competitions in Europe, 
tons of great players signed up, awesome venues. Yeah, we saw already here in Copenhagen, it was like the perfect start for this new European Pro Tour. A um, lot of um, great, exciting uh, scores. It was exciting all the way up to the top. There was some new players popping up, like uh, the winner here, Rachel Turton, who we had not seen before, and she we're excited to see more from her, not this weekend, but later on. She'll be here in tuning. Yeah, she will. Uh, yeah, it was like the perfect start, and now we have even more players. We have a bigger field. We have so many capable, like potential winners in the yeah. yeah, yeah. There's just no telling what's going to happen. We ha we have seven different nationalities represented on our feature cards today. That's. Uh, it's a yeah, beautiful we, thing. We, European disc golf is special. We saw a lot of Finns. That was not a surprise to see a lot of Finns in the in the Copenhagen. We're going to see a lot of Finns uh, this yeah. weekend as well. Yeah, in the MPO, I think eight of the top ten rated players in the field are, are Finns. So there's still going to be plenty of Finnish players, Finnish names, but sprinkled in lots of different people from all over. Lots of Swedes, lots of uh, Norwegians. We even have a Canadian, Thomas Gilbert. Happy to have him. Yeah, very nice to see that people are traveling from overseas coming here to Europe. And uh, I think uh, we're going to see more and more of like high profile players from the US and Canada coming over here eventually. Yeah, yeah I think uh, really excited about that. We just got to see Daniel Davidson. He was the winner of the Copenhagen event, the first stop on the European Pro Tour. Here he is with the sidearm approach. He played just lights out there in Copenhagen, didn't he? He was, he was completely unstoppable, even on the last round when we thought he was struggling a little bit in the, in the, in the start of that round. He, at the end, he just crushed everyone and no one was really like even close to him. Yeah, huge, huge breakout win for the young guy. He's, he's played pretty well on the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour, but he hasn't been able to match that standard that he set uh, over there in Copenhagen mm. quite yet, has he? No, he hasn't really been up in the top uh, in the same way as we, he started off this season. Uh, he did show us last weekend, though, uh, a great last round in Oulu. Uh, we didn't see him on camera, but he finished, I think he finished third after a fourth, maybe after a yeah. great last round. So he he's still there. He's going to be in the mix this weekend for sure. As the leader of the European Pro Tour, he is not going to be willing to leave that spot. Yeah, be exciting to see how it goes for him. I think he wasn't off quite to the start that we were expecting. I see, saw he had a couple of bogeys early. Uh, see where, where he's at at the moment. Yeah, might be some nerves from. Uh, he's still a young, young player with huge potential. So um, there's some kind of pressure on him, definitely stepping in here as the current leader of the tour. Yeah, not not having a great day, I guess. I think he may be over par. Uh, there is one name uh, on the FBO side uh, that is really sticking out and uh, is really in a should be in a class of her own. And who is that? Kristin Tatar, Estonian, number one player in the world. Yeah, and we mentioned here her as a favorite here in uh, in Järva. Uh, the thing is that she would be a favorite whatever competition she yeah. would step into. She's in prime form. She's a super consistent, solid player, great role model. So excited to have her on, have her on the live coverage. Yeah, I what a privilege. Yeah, that's going to be huge to watch her. I just uh, had a look at her player profile. Um, for this year, she hasn't been off the podium single at all. time. No, her worst uh, place is third this year. So uh, so consistent. Yeah, uh, she's she's gone over to the states. She's she's been quite dominant over there. Like like you said, I mean, so so consistent in, on the podium at every event. She's won so many events. She's really proven herself to be the number one player that top spot. Nine eighty two rated. I mean. What, what more can you say? Yeah, if we're going to see a female player uh, rated in, in a, like a thousand rated female player soon, I think it's going to be her. She's still improving, uh, in my eyes at least. And uh, she has like an edge to her game that I don't think anyone really has. Like we have few other female players who can play on her level, but not in any way as consistent. as Yeah, as yeah. so consistent, so mature, so composed. You know she's she's a great disc golfer and it's it's uh, going to be exciting to to see her legacy. I mean, you know she's got her her sights set on this this event first, but then you know uh, she's heading back to the states could be a favorite for the world championships this year. I think that she is most definitely a favorite for that title this year. 
and also exciting for this uh, a few younger players from Europe to to be able to play with maybe their biggest role model, uh, Kristin, showing that kind of professionalism and uh, high level of play. I really hope that she can inspire a few other players to really score well, and I would be surprised to see if she was like I don't think she's gonna be all alone there in the top. We, we are gonna we are gonna see some other players as well. And oh, I there's a whole yeah. bunch of talented uh, FPL yeah. players. We have a stacked field, really. Yeah. Yeah. Who are we gonna see today? We have uh, four different nationalities on that uh, feature card on the FPO, and it, Christine Tatar is of course gonna be there. Yeah, that's really exciting. We we also have uh, Anna Kinstein. She won the Kokodal Open. Norwegian. Yeah. Yep. We have uh, Antonia Faber, German. Yeah, German champion. Brandenburg uh, in, in Germany. Yep, fantastic player. And we also have a Swede. Yes, I'm going to pronounce her name, <laughs> Sophie Björlicke. Uh, she is the highest rated Swedish female player, as far as I know. Um, really experienced uh, coming in here as, uh, I think, maybe this one of the highest rated players she's behind, uh, she's su behind su Christine. Super high quality player. She played really well in Heatland Open. I, I recognize her from there. She was she was throwing some bombs and uh, really really incredible performance there. So she's gonna be representing Sweden here on the lead card. Today. Yeah, yeah. So such a diverse card. So many great players. They're all gonna be trying to keep pace with Kristen, I'm sure. And there's uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of players that aren't on that feature card that have a good chance at, at uh, making a run at this. An another Swede, Amanda Lennartson. She she won the uh, Heatland Open. Yeah, that's right. Yep, she's, uh, she's really talented. Ruth Schizel, really good player as well. I recognize her name from some coverage. And Silva Sarinen, she's always so exciting. She hit that incredible ace. She's always going for it. We, you know, she, she's really really fun player. And if she can uh, keep it tight, uh, she's got the talent to do anything, right? Yeah, and it's exciting to see um, a feature card on the FPO side without any fins. Yeah, yeah, and. and uh, uh, if if someone is gonna get into that lead card tom tomorrow from the, uh, of the Finnish players, I I think keep your eyes on uh, Silva Sarinen and Jenny Karpinen Jenny as Karpinen. well. Jenny Karpinen, yeah. Olivia Chinsed. Olivia Chinsed, she could definitely be there as well. So many great players. Yeah, and I was very impressed of what I saw from Jenny Karpinen uh, last weekend, just four days ago in in Oulu. She was throwing laser beams, wasn't she? Uh, just really, really great. I really, really tight. This might be a chance for her to really become a like profile on the on the bigger stage. Uh, everything I've seen from her this year has been really consistent and really she's a smart player and uh, I'm going to keep an extra eye on her scorecard this yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, it's really exciting. I mean of course Kristen Tatar the clear favorite, but uh plenty of other really talented players out there that are going to want to make a push and do everything they can to try to get on that lead card and, and try to keep pace with Kristen. Kristen. Yes, um that's our feature card on the FPO side. And what do we have on the MPO side? Not anything less than uh, super exciting. Yeah, another uh, another really diverse card. We have a, a Canadian, Thomas Gilbert, is our top rated player in the field, 1029, coming from Toronto. Uh, first time in Europe, just just arrived this week. That's and true. He has, this is his third day ever on European soil. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. so I if he's not too jet lagged and uh, and performs well. I'm, I'm sure we'll we'll see some uh, great scores from him. Yeah, he's such a high quality player. He has been scoring so well on the on the pro tour in 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 US this year. Starting off already in Las Vegas, uh, in the top there. So he he's going to be someone to really watch out for. Yeah, he's definitely yeah. made a great name for himself over there. Of course, we have uh, Seppo Payu, the Finnish hero. Everybody he's knows him. He's always with us here on Disco Stream. He's fun so. to watch. Yeah. He does incredible things. Always, you know, er, even if he's not having his best round, his his uh, his skills are so amazing. He always displays that, and uh, definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, let's have a look at this uh, oh, uh, flyover, uh, and uh, probably going to see some uh, some uh, stats here about the course before we mention the two. Yeah, we'll come right back player. to that to yep. that MPO uh, feature card that we're talking about. But look at this course. Uh, I have to admit, uh, it's a bit embarrassing, but I haven't been there myself, even though I'm actually born in Stockholm. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to play Jarva. But uh, you have. Uh, so please tell us a little bit more about what we're seeing here. 
Right here, we're seeing the island hole, hole five. It's the shortest hole on the course. It's a must-get birdie, really, but uh, lots of things can go wrong. It's, the island's very generous on the right side, uh, kind of like if you were trying to just play it safe. If you're trying to go to get it, put it really close, you can see how close this OB is on the backside. And this, this basket is on a mound, so uh, you can easily end up OB and have to go to the drop zone. Drop zone is very difficult. This is such a beautiful place right here, the tee pad of 12. You can see all the surrounding area, such a diverse landscape. Uh, it's so beautiful with the rolling hills. You're, you're throwing down, you know, uh, off this huge, huge hill. And the basket is placed beautifully here. This is a new layout. It used to be uh, that it turns from right to left. Uh, it's so, such a nice place to be. I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> so picturesque, uh, so fun to throw. You, you could, if you're playing a practice round, you can't throw just one, you know. It's that kind of hole you just want to empty your bag and just watch them all fly up into the sky. And here is the last hole of the, on the course. And this, uh, I have heard, is much more uphill than it actually looks here on the video. Oh, this is, yeah, this is crazy. This is like throwing up a mountain. You, you want your drive to land somewhere between these two trees here, or yeah, small trees. And this is incredibly uphill. The basket's about 30 meters behind this tiny little sideways bush. It's a great little landmark. And then it, it it's drops away like crazy. There's lots of stuff in the way really really beautiful and great uh, finishing hole and uh, this course is a little bit different than what it has been uh, Jarva what has been for many many years been considered as maybe the best course in the world widely regarded as yeah. such yeah and uh, they have had some uh, issues with the um, the city of Stockholm has they have lost a lot of uh, their land they are building a cemetery, or if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's a yeah. true true tragedy for the disc golf world. But we have to focus on the positive. Yarva yeah, definitely. Is, yeah. Yarva is still here, and it's it's still beautiful. Uh, it still has the ambiance and the, and the incredible atmosphere of a, a top level course. Mm. Still still like way up in the in the top few courses in the world. Just just from the the history and the legacy of the place and. From the design elements, it, it's it's so perfectly designed. Every hole is like a signature hole, and it's so well manicured. They they keep it just just looking so pristine, always so beautiful. That's what I was coming to. Even though they have lost a lot of their land, a lot of uh, their iconic holes, they have still been able to uh, redesign their course until uh, until uh, to another like world class layout. And we have heard nothing but praise from the players in the press conference and uh, they haven't given in they haven't given up no. they're working even harder to make make it uh, be be so great and uh, so just thank you so much to everybody involved in all that Mats and all the guys that, that do everything they can to keep keep this place uh, alive and kicking and to to continue the legacy yeah Jarva is alive and um, it's not gonna disappear for for quite some time, at least. That's right. They have mm -hmm. a con a contract to keep it in, until for another uh, ten years, I, I believe, from now. Yeah. And then, that's right. Hopefully, during that time, we'll be able to uh, to to make it a permanent fixture. By uh, yeah, by the time yeah. in the, the the sport is growing so fast, and uh, I'm sure we will be able to um, to change that um, change the mind from the, the local politicians and stuff. Sure, sure hope. So here's another uh, guy we didn't mention, Iceland, from Iceland, yeah. Vlad Orn. The Icelandic young guy who has already proven to be a high quality player. He has been touring in the US this year, now coming over to Europe for a, for some time. And um, yeah, you can see he's rated uh, 1013. So this is, a, this is a great player to watch and uh, we're gonna see him for many years. Yeah, yeah. Very excited to have him on our feature card today. Sponsored by Innova. Yep. And then we have a Swede, Josef Berry. Yeah, Josef Berry. <laughs> you pronounced it correct. <laughs> That's a <laughs> surprise to hear from from uh, from an American. Uh, but uh, yeah, Josef Berry. He's gonna also throw a few Berry yeah. because he has uh, a new contract with Castaplast this year, so a new bag, and he has already proven himself uh, and those discs to um, work quite well for him. That's right. Yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, did really well in Kokodal. Yeah. If you haven't seen it yet, check that out. Also he, on also the, yeah, the Swedish first tour. First event of the Swedish Pro Tour. Yeah. Had an incredible performance there as well. 994 rated. Uh, 
really excited to watch him play. He seems really calm and composed on the course, and he's got all the skills to, to do really uh, incredible things. Yes. As he's proven already. Yeah. And it's nice to, that he represents a national manufacturer. Like that's, that. that's nice to see that some, we're going to see a lot of people throwing those popular Casta Plus discs here in Sweden. They are incredibly popular in their yeah. home country. And uh, I really liked what I heard from, from Josef Berg in the press conference yesterday. He was t uh, talking about that he really has tried some different kind of mindsets for the competitions this year. He has tried to play conservative sometimes and he has tried to really go out and attack sometimes and he has said that uh, he does, yeah, he, he's trying to find something that's there. Yeah? That's, that's really cool. Yeah, he mentioned that he's, he's trying to uh, play with different techniques and he wants to win. You know, he's trying to figure out how to win and he's already showed that he can. He, yeah, so his experiments have already paid off and that's really, really impressive to, to see that kind of mindset and to see the see the results already. I think that he is definitely the Swedish player uh, right now with the highest potential for, for or maybe highest possibility to, to see on the podium here. Uh, yeah, it'll be exciting to see, see how he performs in front of the cameras here live. Of course, you're all familiar with Seppo Paiu by now. We, we featured him on uh, many of our disc golf uh, stream live events so far, and he's he's shown incredible skills and, and, and he's been very consistent uh, performing on the on the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour, placed placed on the podium a couple times, didn't have his best event uh, in in Olu, but still still provided many many great highlights and still finished, I, I believe, in the top 15 or, or something like that. Yeah, he's a he's a quality player and he he's always always up there and um, if not on the podium, he's just behind there and always. And he's always a threat to win anywhere in the world that he plays. You know, uh, he he's a former uh, junior world champion. He's been in the running uh, for some really big events on the on the pro tour scene in the U.S. Um, yeah, so any you know, he's he's always a, a a really major contender for for a win wherever he plays, and he's a, a very entertaining player to watch. Mm -hmm. Skill set is just off the charts, really. And uh, we are soon gonna get some interviews with the FPO players. We in ten minutes are about to, to tee off. Uh, I just want to quickly mention that we have. I was saying that Josef Berg was one of the most uh, exciting Swedish players, but we have a huge surprise with yeah. Emanuel Bengts. Underdog. Right the lead. Yeah, that's R an amazing. Bit lower rated player, rated 9.62. And uh, he's in the clubhouse with a 9 down. Bogey that's free. That's amazing. That If he can play like this, his rating is going to just keep on going up. That's a storyline I don't think anybody saw coming, but I if he can, I mean... He might be on our lead card tomorrow. That, that, that score, that's an incredible score. That's huge. And also tied for the lead is uh, Niklas Antela. And that's not such a that's big That's not surprise. a big surprise. I think no. a lot of people would have picked him to be in that position right about now. So uh, great to see him performing up to his level. We saw yeah. him, of course, win the Olu, the, the Olu event last week. Yeah, he's a world-class player, quality player. Uh, we are re just about to go to interviews here. Yep. So we're going to hear from Emmanuel first here now. To see Looking forward to this. Yeah. We are here at uh, Jarva Disc Golf Park in Stockholm after round number one. And with us we have uh, Emmanuel Bengts from Sweden. Emmanuel, could you pu put a few words to your round? Yeah, it was a good round. Just trying to stay out of trouble. Made my putts. Uh, gave me a lot of chances to score. And uh, converted on most of them. So it was a good round. Try to do it again tomorrow. And uh, so far, you're uh, bogey-free. Yeah, it was. It was surprising, but I only had one or two holes where I wore in trouble, and I managed to scramble them. So, I mean, I put in a really great round. Yeah. So no changes for tomorrow. No changes. Attack the course, play long, and have fun. Excellent. Thank you. We're here in Stockholm at the European Pro Tour number two at the Jarva Disc Golf Park, and with us we have from Iceland. And I swear I will get this right one day. Blair and Aus Jajarsson. Pretty good. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. And you are on today's feature card for, uh, for, the, for the live, live stream later in the day. Yes. And um, have you, you have had a chance to practice the course? Yes, I've had two and a half practice rounds. We had to quit early yesterday because of the rain, but I think that's enough. Yeah. And what is your impression of the course? I love it here. It's... Super well, super well prepared, and the course is looking beautiful. And yeah, just yeah. love it. 
Do you have any expectations to your own uh, game plan or score today? I just want to play smart, lay up the right putts and go for the right putts and just try to go bogey free. That's that's the plan. Excellent. Well, I'll we'll be seeing you later. Thank you. And we are here in Stockholm at Jarva Disc Golf Park, and with us now for day number one pre-round interview, we have Anniken Steen. Hello, Annika. Hi. Anni Anniken, sorry. So, uh, you have any? Uh, what is your game plan today? My game plan is to play as, I'd say, as aggressive as I'm able to. Um, I know that my side sidearm is not the best. You do have some holes here that are maybe favorable to uh, right-handed, uh, but I'll play my best no matter what and yeah, not be afraid of putting at least. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah. thank you very much and uh, have a good round today. We are here in uh, Stockholm at the Jarva Disc Golf Park on day number one of uh, European Pro Tour number two. And uh, we have with us Antonia Faber from Germany. Hello, Antonia. Hello. Are you uh, ready for a good round of disc golf today? I hope so. <laughs> you hope so. Do you have any changes? Do you have Do you have any like changes to your game plan from your practice or? Um, no, just try to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to com to Kristen, I definitely cannot birdie all the holes. I think it's just about two or three that I can birdie. So I actually just have to play it for par and try to make that. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you for those interviews. Nice to see that the players are ready to ready and excited to get out here today. Yeah, great to hear from everybody. And I really like the attitude uh, from Emmanuel. He sounded like he was uh, just having fun and uh, trying to continue on that on that pace that he set today. Yeah, he didn't seem too surprised about his score. He, he knows apparently what he's capable of. And uh, seeing yourself in the top in, in a stacked field like this must be like a little bit mind-blowing for someone rated at 962, though. But that must yeah. be an incredible feeling. <laughs> he, he can be so proud. Uh, what, a, what a great result. Definitely. We also have Eivind Jarnes and uh, Knut Wallen Holland. They're the two Norwegians. Uh, yeah, strong showing from the, from the Norwegians. Yeah. We, uh, Knut, Knut's still with a hole to play. A lot of nationalities up there in the top. In, in Copenhagen, we saw a lot of Finns. I think we had like seven Finns in the top eight or something like that. I, I don't think we're going to see as many Finns here, even though we have extremely many capable Finnish players in the field. Well, Jakob Kainkar off to a great start. Six down through 13. He's made his name up on there. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's great to see uh, lots of different players represented. Some some Finns off to a good start on the FPL side. Jenny Karpinen with below par. One down through three. Excellent start. Yeah, those are the two two we mentioned there. Jenny Karpinen and Silva Saarinen. And, and no surprise to see them in the top, even though they just stepped out on the course and have only played a few holes so far. Yep, off to a great start, anyway. We're just a few minutes from tea time here. Super exciting. Definitely, and uh, it was exciting to hear that w what they were saying in the interviews, that it, this is a course that maybe suits a uh, right hand, and you would need a forehand also, maybe, very usable. And uh, sounds like it would suit someone like Kristin Tata quite well. <laughs> Yeah, she's got all the tricks mm -hmm. in the bag, doesn't she? So m such a great skill set. She throws really far. Her her upshots are are always dialed in. Her putting is great. Yeah, I think basically when you're that good, any course suits your game. That's that's right. <laughs> yeah, you know but I mean, I mean? But there yeah, I don't think that there is any female player in the world with with a forehand like hers. It's really the something beautiful. Top to notch. Yeah, top notch. No doubt about that. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, a couple lefties on our on our FPO. Card. That's right. Antonio and Anakin both both throwing lefty. It'll be nice to see those lines. Uh, I think um, if if you're like qu actually quite a few holes probably shape up pretty nice for a lefty and um, and some of these holes are are a little bit out of reach for for most players anyway. So if you're playing for par, it doesn't really uh, it, it, uh, there's no really advantage to any any players. Uh, you know, that does good like to hear. left or right. It's it's more yeah. like you just have to be in control of your of your shots. 
good to hear. And as you can see, we have extremely nice early summer weather in in Stockholm. Uh, you can't wish for for anything. Yeah, then we then we, we get to see it also. Uh, right Twenty two right degrees, uh, just a slight breeze. Uh, nothing to to worry about. Then we might see some some a bit of rain here and there today, but it shouldn't be anything. Looks like a perfect day for some disc golf. There. Yeah, not Stock too hot. Sweden, not too much wind. Out of a disc golf park, beautiful place. If you're ever ever able to get there, you really really must do so. Yeah, it's one of the, one of the best you'll ever see. Sad to see the, that construction going on in, in the area where uh, there used to be a bunch of beautiful holes, but... Uh, Let's pretend that it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> There's still so much beauty to see. Uh, it's it's still such an, an impressive venue and such a beautiful area. Guys have done s so much work to make this happen. They were seeing our FPO card, having a nice little chat before the round. Lots of smiles. And I, I'm always very happy to see such an international card on, uh, and this European tour is already picking up. I can't imagine what this will become in a few years. Oh, it's going to be so exciting. We're just, just yeah. getting off the ground with this thing, and we're really happy to have you guys all along and all the support that you're giving us, and the uh, future is very, very bright. Supernova bright. Yeah, the sport is really exploding and has been for the last few years, and I don't see any stop. So much fun. So many cultures in Europe and uh, so many incredible different places that, that disc golf can grow this and will. This is hole one and uh, it's kind of a straight shot slope uh, from right to left. Yep, yeah, very steep slope there. Uh, it's quite uphill in the end, well guarded green. 121, but I'm, I'm gonna say it plays a little more than that, like maybe 130 or more, I would say. Yeah, since it's uphill. It's, it's a little bit uphill, yeah. yeah. Not really reachable for, for most players, I would guess. We haven't seen any birdies on this hole one so far today. Yeah. I saw one, one great birdie from Teddy, a local guy who was really gracious enough to show me around for, for my practice round. It was a pain in the circles, but he got off to a really hot start and birdied uh, quite many of the first few. Yeah, uh, I think it was Vayner Makela, uh, the Finnish player, who mentioned in, in the press conference yesterday that the front line is really the, the scoreable uh, potential to, to birdie on the for, for the men's field, especially. Like, it's a bit shorter holes on the, on the front Most, line. Yeah, yeah. yeah, mostly part threes on the front nine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say any of them are really particularly easy, but uh, very birdieable for most of the field and uh, really providing a, a lot of fun and excitement to play yeah and here we see the world number one christine tatar with a rive in her hand stepping up ready to show off that uh, world-class sidearm you were talking about yeah nice run up nice tight forehand keeps it low looking for a big skip welcome to stockholm jarva christine tatar welcome to sweden <laughs> here we have sophie Sofie Björlykke, highest rated player in Sweden. I think that's an FD in her hand from Discmania. Straight disc and she throws it really straight. Safe shot. Yeah. Oh, okay. It yeah, it's fine. It's fine there. Not that far away from the OB line, but, uh, but no nice worries from there. Nice, nice open look for an upshot there. Nothing in the way. Kristen it might be a little bit pinched on the right side, but she's she's got so many uh, options to to get up and down, nothing to worry about either. Here's Antonia. Antonia Faber from Germany. She's got really great form, super clean, really precise, always. Y you don't see anything going uh, going off off the mark. She's she's hitting it where she wants to almost every every shot. Uh, this is a hole also that suits uh, for a lefty. That you saw a really nice Heiser flip shot there from uh, Antonia and she's very she's matching Christine with that yep. shot. Yep, and she's just playing this one for par. It's right in the game plan, so perfect start. This one's a little bit off to the right side. I'm a little worried about this. Uh, she's she's fine though. She's fine there, but the, these trees on the on the right side can be a little bit a uh, little bit annoying to deal with on your upshot. But I think she got up uh, she's not too far off on the right side. It, it didn't skip like I thought it was going to do. She's actually in pretty good position there. It looked worse um, when just out of her hand than 
it ended up to be. It's and just she's a, a lefty, meters. so that's going to be a yeah. touch, touch hyzer up to the pin anyway. That's, yeah, that's right. actually a great place to be. Here we get the course close-up from UDISC. This is really cool to see. Yarva Disc Golf Park, Kista, I guess, which is a suburb of Stockholm. It feels like that's it's right. in Stockholm to me. Uh, yeah, just north of, of, of Stockholm. Accessible yeah. on the public transport easily and everything. Uh, those ratings, I, I don't know, you know, they're a little bit lower than they probably should be, but that might be the new layout. Here we're seeing the European Pro Tour layout. It's a par 61, 2,632 meters. It's uh, showing the, those three holes for the to what to watch for, but I would say every every hole has such a beautiful element of signature. Look how green it is. It's uh, oh, it's so lush. And there's <laughs> yeah. so many different trees. Uh, the designers are, are landscape uh, artists. Yeah, and just it's so immaculate and beautiful. Here, here's. Well, I guess we saw. No one. <laughs> that was. <but> that's, <laughs> that's hole two. But yeah. we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Let's finish up on hole one first. Yeah. Here we got a nice, beautiful angle uh, of the green on number one. There's OB uh, behind and on the left side. So, yeah, they, so they don't want to juice this up shot. No, it was it was four uh, totally OK, even good tee oh shots yeah. there. So we yeah. will probably see three pars from here. No one really in any kind of um, position to attack for a birdie, though. But, no, but pars, could a, be pars a great score yeah. on this one. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's kind of a bonus birdie. Sophie with a nice up shot, putting it really close. Very close. That's going to be more or less a tap in. It's going to be uh, three meters, maybe three, four meters. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. Right on the bullseye's edge there. Next up, Christian. And this is going to be a very easy up shot with her forehand. Yeah, she's, she's so well known for. Oh, she's kind of running that. <laughs> she Whoa. is. Gave it a chance to nice go one. in, but yeah. Also, just around the bullseye's edge there. And when we say bullseye, we, we are talking about three meters from the basket. Yeah, yep, the three meter, al almost 10 foot ring. Yeah. And that's not really changing anything. There are no rules about that bullseye. It's just a it's used for statistics, yeah. really, because your C uh, the C1X putting, if it's inside that bullseye, you're not getting credit for your circle one putt. So uh, anything between three and 10 meters uh, goes to your statistics for your putting percentage. That's right. And uh, we also saw Antonia putting herself that really close. She's just inside that bullseye three meter line that we were talking about. Yep. So it looks like we're probably going to have a par frame, maybe a slight tester. Yeah, it's only Anakin that is a little bit um, further away, but I it's about six meters uh, at, at most, I guess. So hopefully uh, she can convert from there. It could be a, a nice boost for the confidence to hit hit an early putt. Anniken Steen from Norway, Hamar, just one hour or so north of Oslo. Kay. Yeah, super talented player. The putt seems to be right on the money. Great start. Yeah, what a solid start we, we see here. And it uh, seems like the players are just as excited as we are. Yeah, and look at how beautiful it is. Sun's out. 22 degrees, just a, maybe a slight breeze, if any. Legs look pretty calm. Got a nice little gallery here. Kristen tapping in an easy par. And Antonia as well. Yeah, it seems like hole one is really not posing any threat for these quality players. Yep, everybody. Off to hole two. Yep, you walk up the hill up to what, what used to be hole number one on the old layout, now it's hole number two. It's a beauty. Straight gap shot, a little bit of a valley there that you, you pass over. And uh, then there's a really extreme drop off right behind the basket here. Check this out, like only a, less than a meter after the basket. You don't wanna go too long on your upshot or you could be in all kinds of trouble. You could roll way down the hill there. So that's kind of the main element of difficulty on this one is that drop off green behind. That's right, and we have seen two birdies on this hole today already, Jenny Karpinen and Olivia Schinstedt. So this Ooh, is a- excellent, great birdies. Yeah, this is a hole that um, you would like to get a birdie on if you want to be up in the top. Yeah. And I think that all of these four ladies should be able to get that with, with a good tee shot. Yeah, definitely definitely one you want to get, but uh, you, you, gotta, you gotta hit that gap clean and you gotta get it to check up nice. You don't want to overdo it on this one. You don't really want to leave yourself too short either, or you got a death putt. It's no way to, uh, an, a give me birdie, but no, it's no. one no, you, you need to work for, but it's one that is well within reach. Yep, yep, yep. You got to earn it. 96 meters, 315 feet, 
straight shot. There is some, some trees that can definitely come into play. You, you don't have tons of airspace to work with. It's got to kind of have to be like a straight laser shot. You know. It'd be like, it could be like a nice, nice hyzer flip or I guess th there, there's a few options. I wonder if Kristen might, might go with the uh, forehand. Yeah, might actually be. Play this well. A nice tight low forehand can work. I have to wait and see. I think she is holding some kind of mid range in her hand. Okay, there. she's going to go with straight mid range. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a claymore that she's throwing. Very straight. Latitude 64 mid range. Yeah. And uh, there is a bit of a backup right now. We had some players uh, on their earlier cards still out there putting. And uh, if the four players are playing as fast as they did on the first hole, we're going to see quite a lot of waiting for them. Again. Yeah, yeah, they made pretty quick yeah. quick work of that. Uh, maybe we could mention some of the other sponsors. Antonio, uh, sponsored by Momentum Discs. That's a Swedish company. Oh, Kristen's going right to it. Here we go. Sorry. Yes, a disc matching her. Oh, she overturned outfit. that, though. Yeah, that just That's flipped over a bit. And I hope it's not too far down that That slope. might roll. I hope it didn't. But that wasn't a great tee shot there from... Kristen. No, she would have needed something more overstable in her hand there for that angle. This to looks work good. For. This is really good. I, I think like that's going to be. Uh, it's going to skip right under the basket. Park Beautiful. Off. Excellent shot. Great one there. Just under the basket. Perfect. Can't do it any better than that. And uh, Antonia yep. Faber. Sporting that momentum shirt. Representing that sponsor really well. Throwing a nice clean line. They can get back, stay off those trees. Oh, did not really hit the gap in the way she wanted. So, but it should it's be a safe, very safe par from she from that distance. Yep, she might have to lay that up. It's kind of a scary putt to really go for with that drop off green behind. Another lefty, Anaken, uh, sponsored by Guru, Norwegian company, throwing a mixed bag. Kind of similar shot there. Uh, clip, clipped some of those uh, uh, branches, but she got a pretty good result. I think she mm -hmm. she might be up there. Circle two. But uh, look at this nice Sophie. slow mo. Sophie just crushing on that perfect line, yeah, she's getting the skip and just curling right up there. Giving yep. that master class. Uh, she knows this course. Sophie, even though she's from the western part of Sweden, uh, Vanish Bori, she has probably been playing here quite a few times. So this is a course that she should know quite well, is my guess at least. There they come walking down this beautiful fairway, lush green grass. Always so well maintained. Nice disc golf stream banners in the background and the NBDG, that's the natural born disc golfers doing so much. Gonna be exciting here to, to see where Christine l ended up. We didn't see how much uh, it uh, went down the, the hillside there, but hopefully it didn't roll. I g it looks we didn't like see any big reactions from, from her or from the from the yeah, I, I guess it probably settled up pretty fine. She might be in circle two. She could even give that a run because she's a she's it's a safe place to run it from. The 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 green drop off doesn't come into play there. There's lots of space here behind the basket to work with. So I guess she didn't go far because Antonia's up first. She has kind of a little bit of a tricky approach. She has to go patent pending, yeah, reach out a little bit. She's close enough, so I don't think this should be any big problem for her. No, and she's so smooth and accurate. Yeah. It yep. Stops that could have been a little bit dangerous, uh, but uh, no, that Check, was a great nice. shot. Yeah, kept it nice and flat, so no issue with the catch and edge or anything there, and uh, she'll have an easy par. At least on this part of the course, the grass seems to be a little bit uh, longer, so maybe we will not see that much of a skip. Skip so many big skips today. The grass seems to be a little bit too high for that. What, what, what do you say? You were there just yesterday, so I guess uh, yeah. it's summer. It's growing quick, but. Uh, Mats was out there mowing 24/7. It seemed like every every time I, I, <laughs> I just okay. seem to see him on the lawnmower all the time. So I, I mean, it's the grass is beautiful. I guess it's um, yeah, maybe maybe a little little grabby in some spots. There there could be certain places where where you might get might be able to play a skip, but uh, yeah, the grass is is kind of um, lush, so it doesn't go too far usually from where where you throw it. Christine did not go down too far on that. But you can see how steep side. it is from that angle. That, that can be a lot of trouble. If you end up down there, you can take a big number because there's a lot of trees and it's really hard to work your way all the way back up that hill. Yeah, and when you're in that kind of steep of hill, it can be sometimes uh, quite hard to find a good footing also. So, but it seems like it, there was no, there were no problems for 
Christine to get close to the basket here. So we're going to see another par frame here, most likely. Yeah. They are playing safe. They are playing uh, solid. All these four women. So far, so far. Antonio, I believe, is putting with the shield. West side disc. Hanneken next up. No problem at all. Yeah, so it's going to be a, a birdie oh, here. Of course, yeah. I forgot about that birdie. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. no par frame with a, with a park shot like that from <laughs> you Sufi. You tri tripped me up on that too. Yeah. I guess I, I got a bit zoned out. But yeah, nice uh, nice tap-in birdie from Sophie. And she's yeah. off to a... Off Puts to her in the lead. Start. Yep, tied up. Oh no, Yeni's, nope, Yeni's back down to, to par. So she's in the solo lead. She is solo lead right now. And this is hole three. They are playing fast. This hole has is uh hasn't changed. This is one from the original layout from the one old layout. The OG holes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's a it's a beauty. Super fun to play. Uh, lots of options. OB on the on the right and behind the basket. Kind of shapes up really nice for a righty sidearm or these these uh, lefty backhand kind of touch hyzer should be a, a really good way to play it. Um, you can also go with a with a turnover on that left side or even kind of if you got a lot of power you could go with the righty sort of like a spike highs and try to go up over the top of everything it might be kind of risky but it's possible. lots of different options here but these trees are quite grabby if, if you miss your line you know you're not really going to be able to get through down the middle you have to kind of work something around either left or right left is much more open i would say left side yeah we have to wait and see what kind of shots uh, they are pulling out here but uh, yeah 103 meters it's reachable for all of them we might potentially see a few birdies here. And it's really beautiful, nice meadow. Sorry, go ahead. go ahead. No, we haven't seen any birdies so far. And just as on the previous hole, there is a bit of a backup here. We are waiting for the the other card to finish off before they can throw. They are playing so quick. <laughs> yep. so, yeah. Averaging 3.33 so far for the ladies. Yeah, so only half of the field has played it so far. So right. Yeah. A few bogeys. No birdies yet, but uh, I got a feeling we're going to see at least one here. Maybe more. And a player we haven't mentioned uh, who is um, yeah, the Christine's husband, Silver Lett. Also someone who uh, could potentially step up there on the podium on Sunday. Super talented player, elite uh, forehand, and uh, all around really great player. Watch out for him. This golf is might be one of the absolute biggest sports in Estonia with uh, uh, so many great courses and so many good players. Yeah, and what an awesome power couple. They represent that country so well. They travel around the world and, and perform Yeah, just look incredibly. at it. You can see, uh, have a good, good look at uh, Christine's uh, discs there in her bag, matching the Estonian flag. Lots of blue and white. Yeah. Okay, and after that beautiful parked tee shot and the birdie from Sophie Bjørlicke on the first hole, she's going to step out on the box. She doesn't take a lot of time, does she? Here, here's that, that turnover I was talking about. In yeah, the she's playing high and big and hitting a tree. Uh, yeah, could potentially run that. Um, Circle two's edge. Yeah, a long putt. But a look at least for a birdie. Christine is going a four, uh, forehand here, and that's yep. no surprise. She has a huge forehand. Shapes up really, really nice for that. If you got it, this looks a little low. I wonder if but that if is it's really stable. It come back, comes back though, and that's that will be. That is not coming back in, so um, mm. that's going to be uh, really hard to save that par too. She might, might be taking a bogue here. Mm, not the best start from Christine. Both on hole two and hole three here is like a little bit off. Yeah. Yeah. Antonio going left side hyzer. Probably with one of those uh, halos, I believe she's thrown. Halo air, latitude. Not really 100% sure if that's. And that might what also she's potentially go OB, yeah. but I think it might have a chance get to back, get, get, back, back, get back, back in. No, it's mm. that's just outside. I wonder if that is. It's right on the line. Yeah, OB. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can't say. They're going to have to take a look at that together mm -hmm. and decide if it's in or out. Yeah, I hope she got back in there. It's right on the edge. She kind of. Uh, Left it a little too wide, but she had the 
the right speed on that, just uh, maybe a touch more hyzer, and it would have would have been really, really perfect. Anakin looks like she's taking that similar line. Going to try to make the correction. She gives it really good height. Is it hyzer in a little bit too early? Uh, that's not risking any out of bounds at all. That's perfect in the middle yeah. and uh, long putt, but a look at a birdie. Yeah. About maybe 17 meters from there. 55 footer or so. She's got a really great putt. I think she's going to give that a chance. Yeah, I would be su surprised if he wouldn't give that a chance from from that distance. Yeah, there's yeah. the OB isn't really that tight from the behind for that from that kind of distance. She she should have a, a pretty pretty safe go at it. But um, exciting to see that uh, Christine. Well, we have only played two holes so far, but uh, Christine is definitely not um, crushing it from the start here. That uh, a little bit of struggle from her it might just yeah. uh, add to the. To the exciting, uh, yeah, yeah, not not really yeah. what we were expecting. We, yeah. I guess, kind of everyone sort of just thought she was going to come straight out of the gates and just kind of march away with this thing, but uh, not so far. Doesn't appear to be the case. Off to a bit of a slower start than we expected. Lots of great disc golf to be played, though. Another Swedish player, Elina Rydberg, started out with uh, three pars, so uh, she's up there in the top uh, with these players on the feature card. I Elina Rydberg is from Kristina Hamn in Värmland in Sweden. Also an exciting player to follow. We have a Finn tied at the top with Anni Mäkälä. Any relation to Vina? Not sure about that. And uh, she has played uh, seven pars in a row and then got a birdie on eight. That's really impressive. Yep. Clean through the almost through the front nine. If she can keep that pace, she's going to be up in the top. Yeah. Christine now with a very obstructed lie. She needs to work around these trees. Maybe she has a look there on the left side. Yeah, she does. I think she's just laying this up. So she's going to get a um, red number here in the scorecard. It's going to yep. be a bogey. Yeah, OB and a, and a blemish there on the early scorecard, but uh, plenty of time to make some moves. Sure, there'll be lots of blue before this is over for her. She can attack quite, quite most of these holes. But I believe she said in the press conference she wasn't really going to push for birdies on every hole. You know, if if she doesn't, if she's not in position off the tee. She's, she's quite happy with pars on on quite many of these holes. Yeah, I would be su would be surprised to see her go and play wild and crazy just. For the sake of it, if right? It doesn't maybe on Sunday if she would have some pressure on her and need to chase someone, then we might see a bit more aggressive play. Oh, but she's a smart, yeah. smart golfer, isn't she? She's definitely. She's is. got nothing yeah. to prove on it, on that end. She's not, you know, she's already shown she's uh, uh, best in the world. So she just kind of play her game, stick to her game plan, do the best she can, focus on each shot and try to execute. Do that, you know, put in the best score she can against the course I guess definitely and something what impressed me a lot from her side was uh, the memorial competition this year that she won and she struggled so oh, oh look at that look almost at a throw in that was a beautiful <laughs> throw great touch on that from Antonio unfortunately ended up just just barely OB but almost chucked that in for a par yeah she's so accurate it, it was Really impressive to watch her. And here is this run from uh, Anakin, but didn't really get it in. Yeah, but in Memorial, uh, Christine Tata, she was throwing on the first round. I think she lost like four or five discs or something in the water uh, on that really difficult um, course. And uh, she was so far behind, but then slowly, slowly, slowly got further and further up in the leaderboard. And she was victorious on the last day. So Never gave up. No, she... Fountain Hills there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, beautiful iconic course in Arizona. Throw over the water, and for some reason it just didn't work for her. Oh, yeah. Good bid. She's got a really nice putt. She just needed to get that one up a tad bit, but it was straight on line. That it was, yeah. Sorry, that was Anakin, of course. So Kristen going to card the early bogey here. Much slower start than we expected. That putt looked a little bit. Mm, that, that I think that's the second in a row that we see her. Yeah, yeah. Not not dead center, but uh, 
keep an eye on that. Yeah, we have mentioned it many times. These uh, prodigy baskets, you need to be dead center if those baskets are going to catch. Yeah, so we're going to head to commercial break after these ladies tap in. And when we come back, we'll be on hole four. Check out these sponsors. Horn is the expression of flight. That's kind of the representation of the brand that we wanted to build. The visual that we wanted to get from this stamp is the connection between man and nature and man's connection to the natural world that, that people are able to find through disc golf. We wanted to have a disc that all players could trust. It'll be a great tool for, for a lot of players. It feels great to have Prodigy have enough trust and faith in me to make this disc for me and to make this full line. And I'm so excited to be able to share it with the whole disc golf world. For the win. Yeah, he gets it in. Wow. So well deserved. Silva Sarinen on hole seven. Oh, my God. Oh, what an incredible ace. Oh, boy. Todella kaunis putti peltoselta. Back to discgolfstream.com, and for your new viewers, you are watching the Järva Open, second stop of the European Pro Tour, where we have just uh, started the first round with uh, Sophie Björlyk in top, tied with uh, Anni Mäkele. Yeah, thanks for being with us, and make sure you uh, download the app and subscribe. Use that discount code. No better time to sign up, catch all the action, days two and three. Coming yeah. up and plenty of uh, more stops coming this right your way. This is not uh, something you want to miss out on. This whole weekend is going to be stacked with action. And yeah. uh, we have a lot of things happening this summer with our stuff three, four, and five on the European Pro Tour. Yep. As well. You don't want to miss a thing. Make sure you sign on up. And here's hole number four. Tell us about this. This is a nice one. Shape's really good for uh, for the lefty backhand. Oh, she got all the way through with the turnover. And wow. Look at that. Sophie Bjarlik is coming out hot today. She's really good. Yeah. Yep. She's proving here that she's the highest rated player in Sweden. And uh, she's really showing that's why. A, that's a really tough line to hit. She hit that just perfectly. There's there's two trees that or two or three trees that are really right in the line. Let's see if uh, Anakin can get through. This looks really good, too. Uh, this should oh, it caught something early. I thought it looked OK, but it flipped up a little too much. and. Uh, Cut some of that shrubbery on the left side. She's gonna have to play that for par. It, it shapes up really good for uh, for Kristin's uh, for forehand, forehand as well. Yeah, what's she taking there? That's that, the rive. That's the rive. That's overstable, right? Overstable distance driver. Yeah. This looks really good. That's like the pure line right there that gets all the way to the basket. So beautiful. <laughs> you just can't do it better than no, that. No, that is as good as it gets. And uh, she just showed you the line right there. That's what. Uh, Everybody wants to do, but very few can. That is the best player in the world right now, well, showing us how to play disc golf. Yeah, that was one of the best forehands you'll, you'll ever see. Uh, wh what an amazing uh, drive. Not an easy hole at all. Very, very tight line, but she made it. She put it right down the middle and made it, made it look pretty easy. 
This looks really good too. If it's not, yes, there we go. Got the skip, and she's Almost up in the up circle. There. Yeah, and yeah, also fantastic shot. Both Christine and Antonia got bogeys on their previous on the previous hole here, so it bounce back birdies would be great. Really important. And that's just three stellar drives so far. Th this is a very difficult hole to get to access the green. Look at this. This is so sweet. Right down the pure middle of the gap. Skips right on this hill. That's a perfect. She hit the skip spot. There's like one little <laughs> spot, like a little ramp skip thing. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, where you have the little bit shorter grass, you can yeah, almost see some that bare so soil there. That's where you where you can skip. So beautiful. Here we're getting the flyover. See, this is like a like a tight little tunnel, and these like three trees really get in the line. But uh, Kristen made that gap look huge, and she skipped right on that spot right there. Boom, right up for the park job. This one's brought to you by Zuka. Yeah, it's a beauty. Yeah, I would be surprised to see anything else than a birdie from Christine. Those other two, they are, they they could they can run them definitely, but they are no easy putts in no way. But no. maybe they're closer than I'm I'm thinking. Yeah, Anakin's gonna have to have to do some work to get up and down here first. Yeah, she's definitely not in position to to get a birdie from she's here. Going going to the forehand here, but she's got plenty of space so. Pretty routine upshot from her. It looks really smooth, and she's put it right up, right under the bucket. Yep. Great job there. It's a well performed shot from our Norwegian. Yeah. And you can't really see, but there's like a, a huge bowl <laughs> here. This is actually uh, the the basket's up on on top of this kind of ridge, and it's like a, a really deep bowl here. So they can definitely give this a run without any too much risk at all. Antonia Fava next up. She's right around circle's edge. Mm -hmm. She's got a great step putt. She's got a, a really solid putter all around. She can attack from, from anywhere on the green, and, and she's so accurate. It's difficult, to see up the, it's difficult to see the circle from here. I don't really see where the line yeah, is. They, yeah, they haven't painted the full circle. They've just put uh, a, a few little marks. Okay. You can, yeah, it's, it's hard to really uh, see it on camera, but. She nails a beautiful God. stepper there. Awesome right. birdie from Antonia. Congratulations there. Yeah, that's a comeback, um, bounce back birdie from her. Yeah, nice one. And those are extra sweet to get after that unfortunate bogey on the previous hole. Yeah, nice way, way to battle right back to par early. She's just always in control of her disc. Another great putt. And uh, Sophie. Nice. She's extending her lead now two down two to four. Down. Hot start. Yeah. That is very impressive. I like what I'm seeing from her. And She's I a great player, yeah. Like seeing that Swedish flag in the top of the leaderboard. <laughs> I can see that smile yeah. on your face. Great to see uh, three really awesome birdies here on this hole. This is one that I would call a bonus birdie. Not for these players. They make oh. it look very easy. And this really? is also a very easy par from Anakin. Yeah. Well played. We see a bit of wind. Doesn't seem to affect the players that much, though. It seems like it's yeah. Yeah, not, not that much. steady wind, though. It comes and goes maybe a little Let's bit. Check out this slow mo. God, it's got such a sweet stepper. Banged it. Straight in the middle. And, and this one was one. equally good. A little bit low left side, but nice that those those catch really good on these, and especially with the with the nose angle coming down like that, nothing can go too wrong with that. Here we're heading to the island hole. Already on hole five. Yeah, we're moving right along. Here we are. The island's very generous uh, sh shape and size on the right side. If you want to play it safe, but that can leave you kind of a bit of a death putt because it drops off real quick behind. This is a, a very steep mound, and the OB is right behind the basket there. And if you end up anywhere outside of that uh, island, you will have to head to a drop zone with a one-stroke penalty. And that drop zone is uh, not an easy one to uh, very difficult to hit the basket from. Uh, you can't really run that putt you're, unless you're, you know. That means that if really, you're really desperate yeah. for a, for a stroke there, it's it's a. If you run that, yeah, you're you're. I'm saying like 99 out of 100 times going to go OB if you if you don't hit metal and, and you and you give it enough heat to go in it's it's the mound drops straight off behind and the ob line is right there it really there's really not much that can save you that means that if you miss the ob island that uh, you are gonna see a bogey at best you would yeah. say yeah 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 it's it's pretty much a, a a bogey if you if you miss the island yeah and that's kind of if you're if you 
execute that upshot well because it's about 30, 35 meters from the drop zone. It's not really like a putt. It's more like a, an approach shot. That's that's definitely not a putt. No, no. Uh, it's about 100 feet yeah. from the from the uh, drop zone to the to the basket with a with a complete runaway green right straight behind it. Drop, you know, the mound goes right to the OB. Mm, we have seen a double bogey here from Jenny Karpinen. Uh, we were praising her, but uh, with that double bogey, she is now two over par. And uh, here we get a look at our scorecard. Nice clean sheet from Anaken. Ups and downs from Antonia and Christian and Sophia just off to a flaming hot start. Two down already through four. And yeah, this is the more, I, you said it, it's a little bit easier to, to yeah. reach this uh, front nine, but. Yeah, definitely more attackable. This is a great shape. That's going to be, uh, yeah, that's good. She's going to look at the potential third birdie after five holes. Wow. Not an easy one, but she's around circle's edge, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think she's eight meters. Yeah. Eight meters there. Even closer then. Christy next yeah. up. She's taking a similar line. It's going to be a similar It's a little bit longer, though. This that's okay. Oh, yeah. There's too much heat on that. That can happen. So her struggle continues. Well, wow. she had a birdie there on the previous hole, but still, that's the second time she's out of bounds. Yeah, not the start we were expecting. It's only 71 meters, so it's kind of short for an island hold. Maybe that is causing some problems. That it's, do you think? It's definitely a one that you feel like you must get, you know? Uh -huh. So there's a little bit of pressure involved with that. Nice, sweet, straight line from Antonia, but coming in a little hot. Check up. Oh, oh that <laughs> hit the OB the stake and stayed safe. <laughs> okay, she can uh, buy herself a lottery ticket after that uh, That was that a, shot. Yeah, pretty lucky, but uh, great result. She's going to have a scary putt coming up, though, a decision to make, I guess. She's outside the circle, just outside. It's a bit of a death putt from that angle. And Anakin is trying to keep her scorecard clean. And uh, that's Not that tree, but she might be just inside the uh, the island there. I think that she should, be, should be inside with that tree kick. Yeah, yeah those trees are, are, are inside the OB line. Y it, if you don't bounce back too far from them, if you hit it square and bounce back, you can be OB. But most of the... Uh, shots that catch those trees will trickle down and, and stay inbounds, but they'll be, you know, kind of far outside from birdie range. Yeah, she has four pars on her scorecard so far, so far, and uh, yeah. might see a fifth here from. Yeah, that's that's probably a, a layup area from where she ended. Christian heading over to that drop zone. We'll get a good look at it. That's over. true. Yeah, now we. We'll probably not see anything better than a bogey from Christine Tatar, and she's dropping. She will be quite a few strokes behind Sophie here already. Yeah, early After lead, five Sophie. holes. Not what we expected to see, but it's really, really great to see how dialed in she is. There you see, she's just gonna try to jump putt and put it close. That looks good to me, though. Oh, it's That's perfect. Yeah, parked. Yeah. So. Um, Bogey, but we have a potential birdie look here from, from uh, Sophie. She's had a pretty decent angle to give that a run. And how she put it from similar distance on the previous hole, you had a nice result. She's probably yeah. feeling confident. I think this today. one's even even closer than that one that yeah. she just putted, but but similar distance, yeah. Yeah, not, not too much different. I guess the only difference is that one was uphill and much safer. This one, it could get squirrely and... And, and bite her, but uh, she's she's on point, so that's hopefully that checked up. I think so. Yeah, she yeah. could potentially have rolled a bit. She looked a little bit suspicious of that, but I think it stayed, and uh, she's going to most probably get her fifth par. Another one with five pars in a row is Elina Rydberg. Okay, nice she's steady start. Laying clean. Clean is good. Yeah, tied nice for second sure. place. At the moment, together with Antonia, Christine, and Anniken, but Christine is not going to be on even par after this hole. Here you can kind of see the slope. It's, it's even more dramatic in, in real life uh, camera, kind of, but also quite shows it. And then, like where the cameraman standing is, OB. So, definitely a scary putt here. Looks like she's lining it up, though. I'd like to see her bang this home. She, she's going to be aggressive. She's going for it. She is. Oh, and it and hits the basket and sit, sit, sit. That's going to have to stop. Yeah, oh, okay. so okay. nice to see that check up. That was <laughs> scary. <laughs> yeah, that oh. is the risk you're taking when you're going for it because if it is it hitting metal like it did, it could very likely run. Oh, and look, there we at have three. three birdie. She didn't even take any time with that, did she? She just Antonio's disc was <laughs> almost still rolling when she just stepped up to her 
putt, and she didn't, she didn't even think twice at all. Just put that straight in the basket. How I really like what I'm seeing from her. So confident. Three down through five, and she just steps up to, to whatever lie she has and just bangs it in. Yeah, and from she's quick off the tee, too. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. She doesn't waste any time. She's very confident. Nice, can one, be nice par there from Antonia. Can be mentally tough to play against someone like that when they're really on a on a roll, like Sophie yeah. now is. Just that you see that she isn't missing anything, and uh, yeah, it's kind of intimidating, isn't yeah. it? I mean, you think she doesn't even have to think; she just does, just executing perfectly everything. Nice easy par from Anakin. And Kristen's gonna have to settle for the bogey, so losing strokes to the whole card here. Mm, she's gonna have to start to. Um, to pick up some pace now if she wants to match Sophie. Yeah, she's over par. She is four strokes behind already. Not the front nine she was wanting or what we were expecting. This is a new hole, absolute beauty. Throwing over this big valley off a, off a way up high tee pad. And then the, the green is nice and protected here. This, uh, this is really, really pretty one. 148 meters. Downhill though, 486 feet. So you, you can definitely uh, attack it if you got Got like about a, maybe about 115 or 120 meter meters mm -hmm. of power. You can you can get there. Yeah, you could potentially reach it. Uh, I think we're gonna see some uh, smart and safe play from most of the ladies here. Is my my guess yeah. at least. There is OB on the on the left side, and there might be some on the right. But there's um, <coughs> before that, there's just a bunch of thick, really uh, rough, rough, some very sharp thorns in there. That's not where you want to end up. I unfortunately was there. If you turn it over too much or end up on the right side, that's that's kind of a rough place to get up and down from. Still no birdies on this yeah. hole uh, today. So, so we uh, hope that we can see at least one or two. Uh, Look at Sophie's scorecard. <laughs> that's yeah. remarkable. I can't dream of a better start than that. Wow. Fantastic. Uh, what are we seeing here? I guess. Yeah, I don't know what what hole that is. I think maybe is it 18? Maybe. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's the basket of 18. Yeah. Some uh, some of the MPO field finishing off their round and nice look at the scorecards. Zuka cart there. Make sure you check those out. Great sponsor and great products. Yeah, let's and take a really save your back a lot of trouble. Quick look at the leaderboard on the MPO side, and we have still the. Same four guys in the top. Emanuel Bengts, Niklas Antila, Irving Jarnes, and Knut Ballen Holland. Three different countries represented and really hot starts from those guys. Setting the mark, sitting yeah. in the clubhouse, feeling good. And, and we, have well tonight. we have Swedes in the top on both sides. Both all on the right, FPO right. and FPO. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing here. I Swedes <laughs> representing well <laughs> in their home country. Yeah, Coming out to play. I'm not supposed to be biased, but uh, I'm going <laughs> to have to try to stay neutral. But I think it's all right to be proud. Yeah. They're doing, they're doing well, and they should be proud. They should be, and you should be, everybody should be. Yeah, we Sweden didn't representing well in their, in their home event. We didn't really see any Swedes really stepping up in Copenhagen. We had uh, Elias Griffler on the lead card after the first round, but he struggled quite a lot there on that second round. We How's saw him today? Yeah, I think he's actually struggling quite a lot today. I haven't seen that much of him. Uh, he's kind of a local guy. I think this might actually be his home course or oh nice yeah so i would have expected him to see some great score from the young swedish guy elias griefler but he's too over par today what do you yeah. know about uh, martin lundberg don't know almost anything about Martin. he's lundberg. in the top 10 yeah another swedish flag up there martin yeah. jungberg sorry oh yeah oh sorry <laughs> i totally missed that one no that's e easy mistake oh better yeah yeah the, the g is like the, the e l j is pronounced uh, just J in, in Swedish. Okay, yeah. okay, good to know. Martin to get Swedish lessons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from a real native. It's and great. he is from Solentuna, just yeah. very close oh to yeah. this course. So he's probably it's played here many, many, many yeah. times and uh, yeah. finishing five under par today. Yeah. Five for seventh place. Great, great job. And those Swedish skills are really important here in Finland. It's also a national language in Finland. That's right. Swedish is official language in Finland. Yep. Yeah. Finland Depending used to be part of the Swedish Empire. And uh, lots of lots of Swedish Finns living here and speaking Swedish as a as a mother tongue. That is right. And uh, especially in the western part of Finland, in Turku, we are going to yep. Turku later on this last European Pro Tour. Yeah, yep. stop number five on the 
so we might have to show some uh, more Swedish skills there. In yeah. Obo, yeah. as it's called in, in Swedish. Yep, sorry. Yeah. Also and a lot of lot of Swedish influence in Porvo as well, right? That's right. Yeah. And uh, just um, just east of here. That's right. Less than an hour drive from Helsinki. I think that's where Olivia Chinstedt is from. Nice. Yeah. Looks like a little backup here on hole six. I guess that that can happen. There is quite a bit of rough on the right side, and uh, such a beautiful hole, though. This is this is a really nice nice redesign. This used to be a par four. Uh, basket's kind of in the same place, but you used you used to play uh, down to the left. Now they're throwing straight towards the basket. It used to be down to the left with OB all on the right. Very very iconic par four. Sophie. Okay, am I good? Is having the box. I uh, will just take all the camera. To and she is the playing. Code. Big. Yeah. Uh, I will go and flex take this shot. Over there. Okay. Uh, Where one. is that going to end up? It's remember. good, right? Okay. It's good. Yeah. It's, it's not really birdie, uh, birdie range, but uh, pretty, pretty yeah. easy so up and down. Re relatively easy. There is kind of a runaway green behind. That's sort of a theme. And there are some trees in the way, but she should be able to navigate there, maybe with a, with a jump uh, putt or, a, or, or just kind of a touch, touchy so approach. Here's on Antonio. Trying to power on. Oh, on she slipped and fell there. I hope she's oh. all right because that okay? didn't look good. Yeah, and the result was not good at all. She is she all right? I hope she's not hurt. That yeah, she seems to be in pain. Oh no. And Christine going up to check on her, and this is not looking good at all. All right, good luck, man. Thank you. I wonder if we get to see a replay of what actually happened there, but she seemed to have slipped. Hope she didn't. Yeah, it looks like she might have hurt her knee. Yeah, she at least she stands up, but uh, I wonder how she's feeling after this. She oh, it looks tender, limping a little bit. She's able to support herself at least, it's but that's going to be a. Uh, it's going to be a pretty big issue. This course is quite demanding physically with all the elevation and stuff, and uh, I, r I really hope uh, that's not a serious I injury. I think that maybe she was putting in a little bit too much power in that throw and really going for that birdie, and that is... It's hard to say what actually happened there. But Yeah, we didn't have a good uh, good angle on it. The, the shot landed safe, but it's going to be a quite far from the... Uh, I think it was safe. Yeah, you never want to see that. Let's just hope that everything is uh, okay, maybe. Yeah, that's not the way you want to... to you, you don't want to see that happen to, to anyone on your card, that even if it okay. would benefit your own uh, position. The the run. <laughs> but I don't Christine but jokes on him, I don't run. Turn yeah. this over a little bit, but... Uh, She's she's not in the rough, so she should have a, a relatively easy up and down, I suppose. Uh, maybe not too easy. There's quite a bit of trees on the green here. There is there does appear to be a line there for a for kind of a, a, a touch hyzer backhand. But this is one of the holes I think she can kind of attack. She didn't really get the angle quite right on that. We're seeing the leaderboard. Sophie with that flame and hot start. Three down, three Silva Sadi then. Okay, she's picking up the pace, and uh, no down surprise down. there. We can see a little bit of uh, uh, whatever from her, <laughs> but a uh, lot of highlight shots. You called her a highlight machine in Heinola, and that's exactly what she is. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, w I think sh even what we saw from her in uh, here and here in Helsinki at the Tali Open was she was, you know, really running some huge putts, and and even when when they weren't going in, they were right off the band and. Uh, just a very exciting player to watch. She's she's really going for it all. So she seems to be playing really steady today. Just that one bogey and two birdies. I'm trying to see here on any of our other cameras if if um, Antonia is up walking, and I think she is. It looks like the whole card and all the spectators are leaving that tee pad. So. I think she's going to be okay. Seems like her right knee was bothering her mm. a a after the slip and fall there. 
She was really trying to attack the basket and um, just might have slipped on the tee. Hopefully she can shake it off and uh, continue to play. What do you think you have there from the right side where we saw Christine and a few others end up? Is it possible to, to attack from there? Uh, not for birdie, no, not at all. Okay. So not not even close. Quite nobody's quite nobody's in position for birdie here. Okay. Not even there's not 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 anything you can do from there except just try to get get it close for a par. Bar some wild throw in, but even that's not a smart play because there's a runaway green behind and that's like when bogey will come into play real quick. Yeah. I, I don't think we'll see any aggression here on the upshots. They're just gonna want to try to put it as close as they can. The green is really, really beautiful on this one. Lots of different trees. Here, here you can see the basket. And the green uh, slopes away very quickly. And it should be Antonia first, and she is up and walking, having a oh. look at her. Oh, it's good to see. Yeah, she maybe doesn't just seem to just be just that. Just a slight twist on that knee, and m maybe it's a... Uh, Something that, that she can continue to play on and maybe just get some ice on after and hopefully it won't uh, won't swell up and stiffen too much. But No, yeah, exactly. It could be that it just hurt when she fell, but it's not actually affecting her. Then you couldn't really see her throw, but she I is uh, we'll not in the best position there on the right side. And uh, that might be a tricky part. No, a tricky bogey even to get from from there. Yeah, it's a tough hole if you don't get a clean tee shot. That you can take some pretty big numbers here. There, there's that OB, and like I said, on the right side, there's some really thick rough. Luckily, nobody's in there. But it's it's very well guarded. You can see there's like a pretty clear line right straight there. But uh, if you're off too too much on the right side, you got you're gonna need a little bit of luck to sneak through all those trees. I mean, on the left side, it's even tighter. And Antonia, with that great start, like she she had a she had an unfortunate bogey on hole three, but then she bounced right back with a birdie on on hole four, and she has showed some great play so far. I really hope that it didn't affect her too much. That unfortunate fall. And here we are, deep in the jungle. On the right side, Anniken. Yeah, that's not any good place to be if you want to get a birdie, and doesn't look likely for anyone to reach that, just like you said. Par's a really good score on this hole. Definitely a bonus birdie. I would say even for the MPO. Averaging 3.62 so far for the FPO. Yeah, definitely one of the harder holes here on the on the front nine. <laughs> Averaging 3.07 for the M MPO. So above par even for the MPO. Only 11% of the field so far able to get that birdie. Definitely a tough, tough hole. Really beautiful hole, though. This is the new one. And it's Christy a great, great whole design. Now, Kristin is sliding up her approach here now with uh, she's uh, have lining up a forehand and then we see it, yeah. Looks good. That's her disc right there. You know what she's using for those? Approaches? I think she she's throwing harps. Harp. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, great approach disc. West side. West side harp part of the trilogy family. So those players sponsored by Dynamic Disc or Latitude or West Side they can throw all three brands mostly often yeah, at least a lot of them do use that harp it's a great great disc it is nice overstable approach disc really trusty for up shots and feels good in the hand for forehand and backhand christine is not only the highest rated player in the world she i think she's also one maybe the the or maybe the second highest paid 
player in the world on the FPO side. She right. has she signed a huge deal with Latitude 64 with a lot of money. So she's really proving herself worthy of that contract yeah. this yeah. year. Yeah, really great to see uh, disc golf becoming a very um, profitable thing for the very top players. Uh. Yeah, that we're seeing. We're seeing bigger contracts and we're seeing bigger payouts in the, Ooh. In the tournament. So that was a great Manica. run. She's such a great putter, yeah. Great run. Really, really long range, yeah. too. She's got but yeah, yeah, like you were saying, it's it's uh, great to see some of those guy, uh, some of those people making making those million dollar contracts and uh, really really doing a lot to promote the sport and, and show the young people that it's it's really worth the effort to get into the game and that it can become a, a really great career path. Yeah, we're seeing the first generations of of people who actually are true prof professional players in the sense that they are. This is their job. They yeah. are play disc golf players. Yeah, maybe they can make a great living. Yes, they can. Sophie with another. Great putt there. Solid par. She's going to stay in that lead. How well is she playing? Playing yeah. so well. And this should be a bogey putt. Or oh no, this is actually a par putt. Uh, no? I think this uh, is a bogey. This is a bogey putt, yes. Sorry. Yeah. It was a bit hard to follow a few shots there from this camera angle. So yeah, might have missed something, but uh, that's Antonia also has to take a bogey. Yeah. But it looks like she's walking all right. That's a good thing. Uh, it's a bit, maybe a little bit, uh, only tender. Yeah, maybe she can walk it off. Yeah, keep an eye on that as we move forward. Sad to see, but good that it's nothing too serious from the looks of it. Yeah, and good to see that she didn't get a big number on this hole after that. Yeah, complete miss on the first shot. Anniken with the first bogey for the round, tied third. Silva Saren and solo second right now. Yeah, she just took a bogey, but still, still mm -hmm. in second with that even par. But Sophie, we were talking about that uh, Christine might be in a class of her own, but uh, so that's far, it's proven that wrong. Yeah, has to be the one that's, uh, yeah, you know. Uh, three strokes clear the field. Yeah, don't come here and try to be somebody. <laughs> like Sophie is defending her home, home turf. turf. Yeah, yeah, great. Great show. She she played really well at Heatland, I remember, and uh, just lost out to another Swede there. Amanda Lennart Lennartson? Amanda Lennartson, yeah. yeah. Also a really good player. She has had a really big struggle today, though. Oh. Plus six after seven holes with a lot of bogeys and one double bogey on the first hole even. Oh, must have been OB. Yeah, she probably... Oh, she was not OB. No, huh. she was not. Maybe a lot of missed putts or something. Sure. It is in a bit of a slope, bit that a basket, so she could yeah. have... Maybe just a bit of a nervy start. Yeah. But yeah, look at that still. Emmanuel Bengts in the lead. Yeah, go tied strong. with Niklas Antila. Yeah. Anytime you're tied with Niklas, you've done amazing work. I'm also happy to see Villa Ahokas high up in the leaderboard. He has been struggling yep. quite a bit since Copenhagen. He finished third there in that yeah. playoff. That, that was, was great. He, yep. he banged that big big putt for the for the uh third place trophy. Yeah. We ha have had big expectations on him after that finish in Copenhagen but here in, in the in Finland in the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour he has not really been shining so far. No, he's, he's no? had some great rounds here and there but he's, he's been uh, unable to put together a complete event after that uh, European Pro Tour s solid start in Copenhagen and uh, uh, he, he finished he had he had some some quite big struggles in um, Hainola which is kind of a surprise he's supposed to you know he was Nicknamed the king of uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, king, he should be the king of that course. That's his nickname, but he didn't prove to be a king. That uh, I think he played really well the, yeah. the last round, if I remember right. But he had he had a really rough first day, and uh, there we see our MPO feature card. Yeah, soon getting, teeing up, getting ready yeah. to move, getting some instruction from the TD there. Really, really great guy, uh, Seppo Payo right there. Thomas Gilbert standing yeah. next to him, and here we have Josef Barry and uh, Blair. Blair Earn. 
Askerson. I <laughs> really don't know how to pr pronounce that. Askerson, maybe. But that's going to be a very interesting card to follow because we have really high quality players and a uh, lot of different play styles, I think, also that can be interesting to see in what kind of different ways they attack this course. <coughs> Unfortunately, we don't have any cameras on the FPO right now. I think we have some technical issues with that camera, but we can tell you what's going on. I don't think they have teed off even on the hole 7 yet. So we're waiting for that. Hole 7 is a new hole. It's uh, really uphill. Uh, quite a nice shape. Um, really cluttered green. Lots of, you know, you very, very uphill. Maybe, uh, what is it about? I guess it's 107 meters or 351 feet. Kind of tough to get up there for their birdie. I guess Sophie yeah, is not, on the fairway. Not an easy, easy birdie to get. Looks like everybody is on the fairway after one throw, so nobody able to get up there on the green. Okay, so they have been teeing off, off right yeah. now. Yeah. But we are very soon going to start to follow the MPO feature card, so we're yeah, waiting for that right now. Just, uh, just over a minute from their tee time. You can see them there having a little chat. Thomas Gilbert and Seppo Payo, they are teammates. They are playing for Prodigy Discs. And Prodigy, the main sponsor yeah. of this, this event, and uh, also the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour. So they're doing... Uh, Really great thing to support European disc golf. Make sure you support them all you can. Yeah, I'm really excited to see someone like Thomas Gilbert here in, in Europe. And uh, we have heard talk from, from some other players to potentially come over. Maybe not for this season so much, but, but at least for next season. Big profile like Scott Stokely talking about having a European tour <laughs> next I think year. I yeah. think it's, it would be a lot of fun for them yeah. to come and check out different courses and, uh, and uh, different cultures. And it'd be really fun for us to feature them here on Disc Golf Stream. Definitely. Yeah. So welcome everybody from across the world. We want to see all kind of nationalities here. Even yeah, though we want to see the best. Yeah, it's best from everywhere, you know. We, wanna, we want them to experience European Disc Golf because we know how great it is and how fun it is. It's something the whole whole world can be a part of. So start start planning your 2023 tour season if you if you're in any way able to get over here. Very very welcome. Yeah, that's something that you every everyone from the U.S. who, who comes over and then it then comes back to the U.S. They are always talking about how how wonderful it is and it's something that you really have to experience as an overseas player. Yeah. Yeah. And here is Thomas Gilbert stepping up. Uh, okay, first, first on yeah. the feature card. Going with the forehand. Something. Some fast distance driver. Probably pretty overstable. No, he flips it up nicely, and that's looking looks heading really very good. straight towards the basket. Maybe a little bit oh, short, though. Catches yeah. one of those last guardian trees and. But he's not too far out there. He's, he's, he could be in circle two almost. Yeah, it's going to be a difficult putt though because he's going to need to put quite a lot of Anheuser yeah. on that to reach the basket. Not perfect position, but um, okay. First shot of the of the weekend. Should be an easy par. So Popeye next up, and we have seen so much from him this season. I would be surprised to see anything else than a solid round from him. And he's going with the roller. roller. Cool Kay. play. I have not seen this. This is not looking good, though. If it gets back, it could be fine. Far, but he far up on the right side. I don't okay, think he's get, getting some claps. Yeah. I don't think it's uh, on, on the green, but might be an easy up and down. Or we'll have to see. We'll have to see where it ended up. We didn't, couldn't really follow it all the way, but looked like it was a little bit too far right. And uh, from Iceland, Blair Ern. Askerson, and uh, they are quite a big 
quite a big scene in the uh, disc golf scene in ice on Iceland. I think he's the highest rated player. I would love to see a big event there. That would be a fun place to play, wouldn't it? And All this that is geothermic also activity. a roller, and I was worried that it would cut away, but this is looking. This is one way to really attack the basket. He's up there on the green for an easy birdie. Yes, just a, just that guardian tree that he can easily step yeah, out so from. So that should be a oh, birdie look. A clean, something. sweet yeah. roller he just laid down. Putting on a rolling clinic. And Yusuf Badi. I guess this hole does shape really good for a roller if you got that. I hadn't right. really thought of it, but uh, yeah, it definitely shapes. That's one way to attack it. Not sure. Looks like he's going with a roller. That might be a Falkden or something like that. Understable. This is probably similar to what... Uh, oh, oh, he's I there. He helped him. He's on the green. Yeah, I think that's the best of the... He's the closest to the basket. Uh, I think Blair, no. Blair is much closer. Might, might be closer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, much, right. much closer. Yeah. But that's more like circle's edge, but he still has a chance for birdie. And that might be similar to where Seppo ended up. We didn't see his disc there, but... Mm, interesting start here with the technical shots. Yeah, I, I guess Roller is the pro play. Of course, Thomas going for that sidearm, which, which could have worked out if he just had a, a little bit more flip up or a later fade. I didn't think we would see a rollers here. Cool, cool that play. Great idea. Crossed my mind. But Great idea. Yep. I like it a lot. That's why I'm not a professional disc golf player. I'm sitting here in the studio instead. <laughs> well, it's really nice to see that. They, they got, got a game plan. You know, they, they played their practice rounds and they're, they know what they can do to get up there and try to threaten for birdie. And on uh, hole seven, we saw another bogey from Antonia Faber, but the rest of the card got pars. Okay. I wonder if that knee's bothering her. Yeah, might be. With two in a row, then it might be something that is not 100% with her there. Yeah, sad to see that. This hole's averaging 3.19 for the MPO, so above par. Only 12% of the field able to birdie it, so we're getting a pretty good look at a. Some really great bonus birdies from these guys. Thomas is able to straddle around here, and he might have a chance. Mm, his, okay. his putt is, is, uh, is pretty good for this. He's kind of got a, a really nice spin putt. Uh, he's in a better position than I thought. He could really attack this. Looks like he's going to go with a little bit of a jumper, maybe? Or a great line. Yeah, I think, so. I think he's probably going to... Yeah. yeah. Give it a stab. Oh, and just a almost gets it straight on line. Uh -huh. Just catches the cage. I Tap wonder if that would have gone in if he didn't hit those branches there. He didn't catch some leaves, didn't he? Something tiny there in the way, but regardless, a good bid. And then probably Seppo is next up. Um, high up there on the right side and doesn't seem like he's in an... Uh, what do you think? Uh, he climbed. I'm not sure. We're not really uh. seeing him yet, are we? There he there is. There he is. Okay, he he can this definitely is right give in his step putt range. Yeah. It, it's kind of a drop off there, though. If he misses completely, then then he's gonna have a long comebacker. But he catches cage, and he's gonna have an easy par. He is really good with that step putt. He's one of the best with it. So um, yeah, he's had some great highlights, hasn't he, this year on disc golf stream? If you haven't seen all the action we've we've uh, broadcast in the past. But Check out that stuff. I have the feeling with him that he's... Oh, okay, here is Yusuf Batty with a Batty. That's something we need to... <laughs> batty, Batty. Yeah. Batty, Batty, good, sir. I have to watch this. He's putting with it and approaching with that disc. And oh, air ball. That was an air ball. Luckily, with a Batty, you know that it's going to fall down far. close to the basket. Yeah. Not too much glide on those. And uh, maybe a bit, a bit of nerves there, you think? Being might, on the, might be. Being on the feature card, live cameras. Might be. Is this the first time he's been on uh, live coverage, I, I believe? I think so. We didn't see him in Copenhagen, did we? He's definitely ha been on post-production quite a lot this year, but... Uh, it's something different. Might be a different feel. Yeah. In front of a live. Great okay. birdie start. Great one. Uh, there we go. Got one. Excellent. Putting some pressure on these guys. That was an awesome roller. Yeah, he really hit the line and really ended up in a perfect yeah, position. Curled, yeah, curled up around that tree. There you go. Safe par with that baddie. It's not the easiest thing for 
non-Swedish speakers to pronounce those Kastaplast disc names, similar to all the IKEA furniture. It uh, can be tricky. But thank you very much for helping us out. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Good to learn. Yeah, this is hole two that we just saw um, the FPO play yep. a few minutes ago. 96 meters, straight shot, tunnel. Park shot, for a park job, sorry. Sophie, yeah, she just posterized it. That was so pretty. Beautiful shot. We'll see. Let's see how the how the MPO can go after. I think it's one they really want to get. But yeah, it's not easy. There's that drop away green, and uh, even even uh, Kristen overturned it. Yeah, you really need to control your speed here. So I think we're gonna see some really slow flying discs, mid range, or maybe even some. These putters. guys yeah. probably got the power to go yeah. putter if they if they choose to do so. They. Kind of a lot of them are up in that elite distance. He looks like he's got a first run something or other. No, I think that's a putter. Yeah. Is that an AVR X3? Yeah, some, something like that. Or, a, or a rat, maybe. A very, very flat, flat topped, uh, slower speed disc. Yeah, because if you throw past the basket here, you're going to be in trouble. It slopes off really steep. And oh, that's not good at all. Way too Straight into that left tree. Though, yeah. Still quite an okay kick. It didn't go too far in on the left side, so he should have an open look to the basket with a forehand, maybe. Pretty shanked. No, yeah, not not at all a good shot. This is also a putter, I believe, from Thomas Gilbert, representing Canada. It's better, but it's not great. Yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa! But a great ground play, though. Good but kick. Good kick. But yeah. he's still pretty far from the. And that's a scary putt. He circled two, but it's a it's a death putt. He would have needed a much more turn on that disc to for it. And I think he was uh, hoping for a little bit more turn also, but just release it with a bit too much of hyzer. Seppo is great with these shots, and uh, look how smooth he's throwing that disc. And it that looks nice. If he can get some good ground play, he's gonna be just yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little short. I think he's on circle's edge. I think it might even be closer than that. Maybe, maybe yeah. if, he got, if he got more slide. It was hard to tell from that camera angle how much ground play he got, but he might be inside the circle. Oh, still, really still a bit of a scary putt if you don't put it really close on this one. It was a beautiful shot. Yeah, nice. Trusted that uh, stability of that disc and put it on a really sweet line. This looks really good. I like this a lot. Oh, this is Ace run. Not oh, no, really no, having perfect. No, but can't throw it better than that. That's perfect. Yeah. Landed just before the basket, sliding past, and he's, I think he's in, even in the bullseye there. That was pure all the way. Yeah, great shot We're from We're going to see a reaction cam from the shank job. Yeah, probably going to see some. Ah, you see the disappointment right away. He knew he, knew he missed it. Yeah. He's still disappointed there in the background. No bad words or no. words in Icelandic <laughs> that we could see at least. I'm sure he was thinking that, man. Thomas... Thomas is trying to tell it to get le get right, and it, it did get a little bit right, but didn't really get far enough. Didn't get to see Seppo because Blair's up already. Yeah, he, he didn't get a lot, lot the distance, but he has a clear open shot here for a par. That's sawed off. Mm, again. He's got a tester putt for par. And after that great first hole, then now we're seeing some nerves from him. Not what I was expecting. He, he looked like he came out... You know, really, really calm and collected, but now he's having some big struggles on this. One of the easier holes on the course. Averaging 2.88, so averaging under par. 26% of the field able to birdie it thus far today. Still tie in the lead. Emmanuel Bengts and Niklas Antila. Nine down is the mark. Everyone's set. Do you think we're going to get the double digits? Ah! Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I yeah. think that uh, round nine and ten is going to be a really great result from what I have seen so far. Like a slight right to left wind, beautiful putt. Oh, uh -oh. just hitting the top. That's and big time trouble though. That is. It's that dangerous. that rolls. Yeah. I hope it's I hope it's checked up. He, he might be able to still get the comeback here, but that's a very scary situation. Mm, that. That basket is so flat on top there, so the disc yeah. can go far. If you and that hill is so steep drop. It's like 
it's like climbing a mountain just to get back up it, you know, if you have to go down there. So that'll zap your energy right away. Look at this long putt for par. This is not an easy to get. Oh, no. that's a bogey. So he's going to be back on even par after that nice birdie on the first hole. So now not an easy, not a great start on this feature card so far. But we saw Seppo and, okay, he's around Circus Edge, just as yeah, he said. Just uh, outside. Yeah. I think he's lining up a stepper here. Again, second one. Beautiful. This time he gets it. Okay. Nailed it. That's a great step putt there for Seppo. Seppo one you. down after two holes. and Great birdie there. That was, was right on the pole. Joseph Barry is also going to be one down. Yeah, tapping in a really sweet bird. Mm -hmm. But Thomas Gilbert, where he's... First, he, he, he didn't go too far because Seppo was just outside the circle. That's that means right. he's, yeah. in, he's probably inside the circle. He could still save the par, but it's... Uh, yeah, I think he's lucky that he didn't roll away because if you do, it's a nightmare. He has a very low... <laughs> Ah, Leading there also with some deal annoying with some branches. branches. Yeah, he's pretty good at these though. His 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 putt is quite a laser, isn't it? Usually it is. Yeah, we haven't seen what he's bringing today, but I think we're gonna see some great putting from this guy today. This is for par though, so mm -hmm. pretty big moment here. He's gonna need to clutch up here and uh, keep his clean sheet. Uh -huh. Oh, and he misses it. Right, by quite a bit. Should be uh, an easy tap in bogey, but... Um, not the start that he wished for. No, nah, early blemish. Mm -hmm. for, for These the are Canadian. the holes you're supposed to score uh, on. Here, are the birdies are supposed to come here, so... Yeah, uh, and this is one you really want to get. I mean... Like this guy. That's a great one. That was such a pure drive all the way. What did he throw on that? Was that a bird? I don't think it was a Berg that... No, it, would it, it looked it, a lot more glidey. Yeah, right? I think it was a putter, maybe a Reco. Reco, or, yeah, yeah. Reco, Reco. That's how you say it, yeah. Maybe one of their mid-range is also, but I'm Super not Super clean sure. line, yeah. anyway. Beautiful really shot. Really beautiful shot. All the way. Probably a Reco. Yeah, look Here we get a replay. That beautiful step putt is showing us... This is a cool angle, too. Time after time, how good he is with those steppers. Oh, right on the money, right on the stripe. That's where you want to hit. Hit the stripe. There. Yeah. yeah. So that one was brought to us by MBDG. This one, Rami Rent. Thanks a lot to all those sponsors. Beautiful hole. OG hole. Original layout hole. Lots of options. Yeah, we uh, a little bit struggles on our FPO, though, didn't we? We did um, see two throws ending up out of bounds. And uh, it's going to be fun. I think we're going to see a few different lines here. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they attack it. I think there'll be a, a couple of forehands, and uh, I think Sepp was going to go with a big, big Anheuser mid-range or something like that, at least. But um, not sure what the rest of the guys are going to throw. Well, he's taking a driver, a reverb. Okay. He must have gone with the Spike Heiser forehand. Yeah, that's also an option that he can go over the trees on the right side and just crash down. Yeah, this is that Kevin Jones signature line. Oh no, no, he's going the uh, backhand Spike Heiser. Sorry, he's going over it yeah. all. Excuse me. That's that's a cool play. Could be a little risky, but he's he's really good at this. He's good at everything. But see if he can uh, dial it in and uh, get this one to spike in right by the basket, like he's. Oh yeah, oh, he's perfect. Yeah, almost in the bullseye. That's yep. super good shot. Yeah, five meters for birdie. Excellent job there. He has so many kind of shots in his arsenal. He can pull out so many different lines. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a, that's a big advantage, you know. You can you can just play to your comfort and play to the, the course conditions, the wind conditions, and Joseph going same line over the trees, and uh, where is he ending up? Beautiful. Oh, he's even closer. Park job. Yeah, that seems to be the the pro play here on the hole three on the MPO side. That yeah. Yeah, yeah. Going I guess high. There's not really any wind, and they're just feeling like they can can control that. Uh, but here we're seeing something different. Oh, this a. Yep, this is going to be a turnover. Yep. From there's Blair. Yeah, there's a lot of space on that side. Or it looks a little bit too wide, but if it's... Uh, Again. No, this is actually good. Oh, uh, if it would have missed that, it would have been yeah, very yeah. close. But, you know. Yeah. Okay, shot a little bit unlucky to, to hit the top of that. Yeah, yeah, it looked, like it, looked like it kind of a maybe a needed to be a, l a little higher or... I guess the the width wasn't a problem with that. 
No, I, I thought first it was a little bit too early release. But look, look quite wide to me, but I guess that might be his play. Thomas going with a sidearm. Forehand it's ace run. Almost an ace run, yeah. Oh, that checks up just in bounds. He's going to have a birdie, though. Really good shot. I think that was an FX2 from him. He was talking about that disc in the press conference that he's going to be yeah. throwing that a lot. Nicely it's played. Working well for him. Pretty close to the OB, but he also kind of gave it an ace run, didn't he? He really did, yeah. Would have been a sweet highlight. So it looks like we're going to have a few birdies and uh, maybe a big, big putt for birdie, potentially. He looks like about, uh, where would you put him? 17, 16 meters? Ooh, I wonder if that is not even further, like maybe 18, 19. Yeah, could be circle two's edge. Yeah. Doesn't really matter, though. It's <laughs> just yeah. It's going to take a big putt. Good chance to prove his range here and, and make a highlight. Yeah. And uh, since all these other guys are so close to the basket, you don't want to miss out on the party here. And yeah, especially after that bogey on the last hole. Exactly. You're going to want to try to get one back with a big putt right here. With a big putt, we might potentially get a star for him. Not most sure what he's putting with. Most uh, Innova players are putting with AVRs, KC yeah. AVRs or something like that. Ooh, that was oh, that was so close. Clean stepper. Yeah. Just, uh, just a tad bit low, hit the cage. Right on line, though. It looked good. Good, good yeah. effort. Yeah. It's going to be staying on even par after one birdie, one bogey, and one par. Because, um, yeah, I don't think any one of these three guys are going to miss their putts, though. They are so close. Yeah, these guys are all, all within five meters. Thomas, was he was within a meter from the OB line there. That he's was, yeah. He's taking his, taking his meter... In, in from the line and uh, taking a nice birdie. A little bit low, but it's in. Good way to bounce back after an unfortunate bogey. That's true. He got a bogey on the previous one there with a and step or two in a row. <gasps> no, or not? Sorry, I spoke too you soon. You spoke too soon and you jinxed him there. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was. No, I don't think it's your fault. But that's uh, that's a shocker, though. That was really close. That's uh, just lack of concentration, I think. Yeah, like it just didn't come out clean out of his hand, and it just, uh, just. What what's going on? I, I think even on those short ones, you really have to pick a focal point, or or that can happen. That's super important. They're not, the they're not automatic. Yeah. Yeah. Going to commercial break here. Golf carts for a better game. For the win. Yes, he gets it in. Wow. So well deserved. Silva Sarinen on hole seven. Oh my god. <laughs> what an incredible ace. Oh boy, todella kaunis putti peltoselta. Okay. 
we're back. Don't miss out on all those incredible moments. Get yourself a subscription to Disc Golf Stream. Yeah, back on hole four. And uh, surprising miss there from Seppo Pio being parked for a birdie. Totally missed his tap in putt. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I guess I took that one for granted. Uh, uh, who uh, wouldn't? Unfortunate to yeah. see. We'll, we'll, we'll check in with the FPO real quick. Um, uh, Antonio, after that slip, she's taken a string of three straight bogeys, and I, I really hope her knee is, isn't uh, Doesn't look too good. seriously no. injured. It seems like it's definitely affecting her play. She's a very consistent, solid player who, who can control a disc as good as anybody, so you rarely see uh, a string of bogeys like that from a, from a player of her caliber. I'm, I'm a bit worried. Um, Anakin took a, bo a bogey on uh, the last hole, as well as Kristen. Kristen plus Gosh. two at the moment. She is not doing great on the front nine. No, who would have thought that Kristen would be five strokes behind Sophie Björlicke after eight yeah. holes? The main storyline here is Sophie Björlicke. Clean sheet, three down on the front nine. That's that so is so impressive. And this guy, Josef Barry, two down to uh, through three. Also, great start from him. But yeah, Sophie. Swedes doing great. They know this course. Seems like represent. And this is uh, not a line to you want to go. That was a very that was early. That was just a bit early. It is a, it is a tight line. I mean, yeah. like the FPO made it look. A lot easier than it is, I can promise you. That is such <laughs> a really, uh, like... Yeah, no. they, they really played this to perfection. Yeah. Yeah, that, and, like, this is the kind of hole that I would, like, personally call, like, one of those kind of four-digit separator holes. Like, if you got, like, if you're 1,000 rated and have that kind of, like, high-class uh, forehand, then you can attack it, and everybody else is kind of playing for par. But the, the FPO kind of just blew my mind, really, was getting three birdies there. Very... Okay. And, and, and that... Whoa, what was What's that? What's going on? We see a yellow flag. Oh, so I think he's just telling him to wait, that maybe there's some kind of distraction. Yeah, something is going on there. I wonder what. Not too much. To but he, he seems like, yeah, maybe he was just getting ready to fire one off. And that that can get in your head a little bit if you, you know, if, if something comes up. Now he has to reset totally and uh, go back through the routine. And mm -hmm. He seems calm and collected, though, sitting there yeah. chatting with Seppo. But anyway, yeah, like what I was saying with Sophie's backhand line, that was just you know, amazing. There's there's so little space to uh, <laughs> yeah. to do that shot and, and to get it all the way to the basket. I, I didn't maybe realize how good it was until uh, was until now when I, when I see it again, like how, uh, what kind of line look, you look need at to those hit. Trees. There's just so nothing tight, there. No? There's nothing. I mean, there's, there's no, of course there's a line, but it's like, it's, it's so tight and it's a, it's a very low ceiling all the way there so it takes like a real pipe job with the perfect angle and the perfect disc and speed and everything you got to get it just perfect that was extremely impressive and uh, mm -hmm. yeah she's now we get to see Thomas she's Gilbert. dialed in today let's we'll see if Thomas can uh, get himself up there for a birdie putt i think Yusuf uh, is going to have to fight for par uh, even yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a he still hasn't gotten anywhere near that gap does it get it's great too clean this is going to skip up towards the basket yes Perfectly done. Yep, that's. Uh, it looked like it, my, it was really testing that left <laughs> side, but but. I uh, was worried there for a while that yeah, it would hit yeah, something yeah. on the left. Yeah, That's side. like as far left as you can go and still get through. And Seppo is going backhand here. Okay, okay, with a slower disc, is it? Yeah, that is not the fast one. Or is it? Maybe a mid-range. Yeah. Oh, it's a roller. roller. Okay, and hitting the same tree as Josef yep, did. Okay. Uh, very very creative play though. I hadn't thought of a roller mm -hmm. here. It's it's quite of a low ceiling off the tee. I guess it's like a, a quick kind of uh, getting it down nice and quick. I was kind of wondering if there's any sort of over the top flex play with a really overstated. That's what I thought he was uh, thinking of. Yeah, but uh, but no. I, I I don't I guess there's not really enough space with that low ceiling to operate that shot, and it'd be quite risky because uh, it right side is oh there's a mobi there, and this is looking this is a little early though. Okay, I thought it was yeah. good. It was not. Nah, it's a little early. That that's what happens to most side arms. That's what we yeah. did, haven't seen yet, but that's kind of like a very typical result there. It can up a li little bit too uh, early there on the right side. Didn't this hit the Thomas gap. Is it? Yeah, yeah, this could be Thomas. See, he's using all the left side of the fairway there. Uh, it just goes under the those branches that can catch. And then you, there you see the bowl. So he, he kind of went past the skip zone that, that we saw uh, brought um, some of those other, other shots up. But he still had enough speed that, that he was able to get get enough uh, ground play to get himself up there really close to the basket. Yeah. Um, 
great shot from Thomas. And uh, after unfortunate bogey on hole two, he bounced back with a birdie and he might just get another one here. Yep. Picking up the pace. And Josef really needs to uh, get this par. And what does he have? It's not easy. It's so low ceiling to get through any of those gaps. So he exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very tight lines. He and he's looking at the forehand. Forehand flex, or is it like uh, that? Or forehand and high, sir. I think he's looking for that biggest gap there between the. Yeah, exactly. No, he's going in the middle gap. In and the middle? Uh, pretty good. Reaching, yeah. Pretty good. I think that was a baddie. It was really dying quickly. So, um. He's, he's, he's kind of on the circle's edge or just inside, I guess. He's about eight, nine meters there, I think. Still hasn't worked to get that, that yeah. par. Kind of a tester par, but. And Seppo from a similar, similar position, maybe a little yeah. bit better. Looks like he's going to take that distortion that he, he really trusts for his upshots and a very overstable. Yeah, we have seen some beautiful shots from that disc yeah. from Seppo. Yep. Kevin Jones signature line from our main sponsor, Prodigy. Make sure you get yourself one of those. This looks good. Maybe. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. If but he, he yeah. we have seen that he can miss from close distances. So yeah, let's not oh. Uh, oh. say anything yet. Yeah, I was hope, hope that was just a glitch in the matrix and he can shake that off and move forward. A distortion, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, Blair is in. Uh, he might be yeah. able to give this a run. I mean, it's he could. I, that's what I was thinking of. Does he is he in a position to give it a run or not? But it, yeah, yeah, because it, it's like a. It's even steeper up uphill behind it than it, than it looks. It's a pretty safe place to give it a give it a chance. Chance for him to show his range, but he doesn't doesn't give it enough height. Ah, that wasn't even close. That easy par. Uh, par is okay. Did we you say what this hole was averaging? Just uh, over par, 3.12. So yep. Uh, yep. par is okay then. Only 10% of the field able to birdie it. Mm -hmm. That makes those three FPO birdies just seem even that much more impressive. <laughs> I didn't understand how, how good it this was. Yeah, this hole, yeah. It, it is very, very challenging. Okay, a bit of a tester pot here. but there's, there's more bogeys on this hole than there is birdies in the MPO. That, 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 that's that's actually a little right bit there. surprising, but uh, I'm not too surprised because uh, I, I played it and I can tell you it's very tough. <laughs> but I'm surprised that the FPO uh, part was, played yeah. it so uh, spectacularly. Th those are some awesome drives and some big, yeah, big clutch putts. Christine there, really hitting the perfect spot to skip. And yeah, <laughs> that was just beautiful. That was a really highlight park job. From Thomas there. Gilbert with two birdies in a row now. He is. Um, He's looking good. Yeah. Yeah. Back on track after an unfortunate uh, slip up on hole two. And Seppo is not missing two that kind of putts in a row. No, I think no. he's got his focus back. Maybe he just kind of uh, got it, got a bit, I don't know, distracted or didn't concentrate enough to, to maybe maybe took it for granted already and was thinking about the next shot or something, you know. Yeah, but it's strange that sometimes when you step up to that kind of putt, you just know that you're going to miss it. <laughs> you know, I think I that's, it, yeah, that's, that's, that's the problem. Yeah. You know, those, that's the, the mental game of putting. It's very, very tricky, even for these top-level pros. It's I think we all have, have uh, had that feeling stepping yeah. up to a close putt, especially <laughs> the when it feels so birdie. small. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for birdie, exactly. Sometimes you, you really want it so bad that it just becomes that hard to just get it in that little basket there. Yeah. Hopefully that was the last we saw of those kind of misses, and uh, at least it was for birdie anyway. But yeah, exactly. He, he no damage. He yeah. still got a clean sheet going, right? And yeah, uh, one down, down. We can see it there. Yep. And we're gonna move to the island hole, hole five, shortest hole on the course, averaging at two point nine three though. So not definitely not a gimme. One of the easier holes though, but we can see that the fourteenth hardest hole. So that what is that? The sixth easiest? Fifth, fifth yeah. easiest, right? Um, just, just under par, but that I guess is because that the the if you miss the island and get to that that um, drop, drop zone, zone, you're gonna yeah. see a bogey at best. So that really yeah, it, it is possible to take a big number there. I mean, if you if you get some really unlucky rolls, you know. Lauri Lechtinen now up on the top ten. I think we we're, we're gonna see him a lot. We are gonna probably see a lot of him this this weekend also. 
four down through 15. And mm-hmm. everybody else is in the clubhouse, so they really set the mark really well, and it doesn't seem like anybody's uh, really really putting in any too many hot rounds from the from the later tee times. Huh? No, it doesn't look like we b- might see any of those um, double digits today. Maybe, uh, maybe have to wait until tomorrow. And first day is, yeah. is special for... Yeah, it looks like those nine, nines and eights and sevens are, are sitting pretty at the moment. This one's 71 meters, 233 feet. A few different options. This kind of a uh, stall hyzer seems to be the the main way to uh, attack it for the righty backhanders. Yeah, that way you avoid to, to throw too far. Yeah. That is the risk when playing from an elevated T position down, and it's only 71 meters. So this must yeah. be really short. and. Yeah, Betty with the Betty. Yeah. And that's a little early, maybe going anywhere too far. I, I wonder if that safe. even. I think he's safe. Oh, you see? <gasps> no, he's not. He is not. Yeah. So after a clean first four holes here, then we're gonna see something different here on his scorecard. Is this a MX1? Not sure. A, a lot flatter than we've seen. It's a very overstable disc, so he's this trusting the good. trusting the stability it's and very good. But the bad getting roll. a terrible roll. So Can it unlucky. Come back? No, it no, no, not. That's just unfortunate. It looked like a good shot, but when you're when you're going onto a mound like that, and if if it just catches the edge, you know, there's nothing stopping it really. No, it didn't have a chance to come back, and it really picked up the. Started to roll quite fast here immediately when it landed. That it's gonna head head to the drop zone, and uh, we're gonna have at least two player going through that drop zone. This is great. That's beautiful. That's, that should be a birdie. Two good sh- shots. I think Thomas is also within range to get the birdie here. Nice touch on that last yeah. one. So this might be a. Score separator here on this card, potentially. Yeah, I have to say it's, it's looking so beautiful this course today. It's so green. It's such a nice weather. No wind to talk about. Everything is perfectly set up for some great disc golf. Yeah, a great day to be yeah. to be playing disc golf. Really fun to watch. Kind of surprised we're not seeing uh, too many, too much of a hot start from our feature card, but mm, but sometimes uh, that's how it goes. We have to wait. Maybe we will have to wait until tomorrow to see those really <laughs> low numbers. It's still, still pretty early. Yeah. We can, we can. Uh, someone can get on a run and and still make a hot, hot chase and try to get themselves back on live coverage tomorrow. But as it stands right now, we're gonna have a very, very diverse uh, lead card. Two Norwegians, a Swede, and a Finn. In position at the moment. And on the... Ah, okay, well let's wait with that uh, Josef Berg here from the drop zone. Looks pretty smooth. He's right there under the basket. Nicely done. Sefa next up. Step put approach. Puts it close. Yeah, great shot. Easy, easy bogey from there. Should be anyway. And then we'll have a couple of uh, birdie chances. Mm. Thomas Gilbert is climbing up. Oh, he's got a low ceiling him. there. Hey, that might actually disturb him. He might not. Will be he able go to down to a knee even? Oh, yes, he, sure he does. Is. And he's he's uh, pretty good at this. Yep. I've seen him hit a, hit a lot of these in uh, over in the, in the states on the. Sure. But this is a scary put because if he's missing this basket, I- it's gonna most likely be OB. So oh yeah, yeah. guaranteed. But if if it doesn't hit anything, it's out. But he's gonna go for it. I'm quite certain. He just needs to fully commit here, yeah. and just dial in that pinpoint. No. Okay. okay. Yeah. It stays safe. Though, yeah, yeah. Because he caught chains. But if if you airball that, you're you're gone every time. So yeah, just if you a little bit left. That's right, and if you want to win a weekend like this, you you have to be aggressive with those. Yeah, with those putts. He did a right, made the right decision there, going for that putt, and luckily it stayed in bounds, even though he missed. Yeah, I guess even if you catch chains, it could potentially roll. 
you know, to touch his edge. Nice birdie there from Blair. Yeah, Blair. Now one down and uh, catching a lot of strokes here on the court. But nobody's playing really super clean on our feature card, are they? I mean, that is surprising to see. Yeah. Betty, I guess, is playing doing pretty well. But yeah, but he's getting it. Now he's going to take a bogey, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Seppo again missing from very short distance. That's now a real I'm starting shocker. to wonder if it's not actually. Is it a mechanical thing or just just total mental? It's very hard for me to see. It looks very clean when it's leaving the hand, but he's such a great putter most of the time. I mean, I I get the feeling with Sefo that he's like when he's on, he is really on. Then he hits everything, and when he's just a little bit off, it can get to his head. We saw it in Tali. That's right. Yeah, he missed quite a few of those easy ones, and but. We saw in Heinola when he was on fire, then he hit like everything. So it's yeah, a little yeah. bit streaky on the green, maybe. Yeah, I think so. He's really that kind of. But streak. but but he's never off by a lot. Like no, a, that's it's just a little bit. But a, a little bit can be a lot on the putting green. You know that it's a you really gotta you know get it, uh, get it get it where it needs to be. And two oh, those kind of misses already. And look at that. So he's now over par with a double bogey on hole five. Wow. This is not the s these are not the scores we were uh, ho hoped and thought that we would see from th from a card like this. Yeah, like everyone was yeah. saying that the front nine is really the attackable side. I mean, you you want to try to get as many as far under par as you can, and then try to just kind of manage the back nine and and maybe you know pick a, pick a few here and there that that you're able to to keep scoring on. But uh, that's right. Lauri Lehtinen keeps on climbing on that leaderboard with the two holes to go. We also saw someone else. I didn't have time to see who it was. Yeah, we got we got a, a whole handful of fins on the bottom half of the f of the of the top ten. Juho Polkanen, Lauri Lettinen, Otto Mäkinen, and uh, oh. I guess tied for seventh. There's quite a few guys. A Sweden there. Martin Jungberg. Yeah, Rasmus Saukkoripi. That's a new name for me. Jako Kankara. Lucas Rocken, and we haven't talked much about him. No, uh, he's a really talented player. Really, really good uh, player. We saw quite a lot of him last year. He yep. played on uh, quite a few lead cards on the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour. Exactly, and he's been over in the States quite a lot this year. Yeah, doing, doing pretty well. Uh, ex touring pretty extensively, and uh, just back, back now. I think he played in Olu uh, last weekend. Yeah, uh, he didn't, was there. didn't make too big of a splash, but I think he was somewhere up there in the, in the top. 20 or 30 anyway, and uh, having a pretty good day today. Yeah, Clean bogey sheet. Bl bogey free, four down with two holes to go. So um, watch out for him. Yeah. We know what he's capable of. Yeah, if he can put himself in pretty good position, he might might be on the, on the second or third card. And One of those and, and so many young Finnish players who are just like <laughs> coming talented, from yeah. everywhere. Yeah, they're, every town's got a handful yeah. of them, don't they? So many great courses for them to practice on. Such a great culture for them to to learn. So many good role models and uh, yeah, future very bright for Finnish disc golf. Yes, but we do have Swedish players in the top. Yeah, totally true. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Tied with a fin though, so I shouldn't be too cocky. But we have no, but they're they're Niklas Antila there as well. Yeah, representing well. Yeah, and Sofia Bjarlicke is still going strong on the FBO side. Bogey free still? No, she is no. not. She has two bogeys, two bogeys but, but still still, uh, still in the top. Okay. Two ahead of Silva Sarinen. Blatter here on this beautiful hole 648 meters. That needs Looks kind of high and hysery. That could actually be in trouble if it goes OB. <laughs> not a good shot the at trees all. Trees might help him if they if they bring him back down before the OB, then he, he'll he'll still have a very difficult approach from over there because that's. That's some thick woods. I wonder what he was hoping for there. That th that would be ha having a lot of turn or something. I think he just had the nose way up. Yeah, just that just was really missed like the nose yeah. angle totally on that one, because you really have to kind of match the, uh, the the angle with the grade. You know, you're throwing quite downhill, so you you can't really float it like that, or it's never going to get there. That was not a good shot, and he's probably very disappointed with that. And you have to have the nose down a little bit, or or something more understable uh, to do that kind of a shot. This, this looks a better. lot better. Much better. That might actually be this up looks there. Great. If it can get past that Come last on, tree, stop! Oh. Stop! That that tree wow. saved him. That <laughs> that, that could have blown way past, but uh, that tree saved him. He's gonna have a birdie putt from a, from outside the circle, probably kind of kind of obstructed, but 
lucky, lucky to catch something there. He would have blown way past. Yeah, I didn't expect to see so much. I, 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 I don't think you know. usually see that that they could go that far. Uh, uh, I I didn't think <laughs> that was possible. But uh, that was impressive to see. Josef Barry here next, and he's and going. There is there is Obi behind. He would have blown. This Sorry. is this is stable up now. I think that can work. I think it might. Might have caught some of those guardian trees. And yeah. And getting claps. Yeah, I think it was pretty good. We didn't really see it finished though, did we? No, it kind of disappeared not, in the yeah. trees there, but a lot of turn on that. Uh, hopefully, it had fade enough to to get back. Let's see if Seppo can ride the ship here and get himself an easy birdie. I guess he has to put it really close if he's if he's not able to uh, commit on those short putts. But this looks pretty good. Might actually be that it's easier for him to putt from Stay longer up. distance. Yeah, today. step yeah. putt was great. Uh, that's pretty good. That's, that's really that's good. That's right in step putt yeah. range there. Yeah, he's just outside the circle. Good drive. Yeah, it's a long par three, but it's also downhill, so it doesn't play as 148 meters. It's yeah, plays much shorter than that. Yeah, but still, still takes a, a pretty big arm to get all the way to the green. Oh yeah, I'm really surprised to see Thomas blow. Blow past blow it. Way yeah. past that, it was kind of kind of tracking for what what would have been a wild wild ace, but I guess it it, it would have been OB if he wouldn't have hit that tree. And here you can see the leaderboards. Sophie Björlicke, one down after a few bogeys here on the uh, whole nine and ten bogeys. And uh, Silva Sarinen, also a few bogeys, but a uh, few birds solid as though. well. Yeah. Christian, uh, only three strokes back now. So if you haven't seen Silva Sarinen before, watch her because she is so exciting to, to yeah. watch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's provided the highlight of the year so <laughs> far for Disc Golf Stream. That sweet ace. And hey, no loves Disc Golf Park World. Uh, Christine Tatar with a birdie on hole 10. Uh, she might pick it up here on the m little bit more difficult back nine and maybe climb up hole closer ten. to Sophie. Hole 10 is a good birdie to get. It's a pretty long shot. That was a 16 meter putt. Oh wow, nice one. And Blair way too much up on the left side. It's gonna be very tricky to get anywhere from there. Yeah, this this left side is really uh, really cluttered, but he's lucky that he's in bounds anyway after that. I'm mm, gonna try to flex something through here with the forehand. And need to be extremely accurate to find something. Okay, he's not going with a flex line as it looked like, but he's up there. If it doesn't roll away, now it's mm -hmm. stopped. So, uh, about up eight, on the green, but eight <laughs> meter or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tester though, not an easy putt. Seppo is uh, actually looking at the birdie here. Looks like he's gonna go for a gonna kind of straddle a little bit and maybe he's maybe there's something slight slightly in his way you might have to put a little bit of anheuser on this hitting this kind of putt would maybe make wonders for his confidence mm. oh, e easy par anyway well hopefully um, give it give it a pretty good bid but just just a little bit right he might have had something kind of obstructing the straight line putt so he had to put a bit of ante on it and Pretty hard to get the touch just right. Yeah, the this hole is averaging just at par, so par is not a bad result. But no. uh, if you want to be up in the lead, you should be under the average. And uh, do you think that Thomas Gilbert has a chance to? Yeah, yeah, because he hit that under. tree there. Otherwise, that road is OB. So he, he's going to have similar to his position on hole two when he was also down a slope, but this is further down there. He's gonna he's gonna want to get this one though. He's not having the hottest start. No, he, is he one down. Yeah, one down, tied for thirty sixth place right now. He would like to climb a bit higher, but he has a lot of holes to work with still. But yeah, tricky spot though. Now is the time to start. He's got some trees in his way, and uh, looking at the very difficult shot there. Looks like he's gonna have to put some Anheuser angle on this and. 
get, get creative to give it a bid, but nah, too low. Oh, there. I guess he was more obstructed than we saw. Maybe that was a, a really good job of just getting up close to the basket. Maybe he didn't really have a line to run that at all. There you, you have Yusuf. Oh. Uh, no luck there. Caught the nubs and a lot of chains, but it just didn't settle in the basket. And if you would have closed your eyes and just listened, I would have thought that that would be have been in. But definitely caught a lot yeah. of chains, but you would have liked to have a birdie here, but that's. Not possible anymore. It was a good drive, anyway. Oh, no! You're seeing a lot out. of misses right now. Yeah, this feature card not not really in in fine form, I wouldn't say. Not not what we were expecting to not see. Not at all, and uh, it's such like they had don't have anything to to blame. Like uh, it's such a nice weather, no wind or. Yeah, it seems like great yeah. scoring conditions, really. You know they they've. This course is really seems to be trickier than it looks like, yeah. Yeah. For these players. Yeah, they're just everyone's just kind of a little bit off on, on, on different moments, and it's costing them strokes here and there. Here oh is the seven. first. Yeah, first look we get at this one. This is a totally new hole. 107 meters, much more uphill than you can see from camera here. Like, see where that guy's at. It's like a very steep upgrade. Uh, 100, yeah, 107 meters. Like I said, 351 feet. Brought to you by Disconnection. Great new sponsor. Averaging just at par, 3.07. So um, par is a good result. But if they're going to start to pick up the pace, they need to start now. One down through six. It's not going to get it done. No, that's not enough. Not if these players want to be out uh, up, up on, the, on the lead car tomorrow. And I think that all of them are looking for that lead card. Yeah. yeah, it's not too late though to catch fire. So let's let's hope they can turn things around. This hole, uh, the green, the green is very tight. There's a lot of guardian trees at the very end, and it's so steep. Uh, roll away potential totally in effect. Uh, a bunch of sharp, sharp kind of um, thorns and stuff behind the basket. If if you're somehow able to get back there, you you take relief behind it. We do have some backup here. here on. Here you can see the. Green. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, we 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 just did. This is not the feature card. This is the. This is the trade or the. Uh, yeah, the card ahead of them. Exactly, and there. Second, second to last card, uh, tea time, but you can see how you can sort of see how steep it is now, right? And look at how tight the green is. Like all those trees there to contend with. Yeah. And this is. V looks very difficult, and I, I think this is also one that we can see some really bad roll. Oh yeah, roll away if Big you hit time. that that basket, especially for sure. That's when you risk getting those. Pretty good camera angle here. You can actually quite see how steep it is. L like, look how far down that guy in the white is. That's like a very extreme change in elevation. And on this card, we have Eric Alto, we have Eric Tegenfeldt, we have Henrik Hagman, and we have Mikael Hemme. We have two Swedes and two Finns. Yeah. We saw Henry Kogman in the Copenhagen. That we did. Yeah. He didn't really play that well on the first day, at least. Uh, so that was the only we saw. Yeah. Only we day we saw him on camera. Yeah. yeah. He he did improve later in the event, but yeah, he was having a little bit of nerves and missed some of those shorter putts, if I remember right. But yeah. But he also showed some moments of brilliance. He's a, he's a definitely a quality player, and I think he was quite kind of disappointed after that first round. Yeah. He is. Uh, has proven himself time after time that he is uh, one of the best players in Sweden. Nearly a thousand rated lefty. Right? That's a great putt there. Was, it, was he left handed or not? No, am I wrong? No, I, I think you're wrong I'm there. Thinking of someone yeah. else, sorry. go straight in the heart nice one <laughs> at 
these are actually quite scary putts because it's very hard to keep your balance when it's so steep and especially when you have bushes tickling your <laughs> your legs and whatever parts of your body yeah it's a very very tight and steep green that's for sure so it's hard to get comfortable up on there so we are seeing quite good putting here Everybody's in and moving on to the next one, and we'll get to see some tee shots here from our feature card very shortly. Who's on the box? Should be uh, Thomas, I think. Yeah, no birdies on yeah. the last one, so he's going to keep the box, and looks like he's taking a... I think he is. Uh, that's not his own disc. I think he's, uh, oh, he's checking ta having a look at, at Blair's. Oh, is that with like a game. halo wraith, maybe? Or? Yeah, some kind of halo. Uh, that's probably right. That's, I think that would be a wraith. Yeah. Might it's be a double G. Seppo deep <laughs> down in his thoughts, staring down all the possible lines there and trying to decide what, what to go for. He's really, really focused in on the green, yeah. Very focused, yeah. But yeah, Thomas Gilbert, he is the highest rated player here in this field. And uh, behind him, we have um, Lauri Lehtinen and Niklas Antila. And uh, Veine Mäkkälä, Seppo Pajo, Jessen Yemen. So a lot of Finnish players behind him. They are the favorites here. That's uh, yeah. Can't say anything else. That True. Lauri Lehtinen in the clubhouse, six down. Okay. Great job. Six down. Does not. Um, that's not enough for the lead card. So we still have the same four guys up there in the top. Yep. I'm thinking more and more that might be a potential lead card for tomorrow. Like they no one like else is really nobody's threatening. Everybody no. else everybody in the top ten's in the clubhouse, right? That's right. Erik Tegenfeld. Ah, no, another name we have. Yeah. Four He's down through seven. He's off to a hot start. <laughs> we just saw him hit the sweet huh? spot there on, on the on the card before. So Okay. Mikael Hemme, also potential. He is uh, three down to seven. We know what kind of quality player he is. Yeah. Here we're getting to see hole 12. This is a beauty. Anakin with that nice uh, lefty backhand getting up towards the green. Might have a circle two put putt from there. Uh, we have we have to wait for the, the MPO feature card to tee off on seven because the uh, hole eight's tee is, is in a little bit. Uh, it's too risky to tee there. there if you shanked it a little bit, that could be really dangerous for the. So they always, uh, they're gonna let those guys go, and then that's that's what explaining the yeah, backup. Here. Wait them to wait for them to tee off yeah. before you tee off here on yeah. seven. Yeah. Kristin Tatar is now up tied together with Silva Sarinen, uh, second place. And here she is ripping on yeah. a forehand, trying to get up and down for birdie. I'm guessing, and Ooh, get that's pretty good. Space, but yeah, she's, she's inside, inside the circle. circle. Yeah. yeah. Such a beautiful hole here. I really like the green and the really nice to throw down off that huge hill. Still three shots behind Sophie Bjarlicke. I wonder if she is. I yeah. think she was inbounds, looks like. Testing that yep. line there. She is on the fairway after her first throw. Nice looking forehand. Snap Thank there. Oh. Okay, it hit Unfortunately something bush. bad there. That's the thick one. Looks it like she got stuck in there, yeah. yeah. Should be able to get up and down for par, but she won't be able to give it a run from there. No, okay, so a chance for Christine to get get closer then. Okay, now we get to tee off here on hole seven. Thomas Gilbert having the box. Taking a fast driver, I think. He does play a lot more than 107. It's so far uphill. I'm thinking you need like maybe 130 or, or something to get up there. Mm, that was not so good from Thomas, and he is repeating that in his head and in the... Yeah, that was yeah. pretty far off the mark. Yeah, it's going to be a difficult scramble there as well to get up and down for par because it's, it's, there's a lot of stuff. This is looking better if that can, it does come back, comes back. Yeah. He is up there. Wow, Look at that. Great drive. The best I've seen so far. He's got a birdie putt. Yeah, that's that's a very good 
look at the birdie from Yusuf Fatty. Seppo. Seppo Payo. Really needs a birdie here to get, get himself back on track. He's just over par at the moment. Mm, that's going to need to turn. That's going to need to hold the turn. It does not. But, but he's, he's still in quite a good position. Not too bad. No. He's almost up there, but th quite a lot of trees to find your way in between. Yeah, it's it's a tough green to really, really find a clean look on. Uh, and now, yet again, Flair need to find the disc that can hold the turn. He has been struggling with this shot so far today. And on that halo disc they were just inspecting. I do think that it's a wraith. I think so. Double G signature. It's up, I'm guessing. but it does not turn. So that's going to be out of birdie, birdie range. Yeah, he didn't get that to flip the way he wanted. and uh, It would have needed to flip up and then continue to turn a little bit, but it did not. Flipped the flat, and it a similar kind of nose angle problem as the on the previous hole there. It yeah. yeah, he's a little bit off. It's not what you expect to see from such a good player. Maybe now we can see that there is quite a bit of wind. Maybe it is actually affecting them now on these kind of open holes. What do you think? It looks like it has picked up a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be anything too uh, difficult to contend with. I mean, might be just a tad bit swirly, but it doesn't seem like it's very strong anyway. I, don't, I think it's... I'm not sure what explains the, the kind of low energy or, or lack of... Uh, yeah, that that is really important, what you're saying now. It seems to be really low energy here on this card. And uh, yeah, look at these players. They, there's not a lot of like uh, spring in their steps. There is not yeah, a lot yeah. of uh, like uh, focus in their eyes, except what we saw from Seppo there when he was like uh, before they were teeing off. But you don't yeah. see that really fighting spirit from them. Right, yeah? right. That that looked, uh, it, it was almost more lost than... I mean, he was, yeah, he, he, he was, he was yeah. thinking a lot, but it wasn't really like the kind of competitive focus look that yeah, that, that we sometimes see from from competitors when they're when they're really in the zone. You know? Yeah, for those of you who were who were watching uh, us last weekend in Olo, we can see the eyes of Lauri Lehtinen, and like that kind of look, you get almost scared when you see. We see something similar from Ricky Vaisaki every single round, and. Uh, that's the kind of fighting spirit you need to have, and especially with a slow start like this, if you want to pick up the pace. Uh, yeah, let's hope they can switch it, switch it on yep. here before it's too late. And uh, last thing you want to do on day one is shoot yourself out of contention for the event, you know, for the win. I mean, nobody's like, Th no big mistakes here, but really, no, they're not. So they're not really threatening in no? too much. Just around par, the whole group. So, but yeah, th this still, still a chance to get get going here. Just a much slower start than we were expecting, anyway. Yeah, that's that's true. And slow start from them all. Yeah, yeah, which, you, which is really quite a shock because you you know you you might expect to have a, a couple players dealing with some nerves or, or just not really able to uh, score as well as they want, you know. But to see it from everybody is not really um, very common, I guess, with players at at, at this level, with these skill sets and that ability. And oh, oh, good bid. What's just that, yeah. Heavy chains and that's so significant for this round. It's so been that yeah. kind of day, isn't it's it, for our feature bit card? Off all the time, yeah. Just a tad bit off, and he's lucky that didn't roll away. But what can Steppo do here then? He's not in such a bad position, though. I thought it this would is be a big chance to yeah? to uh, kind of jumpstart his heart and maybe get things get the motor running a little bit. And it's usually enough with like one big shot for for things to turn around, but that's not uh, one of those big shots. He had kind of a lot of stuff in his way and wasn't able to work it through. But well, actually quite lucky there that it kicked to that open position. Right, it would have been yeah. much worse with a tree kick like that. And uh, Ma, we can still see one birdie here because Josef Berg is really close. And it that's what it says on his cap, European birdies. That might be exactly what we see here. I haven't heard of that. No. That's a European birdie. Right there. Nice one. Great birdie to get to. Tough hole. Let's check out the stats on it real quick. So Joseph is now two down. He's leading the group. Okay. 
but only with one stroke. Thomas Gilbert one down. Blair Earn is on par. Sepapayo is one over par. So yeah, whole average is 3.04. Mm, just around par and 19% of the field able to get the birdie. Here's a really cool flyover of this hole. Look at this, this is a beautiful, beautiful shot. It's a, a very sloped uh, left to right landscape here. Uh, lots of lots of thick, low-lying trees. Basket basket there. Lots of rollaway potential. You don't want to go on the left either because it's super thick. Beautiful view from behind. There's a, there's a, a pretty pond there and big valley, lush lush landscape all around. And look at this. It seems like they have put some kind of green filter on the camera. It it's it can't be any more green than it's it's so lush seeing, there. Yeah. yeah, really beautiful place. This is hole 18's green. And still the four guys in the top: Emanuel Bengts, Niklas Antila, Eivind Janes, and Knut Wallen Holland. And Nine Josef yeah. with the only birdie on the card. Looks like he's taking a putter. I think that that's the pro play is kind of float a putter, try to get it to land soft because, you know, if anything catches and rolls, it can be long gone. This looks pretty good. Yeah, that's a beautiful shot. Keeps the line and comes down soft. Oh, he's there. He's Perfect. there. And if that, uh -oh. that needs to stop, though, that needs to, no, that's not going to stop. No, that's the problem. This deep down there. Okay. That's what can happen on this Such one. Such an unfortunate roll because that's a really good shot. Pretty common though on this mm. hole. It, it, that's the kind of the main uh, danger and element of difficulty on this one is that it's very sloped. You can't even see it from the camera, but it's like a, a very steep hillside here. Left, you know. Yeah, it's not possible to, to right match drop the, down. the angle of that hill in that's any way. That's the thing. Oh. Yeah, you have to kind of like get it just right and sort of hope that it that it just sticks. Mm, this is looking like it's at. No, it's actually Coming really back. good, really good. Oh yeah. Okay, nice he was proving me wrong. It's possible to somewhat match the the hillside. Yep. Yeah. Yep, he got that just right. Really, really good shot. Yeah, that might be the that kind of hot shot that he needed to get. Yeah, up. yeah, a nice yeah. easy birdie, and mm. see if Seppo can do the same with this uh, distortion, that purple disc. Yeah. Showing this nice overstability and oh, and this curls up nice. Ah, it stays yep. there. Yeah, in the circle. I was worried it would roll away in the similar way as it did for Yosef, but it did not. Curled up nicely. Yeah, that's what you want to see. Bilar taking a, a similar slow approach disc. Looks quite flat top. Very lower line. Much straighter and lower. I don't know if this is going to get all the way there. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's it sure there. Is. there. Beautiful. It's the best of the bunch. It was great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just next to Thomas's disc. Those will be a couple birdies, and hopefully Seppo can connect. As yeah, well. maybe they turn it around now. This could maybe, be the moment. Yeah. This could be the, the hole we're looking to turn things around, and if they can get this one and the next one, and then the... Yeah, they could potentially get it. Twenty-three Celsius, seventy-three Fahrenheit. No, moderate. Wind. Yeah, moderate humidity and mild, mild breeze. Should be really good scoring conditions. Yeah, and I think we maybe will see three birdies here, and uh, the only one who got the birdie on the previous hole might be the one who's missing out on that birdie. This hole is really such a beautiful spot to have a little break. There's like a, a really nice view. Kind of stop for a moment and just and just appreciate where you are. The the landscape is so pretty. It's up it's you know up up on some big rolling hills and you can see a really long way. Totally new hole, a part of the of the course that was um, before not used at all. So freshly freshly cleared up and uh, utilized for the for the revamp and really really nice one. You can kind of see how steep that hill is now when you see those guys standing on that hillside. Yeah, I did. <laughs> see, see how hard they got to work to climb up that. It's it's extremely steep. It's almost vertical. Yeah, that's not where you want to land. And that's exactly what Josef 
did also like maybe not as high up but yeah. still in the same kind of steep slope so exactly i think the other guys kind of landed in a little bit of the flatter part where it wasn't able to catch edge the way that his did so still bad. has a chance though you think he didn't roll too far okay it, it can go a lot further like he's not obstructed at all oh okay no uh, sorry i guess those those <laughs> those other ones were in his way but like I if it goes further you know you, you you can have a hard time even finding your disc but a par and uh Potentially three birdies, but um, yeah, Seppo has missed two shorter ones already. This is test your range. This is going to be good for his confidence, though, if he can connect nice and clean. No, oh, it's it not working hit, for hit him. Hit right in the middle, but it's just. I think that was a little bit high right, actually. No okay. left, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah, and it had a bit of height, yeah. so it didn't really. I guess it did, didn't come down in, into the basket, but wasn't too far off the mark. A little bit weak side, no, you're right. But yeah. he's just a tiny bit off. That yeah. It's so little that, like, that's a good birdie, by the way, from from uh, from Blair. Well played. And should see another one here. You that's good. Uh, yep, nice job. Those guys getting the birdies. Yeah, like like you were saying, I guess if the putt has that little bit of hyzer angle, it really needs to come on strong side, pro side, as they call it, so that it... it, it Catches on the uh, enough chains and pull to drop it into the basket. Otherwise, it'll kind of glance off to the left if it's if it's weak or am side as it. Yeah. Say. Close, but he's gonna need to work on that putting because that is not gonna this help him anywhere. Hole this nine, is a really then. cool new hole, very unique. Hole nine, yeah, par four, 178 meters or 584 feet. You just want to get your drive up somewhere up here, and the difficulty on this one comes on the approach. A really tight tunnel here. And the basket's uh, perched precariously on this really steep slope down. So you don't want to go too far on your upshot or you have like a, it'll roll all the way down there. There's luckily something like a little, I think, U-disc banner to stop it going all the way down. But uh, you can you can uh, lose a lot of strokes on the green here if you're, if you're not careful. And yet another hole that averages just around par. So they seem yep. to have been good at that to, to set the right par score on the on the hole so far. The course design and hole design is just absolutely brilliant here. It's it's so well thought out and so so well uh, planned and and developed. Everything makes so much sense from a from a disc golf competition point of view. Really, it really makes you think a lot about everything you're doing, and you have to be very precise with with where you end up and, and how you control your disc. Erik Tegenfeldt, shout out to him. Five down through eight. Bogey free. He's the only guy that's really making that kind of push that we were talking about to kind of, you know, try to get, get towards those double digits or even just to get himself on the lead card from these later tee times. Yeah, he got both seven and eight, so he he is hot right now. Nice. That okay. was a park park job here on, on hole eight in the a birdie from, from one and a half meter. Wow. Yeah. And seven's a really good get. Yeah, Thomas is just playing this with a really wide high as you're trying to do a bit of a placement play just to get himself uh, into some kind of a position for an up. That's too far right. Yeah, it is yeah. too far right. That's really difficult to access the the green from there. He's going to have to get really creative. Yeah, I don't think there's any problem to get get in through those the, the first wall of trees there, but to get all the way to the basket, that is not... No, that's not, not really prime position there. Yeah. I actually heard some stories about somebody parking this hole with a huge Anheuser shot <laughs> uh, from their practice round. I don't remember the name. It might have been a German player, but... I can't can't imagine someone. That must have been a wild <laughs> shot. 178 meters. Huge kind of Anheuser full flight. Got it to pan out and get all the way through the gap up there to the green. Would be a crazy eagle. Nobody's going for that. Everyone's just trying to do a placement shot and put themselves... But that caught some... I think it hit that big birch tree there, right? Okay, it might have kicked yeah. left, and if, if he did, that's good because you don't really want to be too far right. Otherwise, you have to get, you know, put a lot of angle on something to get it up there. And the gap is is really tight on the second shot on this one. Seppo looks like he's just going with a kind of a stock hyzer and trying big to put himself in position. Yeah. A little further left than we've seen the rest of them. We heard Christian Quox uh, talk, talking about stock 150 meter hyzers, but <laughs> I don't think Seppo is that far away from those oh stock he shots. Yeah. He can get some huge distance. We've seen it, but that's 
kind of off the fairway there. I'm with a little bit of luck. He could have some kind of of gap, and we have seen sure. him flex around that sure. that distortion disc quite well. So sure, he might have a chance. Yeah. But th these trees are are really tight. Like there's kind of a very specific fairway shape to this. You have to you know be lucky to end up with the line if you're off of it at and all. Look at this. We only see three names on this scorecard. Oh, unfortunate. Yeah. Looks like Antonio has withdrawn. She. Yes, yeah. we see Antonia that Faba. She dropped out after hole 11, so she must have really hurt herself there. She certainly did. She slipped bad on the tee pad there on six. She tried to continue, had a string of bogeys, and was obviously in, uh, in dealing with a lot of pain and, and discomfort. All, all we can uh, do now is just hope that she can uh, recover from that without any, any serious... Uh and so unfortunate because she was playing really well. She, she had a great start. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, she was showing, showing a lot of uh, uh, brilliance. And 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 fight. She she nailed that big birdie putt on uh, four. Yeah, that was that was huge. And uh, and she had yeah, you know, he o almost cashed the birdie in on five, and then slipped on six as tee pad, and just really really sad to see that uh, she's out of the event. I really hope that she's okay and that it doesn't Let's nothing nothing really bad happened. But I I doubt since she continued to play for a while at least. So yeah, but those oh. those joint injuries. Let's we'll just hope it's nothing serious and that she can recover quickly. And uh, and we're just wishing her a quick recovery and best of luck moving forward with everything. Yeah, thank you for some great shots anyway, Antonia, and uh, we wish you all the best. Yeah, very very nice person, very smart, intelligent. She's a PhD in uh, meteorology, atmospheric science, so she knows a lot about the weather and. Very, very uh, great communicator about all that and everything. She has a family, and you think she predicted some rain and didn't want to continue? <laughs> no, no. She, she was up up for this and really, really wanting to do do the best she could. And I'm sure no weather could have stopped her this challenge for a, yeah. for a victory, but uh, wasn't meant to be this time. It happens. Yeah. Unfortunately, it happens on the first round of a European Pro Tour event. That's not what you want to happen. Yeah, unfortunate uh, injury there. In the lead, though, we still see Sophie Björlicke, two strokes ahead of Kristin Tatar, who is now solo second. Do you think this is possible? Oh yeah, yeah, he's in pretty good position here. He can he can get to the gap and just uh, try to get a check up. You don't want it to go too far, but I guess you don't want to leave it too short either. You have a death putt. Oh, this looks like a scary shot to me. Oh, but it it's a little early. That's early, right? But no, he got through. Oh, oh, we could have actually gone in and not here another one of the bo most bad. Rolls. Well, here we see that green, though. You can't really come in with that much heat on this one. That, that's, no. that's not how you, you want to play that. But yeah, if it would have skipped in, that would have been fantastic <laughs> eagle, huh? Yeah, I would have liked to see that. And luckily, uh, that, that stays on the on the fence, on the U-disc fence down there. Yeah, if you miss that, you're in all kinds <laughs> of trouble, I guess. Yeah. I don't even know what goes on down there, but it sure ain't good. But yeah, he came in way too hot on that, and he's going to have to pay the price with a, a really long uphill putt. But What is this? It's going a huge spike hyzer over everything. This is going to be either really great or kind of disastrous. I think it might have been the oh. second of those two. Hopefully somebody saw where that <coughs> ended up. Uh, he was really going for it there, but... Mm. He was out of position and he had to come up with something. And that was, I guess, uh, the best he could do from there. And But th that's how you, you really need to be in position on off the tee on this one. You know, it's a short par four, relatively. I mean these guys but uh it's very very technical and with plenty of element of difficulty yeah yeah i really see that now that this second shot seems to be extremely specific you need to be in a perfect spot to be, to be able to it's super touchy yeah with that green the green is like the basket is actually on the slope you know like on the down Once slope so you, you kind of want to yeah you want to check it up for like a you know a three or five meter putt from from before the slope starts that's the way to really really get the result you're looking for Average is right, yeah, right around party, like you said. No, Se Seppo is just deep in the. Where is he even? 
Yeah, see, I, I think he was in really bad position because he, he kind of overshot. But there he is. And the yeah, that's that's how thick it is in there. There's really not much you can do. Like, you got to be on the fairway on this one. That was a really bad kick, and he didn't get anything he there at he all. He didn't progress no? very far, but... Uh, Maybe a better position now, can, though. Yeah. He can uh, find himself a line, but it's so thick in there. Like, you really... Look at he's still yeah, got the same shot, basically. There's just... Just advanced maybe 10 meters or so. If yeah, and there's... Even that. There's no lines, you know? There's these trees everywhere. There's these kind of, like, undergrowth, too, with some kind of young trees, and... And that foot is really yeah, like in, in the way for him. He can't really swing on that right side because there's so much in the way. It's going down to an extremely different. Like I have never seen anyone throw from from this position. And he hits. Is it even this? No, it's not the same tree. But another just few steps. This is going to be a big number for some. Oh, and he's not even out of it yet. That's just where you don't want to be. I mean, you got to be somewhere near the gap on this one. Otherwise, this is what can happen. You know, first, Thomas Gilbert. And he got pretty far up there, but he's also way out of position. Yeah, this is uh, causing all kinds of problems for these players. Very technical hole. I guess y y you really, really want to land somewhere near the gap. Otherwise... This is what you got. He's, he's, very he's not even he's not even far away from the gap, but from that position he This is just how great of a hole design yeah. Mats is. He he's a genius really. An absolute genius course designer. Think Every hole is like this. Oh, he gets through it all. Wow. wow. Okay. That was miraculous. What yeah. a wizard he is. Thomas Gilbert finding Away <laughs> in between Whoa. all those three trees, and uh, sweet looking at a birdie. So he seems to have picked up some pace after all. Gonna be three down now after after this hole. Slow down, yeah, that that's fine. Did slow down, no, oh, not enough though. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I. That's for bogey, though, right? That's what I mean. It feels like Seppo needs to be like more or less parked to. Right, his, his putter's definitely not hot today. No, unfortunately, but hopefully he can pick it up. It's still only the front nine, so he just need to get that in and just uh, get things dialed in. Thomas is going to get a, a kind of a surprise birdie there after being out of position. That was a really awesome scramble move. It really was, and it, it took his time and really, really deliberately. Executed a very difficult shot. He had a lot of time while Seppo was was also struggling there on the other on the other side to really find the line, and he seemed to have found something that I could not <laughs> imagine was there. Here's where Blair ended up. That's not too bad. He, he's you know he's able to just pitch up for an easy par at least, which is you know not a bad thing on this hole. Great job. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so bad. I, I thought it would be much worse. After well, it could have been. Yeah. yeah, if he would have been a little bit further down, you know, then he would have been, like, in an awful position. What was that? I think we are seeing Josef. Yeah, he is going to... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's up there. He can still save the birdie, though. Like, even after... Oh, save. He can still get the birdie, I mean. Um, he can be quite aggressive here on this throw. Especially with that disc, it's not going to glide past the basket with a lot. Yeah. So he can really run this. Taking his mark behind the banner. There oh. you go. What a putt. That was there a highlight go. putt. And that's so much more uphill than you can see there. That was an excellent putt. Good job, Josef. And... Uh, that's pretty tough to do to get the get everything right about that putt. Yeah, not be up way up the hill. He's three down now. Okay, so he's yep. kind of sneaking together a pretty decent round actually. With a great back nine, it could get himself quite a bit up in the leaderboard. There you go. That's all. Great Thank putt you there. for getting it in. Nice putt. But that was a bogey. Yeah. And Thomas with a really great birdie there. Maybe that's what he needs to get get his round going. I think so. And no, look he's at his four. He's three down as well. Yeah, he's three down. So him and Yosef 
not 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 as bad as it might have seemed. It's, it was a slow start, but they're they're picking pace up now. Yeah, that was a huge nice, putt. Nice yeah, putt. Super nice happy reaction. with that. And now we're seeing that kind of like the positive energy, energy yeah, that we have. Picking up. Yeah, picking up we now. haven't seen so far, but That's maybe we they needed the front nine to warm up. Yeah, and a couple a couple of big moments. Even even Seppo can take away a, uh, some confidence from this this stroke here. Perfect putt, and uh, yeah, not what he wanted from the hole, but. Uh, he's two over par so far and uh, really low down in the in the leaderboard we might see him climb up though because yeah he's, what super, he's super highly yeah. skilled player and he can catch fire at any moment and, and when he does be sure to climb right back up that leaderboard into into fine position this one's a, a really really nice part three kind of a big big hyzer for the righty backhand Takes a lot of power to get all the way up there, but these guys got it. 101 meters, 331 feet, but playing like a lot more. Playing like 120 or more. I think they're say. throwing overstable fairway drivers, maybe? Or yeah, something like that. I think it'd be pretty hard to get a mid all the way there, even with these guys' power. That's good. That's Very high. That's too high. No, that's or is it not? Maybe it's an understable disc and you got a good turnout. Wow, it was great. Come okay. on, that was super good. I think that is the line. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. Something that's not too overstable. Because yeah, you, you, yeah, it was just a great shot, wasn't it? Great job. I guess that's how you do it. That's how you get that distance and and cover the elevation. Maybe kind of a kind of a neutral driver. But I love not on a steep hyzer. Yeah. Yeah, I love when these people are so. Uh, well, the players are stepping up and showing me lines that I didn't think of. This is kind of what I what I thought people were gonna go with more, but there are some some risks to this. Mm, that is, yeah, blue. I think the basket was quite Seems like it checked up okay. a lot of speed. Yeah, but it should be a long birdie putt. Yeah. yeah, another great design up on a on a big hill. A couple of really pretty trees in the in the fairway there, maybe cherry blossoms or something. I'm not sure exactly what they were, but they were really really nice. This is similar to Thomas's. Just a little bit, a little bit earlier. Yeah. Not too bad though. Got got most of the distance and. Yeah, I think it's just outside the circle, maybe 15 meters or something. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure if you have a clean look, but uh, easy up and down for par at the very least. Let's see if Seppo can do something special here to he get back on track here now. He needs that. Looks good. It's Heiser in a lot. Right over the top. Not sure where it ended up, but pretty pretty clean line. I di didn't didn't hear anything. No, I didn't. Uh, I I don't think he's inside the circle, so I don't think we have anyone in the circle. We uh, there's going to be some looks maybe at birdies, but no easy ones. Yeah, yeah, nobody parked it or anything. What is this hole averaging? It is 3.11. Oh, so just over so par. Just over par. Another excellent designed hole. 22% of the field birdie in it. And a similar amount, either bogeying it or worse. Erik Tegenfeldt still staying bogey free. He's still five down, but now through 10. Tied for eighth place. Still great pace. Yeah, he could uh, definitely threaten those guys in the top. Only two strokes behind the, the leader. No, the, the the lead card. So yeah, yeah. But great to see a lot of Swedish flags up there in the mm. top ten. I like this. Yeah, playing great. Some underdogs too. Yeah, those are not the names we were yeah not expecting the, to see. Not not the favorites. Really, really cool storylines. Some new some new local heroes, and again on disc golf stream, we're we're witnessing uh, the birth of new superstars. Seems like a common oh, trend. Oh, but here. Oh, this no. needs to stop. Come on, that's so unfortunate. It didn't look like a bad bid. I think that was really good. It came in really soft, and some yeah, it just somehow popped up on edge, and that's so unfortunate. And yet again, so significant for this card. So many like We've had a couple bad, bad breaks. breaks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It seems like everyone's kind of getting them here and there. Just a tiny bit off. No one's really clean. And that makes like those 
Emmanuel Banks bogey free round nine down look even more impressive. Yeah. yeah, you have to do so well to manage this course because every every hole is designed to kind of uh, challenge you and, and get you to uh, make make minor mistakes that'll cost you strokes. And this time that disc landed softer, not rolling away, so that's gonna be bogey. Michael Hammer still also in uh, four down through ten. Okay, he's on a good pace. He is. He could definitely be up there. Another player we're familiar with from past coverage and uh, super talented. We one of the one of the brothers. Yeah, we have seen quite a lot of him and uh, been great. impressed every time. Yeah, yeah, super skilled player and uh, great sibling rivalry with him and Jonathan. Look how deeply buried. <laughs> That's so thick. The rough is pretty rough, and there's a lot of spiky stuff in there. A lot of thorn bushes and stuff. Bring a machete if you're going in there. Like, <laughs> I might be stuck in there forever otherwise. Looks like that at least. Yeah, and you, you might even need like a backup shirt in your bag. <laughs> it shreds to pieces when you come out. Yeah, I think you... It's got to get creative. Look at this. Going three quarters, kind of a scuba. Is that what they're calling that? I think so, yeah. yeah. Nicely done. done. He's up there. <laughs> yeah, it looks really steep on both sides there. So not an easy one to get close and get it to stay. Yeah, this mound is an another diabolical pin placement. Every green has some element of uh, real, real difficulty to it. A lot can happen. And seems to. Thomas is inside the circle, but slightly obstructed. Let's see if he can get down on that knee. And okay, so he actually ended up in the circle. Yeah, and he's actually quite close. I, mm. And there's even an opening there. Okay. This might be a chance for him to get another birdie. Which would be three in a row. Turkey time. Come on, Thomas. We would like to see this. I think he's got this. Looks like he's got enough space to make it work. Okay. Yeah. Nice one. Great. Then we talked that it was time for him to pick up the pace. After that, he has gotten three birdies in a row. There <laughs> you go. He listened to us. Well done, Thomas. Yeah. That's uh, what you get for listening to your commentators. <laughs> <laughs> That's well advised. Yeah. Well played. Great work for the Canadian out of Toronto, touring extensively in the States, and uh, really happy to have him here in Europe. And he's performing really well. Yeah, he's going to stay here for quite quite some time. Was playing it a lot of European tournaments. Six, six weeks? Five, something? six weeks, something wow, like that. Yeah. Great. That's really cool. First time in Europe, making the most of it, getting around. Four different countries competing in. I think so, yeah. He was talking about that he wanted to do this for a long time, but uh, then uh, that, that virus came. Yeah, and, uh, disturbed those plans, but it's good yeah. that he's finally able to make it happen and uh, making the most of it, starting it out here in legendary Yarva. This is one of the uh, one of the old holes, maybe with a slightly different pin placement, but very cool. Back in the 2016 Masters, KJ Naibo threw in for birdie from way, way out on this one. Nice magic moment from the past. It's a it's a beautiful hole, turning left to right like crazy, out of a really tight gap. It's uh, 145 meters or 475 feet. Very and tough one. Yeah, it's the fourth hardest today, averaging at 3.26, so just a quarter of a stroke over par. Yeah. They all seem to be there just around the par. That's really impressive for the... That's, yeah. that's a tip of the hat to, to Mats. He's, he's a true legend in course design, and he, and he just puts in so much time and effort to, to make it look so beautiful as well as function so, so highly and, uh, and such good score separation on, on every... Every shot and every hole. And here we see that the... Yeah, here we see the green. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Huge, huge hill. And this is the, the card that is just ahead of our feature card that is putting there. We yeah. Just a miss there from from Hame. Uh, Mikael missing the yeah. chance there. Only 6% of the field able to birdie that. We, we might need to shout those guys out. Yeah, tell us who they are. 
Let's do so. Just give me one moment. It is... Yeah, okay, there's a few of them. Yeah. Oyvind, Oyvind Jarnes, Pelle Bror Carlsen. Uh, Jalmar Fredriksson. Thank you. Victor Jonsson. Elias Gripler. And Olaf Andre Brecke. And Miro Martila. Those are great birdies. Those are tough names, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for you, maybe. And <laughs> also a few of them for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but a lot of, a uh, couple, couple familiar names and a lot of new names. Yeah. A really great birdie to get. And all those are from inside circle one. So that's an awesome drives. That's really impressive. And do you think they reach it with a, with a forehand or is it turnover backhands that are um, to play to go with her? I think, I guess you could, uh, you could get it with both. It would take a real bomber forehand. Um, it shapes up really nice for a, for a perfectly angled turnover uh, backhand, but I think it would take a driver for almost yeah. anybody. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful hole. It's a tight early gap, and you have to get it to move left to right with just the right angle. You, if you cut roll, you're in all kinds of trouble. There's one kind of guardian tree that's sort of right in the line, too. Really, really awesome hole design again. Oh, here, here you get it's some quite a tight gap to yeah, get out. Super tight. To get out. Yeah, very tight and super beautiful. I mean, look, you can see so far into the distance, and you have to kind of go to the left to see the the basket, and then after you throw it, you have to kind of run over to the left to watch where it goes. <laughs> it's such a cool, unique hole. And this is one of the OG holes, too, of the course. Yeah. Might see some great reactions here then on the from the reaction cam if we're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's always fun to see. Yeah, see him kind of run over there and chase, <laughs> and you can look, look. Yeah, it's, this is this is a real joy to play. And Thomas is going with a forehand. Uh, he has a great forehand, so no surprise. Makes it easier maybe to hit the gap because you can keep your head straight. Yeah, so he's going with a big old forehand. It needs to move so far left to right. It's that's oh, pretty that's amazing. Really and he keeps on rolling. And can he gets the roll into the circle. Mm, that Tom tastes edge. good. Yeah. Fantastic. He's on he's starting to shred this thing up. I like what I'm seeing. He's yeah, now he's showing what kind of player he actually is. We didn't yeah. really see it in the start there. Bit but of a slow yeah. start, but he's dialed things in. Might still be uh, just like we don't know. Yeah, yeah. But he's definitely, definitely getting himself in, into the zone and uh, has some great mojo going right now, doesn't he? Another great player who is two down through the last five is Josef Barry. Yeah, see him here. Here we go. Let's we'll see. He's going to show. We get to see the forehand and now the backhand line. This looks like a slower disc. I, I guess it can work because it's so downhill. M maybe they don't need drivers. No, maybe I that's think just that was actually a driver. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. But that's perfect. Oh, and he's inside circle <laughs> one. We got to see the forehand yeah, and the are, backhand line. They are hot to these two guys now. Those are fantastic they shots. They have right changed, there. yeah? Yeah, yeah. Really the, the whole energy shots, has picked yeah. up on the card. I mean, for those guys especially, they're really, you know, they're just... I, I like what I'm seeing right now. Yeah. Seppo then. And, uh, That's a slower disc. This is a slower disc. This is definitely mid-range, yeah. I guess it's possible if you get it just right. Yeah, yeah. Oh. These guys is power, but he that yeah. was not good enough though. So that's gonna be uh. a par at best. And he's disappointed with that. You can see that his energy is nowhere near as it where it needs to be for him to. He's having a rough be round. Really competitive. Let's, yeah? let's hope he can um, find some some highlights or, or moments of brilliance to pick his spirit up and uh, and keep his score from uh, slipping too far down the the board. Another backhand. He has very unique form, doesn't he? Well, he and that has a lot of turn. I was worried about that, but he doesn't it's have rising enough. Out, and that's big trouble down there. And yet again, he has done that mistake. It slopes so far down, and there's uh. just a ton of trees. He's going to have to scramble from there to get par, and that's not easy. He keeps on making the same mistake, trusting discs to turn over, and they are not even close to holding I think he's got, got yeah. a nose angle issue. Yep, that's, that's what's like happening, yeah. He's a little bit nose up, and yeah, uh, he, he needs to kind of straighten out and flatten out those yeah. those nose angles. But he's not getting the turn if if that disc is. He's definitely showed yeah. some moments of brilliance, but a little bit inconsistent with the tee shots. Mm. I think we're going to see a different player from like totally different level from him tomorrow, though. Uh, you can see that it's there, but it's oh just yeah a little yeah. bit off in the same way as Seppo, but they have different kind of problems. Yeah. Yeah, both having similar <laughs> struggle or mm -hmm. struggles, but not yeah different ways and. Uh, Let's hope they can um, do a little better on this back nine. They're definitely guys that can throw really far, so they can birdie uh, basically any of, the, any of the holes on this back nine. It just takes some, some really, really kind of precision long-range drives.
and and then some some really really controlled upshots too. This hole is so cool though, isn't it? This is I'm really glad they've kept this one. It's a really special one. Okay, so that plays first. So I thought maybe Blair would have needed to go first. I think he's gonna go yeah. for this because he, he really needs to get something going, but uh, okay, he, never mind. He just Not puts it close. I guess par is fine. Yeah, that could have been a big number in, ca in case he would have gone for it and hit metal and get a big roll down. And now it's Blair. Yeah, there have been a lot of bogeys and doubles on this. 25% of the field have taken uh, over over par strokes on this one. So a lot of bad stuff can happen. Look at here. This is what I was talking about. So thick down here. Oh, and it's so uphill, it too. It, this is like miles uphill, it feels like. you know. I mean, Find a way out here. It's going to take something real special. Okay, he, he gets out. Does he get close? Yeah, yeah, he did great. Yeah, that's good. Uh, nice potential par save. I still, I'm not gonna say anything until he's in the basket, but uh, that was a good shot. Yeah, yeah, he put himself in position to save the par. And now we get some some really nice birdie looks here. No easy putts. They are still testers. This, this is a little bit yeah. downhill too. So if he if he sails this past, it's it's trouble. But he seems to be on the mark now. I think he's yeah. he's dialed in and he's he's in the zone and. Yeah. Uh, Three in a row going and showing why he's our highest rated player in the field. Look at that beautiful tree behind. That's so nice. Looks like bananas hanging there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a perfect putt. Yeah, what a beautiful image there. there. Yeah. Great birdie from Thomas. Yeah, Thomas Gilbert. Take a screenshot there. And <laughs> yeah. That would have been a nice. Uh, he's charging. Picture. So cool to see. Excellent work. Four in a row and now he's five down. That's a good pace. Five down through really 11. Good pace, and he, he could still has a chance to get to get up on that uh, top spot. Definitely, he's tied for eighth now. So uh, charging, yeah, making yes. making some great moves up the leaderboard and putting himself in position to, uh, you know, get a, get a few more birdies and be right up there. He could still catch that double digit mark that that we were kind of hoping to see. Yeah, that might be tricky. Well, it, it potentially it could. The way he's work, playing, yeah. I'm I'm not going to count him out. I like what I'm seeing a lot. Do we get our second birdie here? Sure hope so. Another hot guy. Yeah, he's another guy that can do it. He's on a similar pace, right? Yusuf. Come on. Yes. There two. we go. Okay. Two birdies, and we got to see in. the yeah. forehand and the backhand. <laughs> Everything is possible here if you're yes. good enough, and these guys definitely are. That was, that was really cool to see. Nicely done. And a good par save from Blair. So they're able to boost that uh, birdie percentage up to 7% on the day. Mm, they lowered the average score here. Yeah, still a tough hole. Quite a bit. Still averaging Look the at fourth, it. Fourth Look hardest. at this beautiful putt. That's a it's another angle on that. Cool. And these kind of putts, they feel so good to get. And that's really going to boost his confidence even more. Yeah, and this was, this was a, like a no-doubter, you know, right on the pole. Boom. Perfect. Pro side, strong side, right in the bucket. That's not going anywhere. Perfect pace. Yeah, yeah nothing uh, nothing can go wrong with that. And here we are, hole 12. One of the most beautiful holes in disc golf. One of the best spots to be in the world. Up on top of that hill, looking around at a, at a just disc golf paradise. It's 214 meters, 702 feet. 12th hardest, averaging right around par. Yeah, yet again. <laughs> 3.99, no surprise there. Average yeah, I mean, I feel like a broken record, but course design, just superb. And uh, we do have a backup here on this hold. We're still waiting. So we, let's take a look at the FBO leaderboard. Uh, not what we see here. Uh, th this is, of course, the, the, the MPO, MPO. But Four birdies in a row yeah. for Thomas. Just shout that out. But let's, let's, yeah. let's tell us what's going on on the FBO side. Sophie is still in the lead. She okay. is... Uh, one over par now. She has uh, quite a few bogeys here on the back, she back nine, yeah. but she still shot two down on the front nine though. That's a, that's well, well impressive. Yes, she is, and Christine Tatar is uh, two strokes behind, tied with Silva Sarinen. Christine right now putting for a bogey, so she will uh, really okay. She's probably drop, drop one stroke. Gonna drop yeah. one back, at at best, yeah. So, but there it still seems that that she's safe um, on the lead card. Christine Silva Sarin and Annika Stein, they are all playing really well. They are playing well. They are there is a two stroke gap down to Elina Rydberg who is right now at the fifth place. 
between Anniken and Elina Rydberg, and then but Elina Rydberg is six over I'm four. Four different flags there mm -hmm. up, on, up, up on the top of the FPL. I really like what I'm seeing. Super cool. European disc golf, isn't it wonderful? And I'm sure uh, you tell everybody what's going on if you're with us and you know yeah, people that like disc golf. Or four different nationalities on the FPO and three different on the on the MPO. So cool. So much fun. And yeah, this is the second card here that we're waiting for. That's a nice upshot. Yeah, when people are when two of our players are getting birdies, it goes a bit faster than this card who they all parred on the previous hole. Here you get a good look at the tee pad. You can see for miles all around. Such a varied landscape. So much beautiful vegetation and uh, such a beautiful city Stockholm is. Yeah, I'm I'm born in in this city, so uh, I maybe am not allowed to say anything. <laughs> well, kind of biased, but I I really think that Stockholm is one of the most beautiful capitals in in Europe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's it's a very pretty city, capital of Scandinavia, biggest city in uh, northern Europe, or at least in the Nordics. And uh, awesome place to visit. And many great disc golf courses. It's not just this one. There That's are what I heard. People yep. were telling me things that I, I liked to hear. I have to and do a more extensive tour someday there, hopefully. They keep on popping up also. There's so much things happening in Sweden right now uh, after th the COVID uh, situation. And so many people started to play, very like everywhere in the world. But yeah. yeah, very cool to hear. They have a, a ton of manufacturers. They do. They're, they're making yeah. great discs, you know, all different brands and bunch of new companies coming up and uh, some some really well established uh, older brands and um, a, and a really nice culture there was a really really friendly people and such a good good buzz going on around there you know about about the the disc golf scene and that one of the things that that uh, was really exciting to hear was that the um, Yarva disc golf club has grown from I think it was uh, something in the two digits numbers like 50 or 30 or 40 something like kind of a, a moderate club size and within the last year or two it's it's grown to over what i think it was five or four or five hundred five hundred something like that yeah yeah, yeah so cool so it's really on the up and it's it's really an awesome scene if you're ever able to get there <coughs> make sure you do so and everything you can do to help save yarva do that please because this is a, a really part of the world heritage of disc golf and something we need to preserve for coming generations. It is, and and it, it is it actually really important to, to join and support your local club when you're playing disc golf, because that's the way to show those who are in the in the position to de decide things. Uh, yeah. That there is an active community and uh, they get actual numbers to see how many people are active and yeah. playing. And, uh, and this is a way we can actively yeah. build parallel structures to make a better world. It you know? definitely is. And this golf is a beautiful sport in so many ways. It's such an easy sport to step into. You can play on all different so healthy levels in so many ways for, yeah. for individuals and for society. And uh, such a such a wonderful culture. Here we get to see Thomas Gilbert teeing off from this iconic tee pad on hole 12, top of the world. It flips up nicely. Looks good. It's all you really need off the tee. Yeah, he's, he's hot, and he's not making any mistakes right now. Look at that nice sky, too. Some cool clouds. I'm sure Antonia could tell us a lot about what's going on there. Yeah, I hope we get to hear from her. I would like to interview to see. Yeah, I hope she's okay. Not as many mosquitoes this week as we saw <laughs> last weekend in in Oulu, even though I see, saw that Josef was scratching his leg there. Yeah. There were only a few about that I noticed. Uh, yeah, it's, it's usually not that bad in the in Stockholm. Yeah. yeah, and it was it was more back in the kind of um, warm up or beginner. Well, there's actually n like a nine hole really really cool uh, warm up or or uh, beginner junior type of a, a course right there by the clubhouse. That's right. That's really yeah. thick woods with really really tight cool lines that you can take a putter and a mid. Maybe one of the holes is like uh, almost 100 meters, but most of them are like you know, 40 to 60 meter, really technical, cool lines that you can practice your, your game there. 
Joseph ended ended up on the on the right side there. Which side do you think is the better side to be on? Well, you don't want to go too far right, or you'll be OB. Yeah. This is coming back, so it's gonna be fine. This is maybe his Falcor. I think not really 100% sure, but he might be going for eagle on that. He got got pretty big distance anyway. Maybe not necessarily an eagle contention, but huge, huge ride. I think you you don't want to go right. That's just you know the that's the only uh, way to get a penalty. I would prefer to be on the left side in that sense, but straight is kind of the, the place you really want to be, okay. the fairway, just right in the middle, if you can. Okay, this is a Halo Destroyer in his hand. Oh, cool. Can't wait to see the flight of this. This is just such a great place to watch a disc fly, you know, because yeah, there's so much time to see, to see, it, <laughs> see it do whatever it's going to do. It stays in the air for quite some time, and that gets a bad roll, it's though. A stable one, but if he can get around the edge of that bush, he can still work something up to the green. I hope he, he, he can get a look around that. And there we get to see him coming down this uh, really, really beautiful hill. Nice, nice cloud in the background and not a huge gallery. No, not yet. It's still Friday. People are yeah. maybe working and uh, I think we're going to see something different on tomorrow and on Sunday. Yeah, make sure you're in, if you're in the area, get yourself out there and support. And there's something for everybody here. Amazing pro shop selling all kinds of incredible plastic and lots of uh, lots of neat other things. They have really good food. Uh, they have some some really nice uh, Save Yarva and Yarva Disc Golf Club hoodies for sale as well. Make sure you get one of those and support the local club. And uh, just anything you can do to support this this place is time and money well spent. Silva Sarinen now in the clubhouse, finished with a double bogey. She's five over par. She's still holding a spot for the lead car tomorrow, but Elina Rydberg is just two strokes behind her, so she could eat that up with three holes to go. Okay. Solid, solid round. Just mm -hmm. that kind of unfortunate double bogey in the end. That's not yeah, really how you want to finish that. your round, yeah. but uh, really impressive performance and, and great, great work, Silva. Yeah. We might actually get to see her tomorrow. I sure hope so. I it's really love watching <laughs> her. I know we said it over and over again, but it's it's really the truth. Yeah, she she's an exciting player to watch and uh, a very young player as well, right? She, yeah, I, I don't know exactly how, how old she is, but she she should be quite young. She's yeah. Is she the reigning junior, uh, Finnish champion or uni European? That's a good question. We can can have a look. I, I feel like we she said it. She not last year. I think it's two oh, years ago. Okay, okay, yeah. maybe not the reigning, but uh, mm. she has performed really well in in the past. Lots of uh, Lots of fine, fine wins and really, really talented and exciting player. Yeah, at least she played in a junior division last year, so she oh okay, probably maybe just yeah. like 18, 19 or something like that. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Here's Blair. I guess he's got those trees in his way, but he can. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That a bit of a spike hyzer or something. Try Again, to get, get up and over. Get up over those uh, trees there on the right side also. Mikael staying bogey free, but is he getting those birdies? Uh, he's got three pars in a row. Okay, that was a actually a really good throw there from 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 yeah. there. Yeah, great effort. He's up on, <coughs> the, on the green. We still might have a chance. Yeah, what is that? Like just outside the circle, maybe? Yep, yep. Circle's edge. Impressive to get so mm -hmm. close from that position, yeah? Nice one. And he needs to get some birdies. Right now at par. Lukas Roken in, in the clubhouse, bogey free with the four down. Pretty good. Nice to stay bogey free. Tied for 14th place. I think it's Thomas Gilbert next up here after his uh, well placed first. Host. Okay, he's ha having a standstill look forehand. at the basket from this position, yeah. Find himself maybe like a, what, a, a2 a or something. Mm, was that flexing out too early? No, no, maybe a little early, mm -hmm. but he's on the green. Circle's edge as well, or just inside. Yeah, just the around way circle's edge somewhere there, yeah. The way he's putting, I'm, I'm going to give him pretty high probability of cashing that one. I think so. He has uh, proven to be very competent Yeah, from that range today. 
Yosef also taking the forehand. Stand still as well. You don't have to go up wide and get it to stall out and hopefully crash in near the basket. Does he get around? He wow, Beautiful. perfect. Nicely played. That's a tap in birdie for him. It is. He's gonna go down to five. Excellent. He's up there. Yep. He's in the mix. Totally in contention. Only one bogey today on hole five. Felt like he had a few more, but like, yeah, he... He, he definitely left a few strokes out there, but that yeah. just shows what a high-quality player he is. He still scored. He's going to go down to five down. Sepo's got, got a kind of a tighter tunnel shot, trying to use this distortion and skip it up there. Beautiful. Ah, that's a really high-level shot there from yeah. Sepo. Yeah, nice, nice low skip shot. Perfectly played. Should be a birdie for him. Maybe that'll kind of get him moving in the right direction. It's been a while since he birdied, huh? Yeah, he really needs to, to do something big, like he's too over par, and uh, not to even two hot rounds is going to get him anywhere close to the top. I think he needs to start to play a little bit more aggressive or change something up completely now, because I think he's he a can player relax and just have fun. And yeah, and that and might also be a, yeah. Uh, you know, once, his, once he just gets in a groove, then, you know, He's he's one of the best uh, frisbee throwers and disc golf players of, of all time, in my opinion. So, yeah, if he can just relax and uh, you know he doesn't have there's no pressure on him anymore. He's you know he's he, I'm not saying he's put himself totally out of the out of the mix for being up in the top ten, but uh, he doesn't have to really worry too much about the results right now. He just kind of has to have fun and enjoy the game that he loves so much. Le just barely missed that on the right side. It was just a bit too long for him to feel confident on that putt. But yeah, well, uh, that's uh, right what you're saying about Sepoy. At this point, he could just try to go out and have fun, but I think it's also extremely hard to do that when you come in with high expectations on yourself and you, you fail to live up to those already on the on the okay, front nine. Yeah. is a little further than I thought. No, that's no, problem. no problem at all. Oh, what a putt. Oh, uh, he's a putting machine today. Nothing is stopping him, and he has five birdies in a row. Such an elite level player and uh yeah putting like a champ and he's now just one stroke away from the lead card awesome performance from thomas gilbert so happy to have him over here just kicking off his Euro european tour here at the highest level on the european pro tour watching it all live here on disc golf stream what a pleasure yeah thank you for joining us today and uh don't drop off now because we still have a few holes to go Oh, and share the link or tell your friends or whatever it takes to help this thing grow and uh, Use the help everybody code. enjoy. Yeah, yeah. sign on up. It's uh, Father's Day weekend in the, in the States. I'm not sure where else they recognize that, uh, but gift your father a, a subscription to Disc Golf Stream. What a great idea. I'm sure he'll love and appreciate that. Yeah, look at this putt. A gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a great putt right there. Nice one. I guess he was from that angle. He looked closer than he did from the other angle, but still, circles oh, that uh, yeah, right, exactly. right in the heart. He has had quite a lot of them, uh, a lot of them now, and uh, they are so so clean, so clean, straight in the middle every time. And uh, yeah. this is a new hole as well, and it's it's a really nice one. Playing as the third hardest. I guess there's a lot of OB. It's uh, 229 meters, pretty. Pretty long, a little bit uphill on the end. Uh, baskets on a, on the bit of a slant, right to left. And here it almost looks like we're in like Tuscany or somewhere in southern Europe around the Mediterranean. It doesn't look like Stockholm anymore. It's There's such an yeah. incredible variety of trees on this property. I, I I just you know, it's such a fun place to be. Five birdies in a row for Thomas Gilbert. That's so impressive. And just when we were starting to talk about that low energy and that they need to do something and. They really did pick up both him and Yusuf. Uh, right on schedule, yeah, yeah right. Just, just when they needed to, kicking it into gear. Nine birdies between the two of them since we said that, huh? Really, really great. And uh, Sophie Björlucke and Kristin Tattar, they are following suit here on 13, 14, 15. Just still two strokes between them. Very, very cool. Great action, both sides, FPO and MPO. All yeah. kinds of countries battling it out. I, I'm really happy to see that 
Christine is not going out and shredding today because we know <laughs> that she's capable of much, much more than what she's showing today. Sure, but it makes it more fun yep. and interesting as a viewer, doesn't it? It will. And even as a commentator and that, that we get to uh, witness a little bit more. Uh, I definitely wish Christine all the best, but for the drama, it's definitely nice to see her coming out and need to chase tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe maybe that'll bring out the best in her. And we'll and get to see some really special performances. And I'm not so sad to see Sophie Bjarlicki in the top here. <laughs> oh, that's magnificent. Okay. Yeah, that feels she's kinda good. She's really great to watch. I, I'm I'm so impressed with her. She throws so far and she's she's so uh controlled as well. And here you can see it at thirteen, fourteen, fifteen they both bogeyed and Anniken came up close and yeah, she's actually tied with Christine right now. These are really <laughs> long, difficult holes on the on the back nine. And Christine just right now got a birdie here on 16. Birdie? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, that's a tough hole. And Oh, wait, wait, 16. That, I guess that's one of the easier ones of those par fours, but still, still a great birdie to get, yeah. Mm, and here is Anniken. This is for par. Nice putt. And Sophie is also having a par putt here. Hey. That's really, really good. Well played. Here you go, straight in the middle, and uh, okay, now it's just one stroke in between. Christine is getting closer. Nice. But yeah, these three players seems to have put themselves in quite a good position to reach that lead card tomorrow. This is Henry Kogman. Yeah, Henry Kogman. He's a sponsored by Prodigy Disc and also by the Flying Plate Company. A really big arm on that guy and a great player to watch. Yeah, Ooh. and here you see why. <laughs> Don't roll OB. That, uh, that slant can... Yeah, it got quite a big skip there. I got scared for a yeah. second, but it was a well-placed shot anyway. Yeah. yeah, I think he's going to be on the circle's edge if it checked up yeah. where I hope it did, and uh, he can putt uphill safely without any any issues. But and he's the Thomas. That time he's meditating there, having yeah. a nice moment, enjoying the. Maybe he's tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was no. a, it's a, probably a long flight. Yeah. He doesn't look tired. He looks kind of <laughs> fired up right now. It, at least if you look at his scorecard. He's playing it really yeah. well. Pleasure to watch. He seems to be enjoying this. How could you not? You're out of a disc golf park. <laughs> Beautiful, lush summer. I'm everything. enjoying it, and I'm not even there. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fun. This this is going to come back nicely. Yeah, I think this is going to be going great. Big distance on this. Is it safe, though? Yeah. It is, right? Yeah, I think so. Mm, he's not sure of it but yeah. Yeah, he's fine <laughs> okay. he's fine yeah uh, he is it was a good got, got a nice full flight on that got a little bit of turn and then it flattened out and then faded and he's gonna be way up there he, he might have like a, a, a putter approach or something from way up there looks like he got like huge distance on that might be six in a row that's pretty good position to do so and joseph is hoping to get uh get a turkey going i think this might be a good chance for him that's a good throw. That will probably also come back. Yeah. yeah. Beautifully. Right in the middle. Great job. Can't do, can't do much better than that. That's a perfect placement. Yeah, he's also really happy with that. Similar re reaction as yeah. we saw from Thomas. That was a great one. Nice smile on his face. Zeppo got himself a birdie on the last one. If he can get another one, then he'll be right back to par. He can hold his head up high and... Uh, Keep marching forward, keep chipping back under par. And he's playing big here. That's a big oh yeah. distance shot. It's going very high and uh, it's right great. up as much as possible here. And he's so far up. Look at yeah. that. Yeah, beautiful drive. He's like 20 meter ahead of Thomas. Awesome. That's I think that's his D model S that he uh, piped down the gap in Olu there to get that crazy ego on uh, on that really really tight. Yeah, we didn't get to see it live because he was playing on one of the earlier cards on Friday last week, but he eagled one of the... It must have been one of the crazier eagles ever. 
Yeah, Olu. I think only yeah. Simon Lazat, the only one I'm aware of that's ever eagled it before, and, and he they named the hole after him for doing it. So it's not something that's done very often, that's for sure. Blair also safe. Yep. Didn't get uh, as much distance, I think, at least. A little bit off on that left yeah. side, but that's totally fine. You can still birdie from there with a really big second shot. He's got that yep. hook face. <laughs> I think he. Really I think ripped. he's a little bit worried there. For this is a cool reaction cam. Look, yeah, disc is in the air for so long, and he's not too sure where it is. And then oh, we didn't get to see it, it was in the air so it long. It was <laughs> coming there after a while. And similar reaction from Yosef. Much wider line, pure hyzer, and nice commitment, and comes right back into the center of the fairway. Yeah. Oh, there are so big, big uh, drives here, so it, you don't have time to see the like <laughs> 10 reaction second reaction yeah. cams. Saying, come on, come on, come yeah, on. Oh, I think I see a little bit of a smile there, right? Great shot from uh, Temple. Is this that uh, Wraith? Same Wraith, Wraith that, yeah, I think that so. double G halo. Signature race. What a what a last couple of events double G's had. Garrett Gerthy. True. He shout out to him. What a what a fantastic player. Very entertaining. Such a, a great spirit on the course as well. Yeah, he took the Beaver State, right? Yeah. And then he was just finishing second to Simon Lissot. Yep, in in, or yeah. in Oregon there in Portland Open. <laughs> playing playing fantastic. Putts on the money and he throws far far as anybody in the game. Super exciting player. He's also got a lot of great touch, doesn't he, too? Putting down yeah, some fine rollers and throwing that sonic. He's, he's such a cool player. Such and it's so unique. cool to see when he has this very different kind of punting style, like most swing yeah. and with a big yeah. of lot of hyzer on that disc, but when it's dialed, it's like so dialed. It's yeah. he's hitting everything suddenly. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And he's such a kind, positive uh presence you know what a, what a genuine beautiful person seems like just just a great card mate always encouraging and never see him in a, in a bad mood really fun guy to watch we are seeing some uh great results here in the in the leaderboard Anakin Stin on hole 17 got a birdie from about 20 meter. Wow. And uh, nice. Sophie Bjorlicki got the birdie from 16 feet. What is that? Also five like meters. five meters, yeah. Yeah. Great birdies. I told you that An Anakin's putt is amazing. She's got a really, really great range. And we're going to see that tomorrow as well. That's cool. If she doesn't make anything. Oh, she's playing really well. Yeah. It's going to take a lot for her to, to miss out on that lead card now. Super talented player with lots of potential. Really nice to see her and Sophie performing so well, staying right there with Kristen. Just what we'd hope to see. Some people keep in pace with her. There you go. Can't do it yeah, any better. No, that. can't do it any better. Matched the slope with the with the disc angle and parked it. Easy bird. Yeah, he was shortest of the group and still able to reach that. So. That was a great up I shot. think we might see a few more of those. I hope so. Who's next up? Thomas, right? Yep. yep. There he there is. is. Okay. Oh, he's going forehand. He's going to have to go on forehand. I think that bush there on the left side might be disturbing his backhand. So Maybe a little. Yeah, but that he's so far up, so it shouldn't really matter, I think. Yeah, and it might be a good angle to come in forehand on this slope. Less chance of a skip away anyway. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> he <can't laughs> he's even closer. He's totally parked. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's playing so six. good right, right now. So six in a row. Mm. And uh, now he's up there. Getting himself some double turkey action. Now he's up there with just a few, oh, still quite a few holes to, to play. Charging up the leaderboard. That's going to put him in a tie for fourth. That's seven I mean, down. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. And Yusef also looking good. If that is keeping up. Yeah, look at this. They are playing so good right now. Yeah, they they really turned things around, didn't they? Collectively. I'm I'm so happy to see that because it's just what we wanted to see, yeah. isn't it? 
we were starting to worry there for a minute and, uh, uh, after a little bit of a slow. Yeah, I mean, when, when you come to hole six and seven and like you don't feel that there's any energy and the score is not there and uh, then it feels like this is going to be a long round. But Yeah, next thing you know, they're popping off. <laughs> yeah, the show has started. It's wonderful. So it was just uh, the warm up. Seppo a little bit pinched on this little tree, but he's got a got himself a forehand approach possible as well. Looks like not the wind might be picking up just a tad bit. Not Didn't too often you see Seppo going to a forehand. He's got it though. He's, he's got, got it. He's he's got great great uh, forehand. That really great I mean forehand. That's the impressive part of it that he's not throwing it that often, but it's still so oh, good. Oh, that's great too. This everybody's well inside the circle for birdie. Should be a star frame. I will be disappointed if it's not. Uh, is it going to be the first one of the day for us? Mm -mm. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Ah, great. Can't wait to see it. Well, we, we have been... Uh, we're not going to count it. them earlier. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. We're not going to count it, but we're just just happy to see everybody throwing so clean now. Let's see. Let's hope the putts can be the same. Yeah, can't do it any better than they just what they showed us here. It was perfect. Yeah. Every single shot. Really fun. Great to watch. And who's first up now? I think it might be Seppo. Nope. Guess it's going to be uh, Joseph first. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so close. It <laughs> when he steps up to it, it looks even closer. Oh yeah, you know, about four or five meters. I just showed you how close the other ones are, right? Nice and easy. Yosef down to five down now. No, sorry, six down. Excellent. Yeah. We may well see him again tomorrow. Yeah, starting to look quite likely now. Yeah. yeah. All he needs to do is pick a few more birdies off on this these last uh, five or so holes. and. Uh, there you go. Great to see Seppo back on pace. Yeah, he's now at uh, back on par. Excellent. A couple, couple great birdies in a row, and he's a guy that can really, uh, really score well on this on this back nine. He's got the distance and the touch to do it all. So, Blair Earn is one down, so one ahead of Seppo, and Thomas Gilbert is now seven down. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. And look at this beautiful. This is a cool one. Yeah. Fourteen. 253 meters, 830 feet. So beautiful. So many nice trees. This is a hard one, though. This is averaging 4.5. So um, yep. this is the second hardest of the day. Yep. Can you birdie this? Then uh, you will get a lot of strokes on the rest of the field. Yeah. And how many birdies do we have? Only 3%. Oh. Not too many, huh? Uh -huh. Yeah, and he here you see those two birdies that I was talking about from Anakin and from from Sophie Excellent. on hole 17. Just one hole to go, and uh, seems like the lead card tomorrow will contain those four players from four different countries. So cool! Looking forward to that. That's what we want to see. Yeah, hole 14. It is a tough one. It's really long, and there's a lot of OB. Four birdies, only four birdies today. Mm -hmm. And who are those? Morten Christensen, Bile Ahokas, Niklas Antila, and Nestori Tukkanen. So some very familiar names, three Finns there. Morten, not too familiar with that one. Is, nope. he, a, is he a Swede or a Dane? I think he might be a Dane. Yeah. Not, not sure, I'm not so familiar with, with oh. him. I'll, I'll check real quick. He is a uh, Norwegian. Norwegian, him, yeah. Yeah, from Oslo. Great birdie. Yeah, you got to throw throw really far and then uh, keep it really controlled at that long distance. And one who is really very known to do that, it's uh, Niklas Antila. And I, I don't think we have been talking that much about Niklas today. And let's tell a little bit about hi his last weekend where he picked up a win in Oulu. Yeah. That was really impressive the way he pulled that off. Yeah, he played so well. 
built himself up a little bit of a lead, and then uh, Lowry really kept pushing him. And they kept kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he kept answering right back with, with clutch, clutch shots and clutch putts, and yeah, the way amazing they performance from both those guys. That was a that was an awesome battle. The the way they pushed each other to like those great big shots, like matching each other uh, hole after hole, and Lowry putting so much pressure on Nicholas, but Nicholas never let it get to him. He just like uh. kept on performing and uh, just did everything he had to do. Yep. He never seemed to got even slightest nervous. And earned himself yeah. the, the first big win of the year. Really, really nice. It is not the last time we're going to see them two fighting for the victory. We might even see it this week and again. Yeah. yeah. Two the, the two top rated players in Finland uh, during the new player rating update, they both dropped one point, but they still stayed matched the same. <laughs> They're still both uh, right, right neck and neck. 10.26 now, I believe. That's cool to see. Yeah. yeah. So uh, many, many battles ahead for those two like great so players. And just below them, Jesse Nieminen. I wonder how he's doing today. We can see now that the rain has picked up, uh, so that might be bad news for this card now. Yeah, yeah, that makes it a little bit diff more difficult mm -hmm. to uh, attack some of these longer holes on the back. I hope the rain isn't going to be that bad, though. It doesn't look too hour. Oh, it's mm. hard. To, it's hard to see on this on this camera, but uh, might just be a quick shower, but it, it could still uh, cause some some problems. Yes, he even finished at minus one today. Okay, I so similar to what we saw from him last week, and he also d had not the best first round, and then he went out on Saturday and Sunday and scored uh, hot rounds both those days. Yeah, finished with the turkey, so he's going to have some momentum heading into the final day, but he took himself a six on this hole 14, this, this really difficult uh, hole that we're <coughs> facing up with right now. Mm, that's a bit surprising. He's all, he's all knotted up with some very familiar names. Other Finns, Jonathan Hamme, Daniel Davidson, and Elias Lukonen. All at minus one in the clubhouse, tied for 40th place. Mm, they probably, all of them probably wished for much more today. So yeah. they're going to... Some of them might be on the card together tomorrow. And maybe they can push each other for some really hot rounds and battle right back into this thing. Yeah, I might be joined with Sepp Popayo also. He's just there behind them, one stroke, and have to wait and see where he ends up. Yep. Getting a good look at the leaderboards on both sides there. Sophie with a two-stroke lead. And Christian and Anakin... Knotted up for a second at plus three. Silva holding strong in that fourth place at plus five. Looks like she's going to be on our lead card tomorrow. Yeah, definitely, because there, uh, it's only one card out there playing right now. So. Yep, there's, there's, and there's only the three of them, and they're on the top. So yeah, she's, exactly. she's guaranteed herself a spot on our lead card tomorrow. And here they are. Anakin Steen. Home with a... Mid-range approach. She's up kind of high on this uh, hillside. Oh, I guess this must be her third shot, so she's probably just put that under the basket for, for par. Hopefully it's close. That rain coming, it can be kind of hard to get a good grip on your putter. So it's... Uh, looks like the rain's... Maybe it was just a quick shower. It doesn't look like it's anything too heavy. Yeah, and this part of the course, at least, doesn't seem to be raining as much. But Here we've seen an upshot from... Uh, Hard to see who it Not was from. Sure, who it was, but either either Kristen or Sophie. I think, I think it was Sophie. Christine. Oh, Christine I think is it coming was there with I think it was Sophie because oh, maybe it came from that side. Okay, and, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. I, yeah. I see it now. That she put it under the basket, though. That should be an easy par for Sophie. So she's gonna finish at plus one. Fantastic round. She's proving what a quality player she is, and uh, very happy to see that. Well done. Okay, back to to the MPO. Thomas Gilbert, of course, having the box. Six birdies in a row. Oh, that's not good, This though. is turned over. This is turned and burned and did not get much at all. That's okay, though, because it's, it's so bad that it's it's fine because it's safe. Yeah, th true. It there's, it a, there's an OB strip there in the middle, and he didn't get any penalty there, so he can, he can play this for par now, and, uh, and that's just fine. I think he slipped a little bit there on his run up. Maybe with yeah, the it, with, with all the rain, the tee pad could be a little slick. It looked a little bit funky his yeah. run up, not as smooth I mean, as it usually does. So I wonder yeah. if something happened. Could be a grip and slip issue there, and uh, he's lucky that it, it just kind of cut rolled into a into a fine like layup zone, so that he he's he, birdie. I don't think he's going to attack for birdie with with the wet grass, but he's going to play this safe for par, and maybe that's the best thing for him right now, being on such a hot pace. 
This is also turned a lot, but it did That's going to be OP, I believe. Yeah. Let's see. Spotter. Camera move to the right, please. Camera move. Yes, okay. Not it's out. Yeah, yeah it must be out. out. You can yeah, see it on his reaction. Yep. At least that's... Oh, a conveniently placed tent there during the rainstorm. Well, they were lucky to find that. And then we see Rene, the Danish disc golf guy. Thanks for returning my jackalope. <laughs> thought it was lost in the in the woods of uh, E. Orton over there. I thought I'd never see it again, but very happy to get that wonderful mint disc back. They gifted to me from Josh Rippey in Austin, Texas. Big shout out to him. Thank you very much for that. It's my go-to driver. And this is a nice go-to driver from Sefo, get on back. Uh, that is I think it's going to be bounds. safe. Don't you think that's going to be out of bounds? If it came back a little, it, it, if it cut rolled back. Mm, no, I'm not so sure if that was in bounds. He looked it's a little bit off to the right. Quite disappointed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a bad shot. Uh, I guess they're having problems with the. No, it was a, it was not out of bounds. Yeah, see, I, I think he, he cut yeah. rolled just back into bounds. So I think because he, he cleared that uh, that OB strip. And there is OB on the right, but it wasn't that far right, and it had the angle that it was looking like it would it would cut roll back. That's that Wraith again. Does it have enough time? No. I think this is fine. Is it should should clear that OB place, and that's pretty much okay. perfect. Okay, yeah, that's great. That's great. That's fantastic. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Sorry, that is actually really good throw. Very good. Yeah. By far the best of the bunch there. And uh they just finished uh, hole 18 FPO feature card. He said, he said, oh, wow. And he looked down <laughs> at his hand and you could, you could just read his lips and he's yeah. just like, oh, yeah, the mm -hmm. rain really got him there. It kind of came down pretty hard for a moment and he just couldn't get any grip. Sorry, go ahead with, with what no, you're saying. Uh, uh, yeah, we have a, the field uh, just finished. Um, we don't oh. have any FPO player out on the field Kay. anymore. So we know our lead card for tomorrow. We and do. And we know our leader. leader. Yeah. Yeah. We know our leader, Sophie Björlykke. And what country does she come from? She's from Sweden. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and what country am I from? <laughs> yeah, very, very cool to see the, the home home nation hosting this event and uh, see her play so well on her. Yes. Uh, uh, Sophie here. is uh, from Vänersborg, western Sweden, about one hour north of, of Gothenburg. Okay. But she knows this course well. She scored a great round, one over par. She's in the lead, one stroke ahead of Christine Tattar, who Four, finished okay. with a birdie. Four great birdies. Five birdies for Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Few too many bogeys, though. Yeah, but uh, still a great round. Still really, really good. And she, and she birdied that last one? She did. Wow. So she just That's a great birdie to get. One stroke behind. She's going to she be... had to be the only one who got that, right? In the field? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. without a doubt. She's yeah, the yeah. only one that could do that. There was only one par, and that was Sophie. Wow. She won birdie. So the top two are the only ones that are able to yeah. tackle that Bohemoth's monster of a hole. Okay, let's let's watch Thomas here before we finish that talk about the FPO. Yeah, he just yeah, but you were right. It was so bad that it was good. He yeah, he just he just needs to play a safe hyzer here. Yeah, perfect. Just put himself in in position for a nice a nice easy upshot. That skipped a lot mm. though. That skipped a lot. The it's safe though. It's safe. But it seems the hat got wet there and the no, <gasps> it's not safe. Or is it? It is safe, but it's barely safe. No, oh, it's no, okay. it's too close to call. But they he have to have a look. He he really kind of. Uh, um, I don't didn't think didn't execute that no. shot very well. And I don't think he counted on that skip. Yeah, yeah that skip. Maybe the grass is a little wet and it got it got so. a bit a bit more greasy than he thought it was going to do. Because it lo looked like a pretty safe hyzer, but uh, it really caught caught a huge skip there. And yeah, Silva Sarinen uh, is also tied now with Anniken Stein because Anniken finished with oh. a double bogey. Okay. But they are still on the lead card. So we have Sweden, we have Estonia, we have Finland, and we have Norway. So cool. Tomorrow. So yeah. cool. Four different countries and, and everyone within four strokes. So still anybody's game. It's still open. Yeah. We were a little bit worried that, that someone would might run away with it. We thought it would not be Christine, but... Uh, not at all the case. No. Super exciting. If you're not subscribed, make sure you get yourself a Disc Golf Stream subscription at that great discount price and uh, come back and check out the FPO battle that's going to be going on tomorrow. Yeah, please don't miss out on this. It's Four different countries <coughs> here in the legendary Yard of a Disc Golf Park in Stockholm. What more do you want? I mean, what what more could you expect for your for your very affordable price? So much entertainment. What a value. You see how that it keeps on raining even though the sun is... 
shining, so it's a bit of everything right now. I'm sure there's a beautiful rainbow somewhere nearby. Very cool. Okay, this is not the prime position. I think I see a rainbow there. Did yeah. I just say yes? <laughs> might what be, a, yeah. Double, double rainbow. You're all right. There's the rainbow. It. Yes. So, so cool. Legendary place. Legendary moment here. It's giving us everything. Oh, yeah. All the drama and excitement. So many cool shots. So many fun players. Yusuf is definitely even a bit of a tricky spot here. He's really not sure about what to do. What do you think he's going to pull out from here? I think he's going to play this <coughs> for par, and he needs to just make sure that he's inbounds. He doesn't really need to get a ton of distance because he's going to have a, you know, uh, like a pretty pretty basic upshot. So he's going with a higher play here. Yeah, uh, just something safe, safe and and smooth, and just just inbounds is the thing here. But he has that. Oh yeah, those those are so <laughs> grabby. There's, there's thorns on those, and they'll catch your clothes. And this is fine though. This is perfect. That's all he really needed, I think. Was uh, it. Or is it? I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah, that should be good. Yeah, yeah, because that's the right side. So he's he cut it, cut it kind of close to that. <laughs> a little bit more well, scary than yeah, it yeah, would have needed to be, but yeah, but it's fine. He can just kind of uh, get up and down from there, and everything will be okay. There you see some tuny umbrellas. But, but yeah, Joseph was uh, on uh, out of bounds after his his first okay. throw there. So this so he's gonna have will to be a bogey and see the bogey, but no. uh, but that's okay. It's a tough hole, second hardest one, right? Wasn't that what it was saying? Yeah, was it the third maybe, or so it's up there at least, averaging. Have a stroke. Second, yeah, second, second most hard. difficult, yeah. averaging 4.56. So not losing too much to the field with a bogey there. But 46% of the field taking bogey or worse on this one. And there are some big numbers. It's a tough hole. It'll, it, it'll, it'll eat your lunch if you're not careful. Look at the rain coming down now. Seppo trying to <laughs> shield his disc, and then he's fanning his hand off. <laughs> it's going to be a wet one. Raining a lot. And usually when it's raining like this, the sun is yeah, yeah, I think it's going to... Not last that long, it's but just still. A quick yeah. shower, but this looks what a well good. executed that comes yeah. back. Yes, fight all the way through and Ooh, okay. It, it lost quite a lot of speed there when it when it hit those. But he's he's in circle two, I think. Yeah, he is. So it's uh, par at worst. Yeah, that that was his uh, second shot, right? Or was it? Yeah, I think so. Right? Yeah, because he kind of cut rolled back to there after he turned it over a little bit too much, but but he did clear that ob uh, strip. This was the best of the bunch, wasn't it? Yeah, this was really good, and I get on back. Totally misjudged that when he did he catch those birds. Oh, okay. So Kick down though. So not really in a birdie position though, but, but the first shot was great. Second shot, not as par. Yeah. Par is pretty good here. You can just pitch up for an easy par, and that'll be fine. Imagine being. Emmanuel Banks in the lead, ranked, uh, rated nine six two. What a feeling! Up there, he's Bogey gonna have a free. I hope he can really enjoy and have fun tomorrow together with these big guys he's gonna play with. It's gonna be really exciting to see what he can pull off. Yeah, it's gonna be so fun to watch, and he can be so proud regardless. You know, a huge underdog. You could see how proud he was in the interview before yeah, this round. Yeah, should be. I mean, that's yeah. so cool. Shot the round of his life in the biggest moment. You know, when it really mattered. And now he can get all kinds of attention, and uh, I'm sure it's going to go a long way for future sponsorship and um, really putting his name on the map. You know, we've 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 been really, really lucky and privileged to to witness so many of these stories on Disc Golf Stream this year. It's, it just makes it the job that much more fun. You know, when when someone you don't expect comes out on top. You are so right in everything you're sa saying right now. Okay, now they're having a look here at th Thomas, if he's out of bounds or not. And it can sometimes be very tricky to to see. And if it's too hard to decide, then the benefit goes to the to the player. In most yeah. Cases, yeah? What, what they need to c uh, confirm here is whether or not even uh, a minute fraction of the disc is, is touching the playing surface. It's not enough that it's just touching the line. No, it needs to be needs over to the be line. On, yeah, and and that can be difficult when these stakes spread out, especially when it's right on the line like that. You you have to if it's if they're taking this long though, then they they probably do have to give the benefit to the player unless they can't really 
If you have a string, sometimes you can run a string along, but doesn't seem like they are placed in that way that it's easy to pull a string there. I guess not. But yeah, that was quite a skip he got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen this before. Seth <laughs> <laughs> has got himself a stick. He's a he's a veteran of the game, so he's got tricks that we don't know about on how to how to tell what's going on. He's got himself a little stick. Thomas is down there. Yeah, this is usually what you're doing. You're li lining up that sure, one and just trying to see if there's even a even a tiny fraction of that disc. But you're right. When they're looking this long, then I think that the benefit should go to the player. But yeah, I'm not sure what they decided here. I'm He's guessing they're going to give it to him. I think he. Yeah. Uh, Regardless what they decide, he gets to move in one meter on the fairway. <coughs> but now is the question if this is his second, no, is his third or his fourth shot. Yeah, as of now. Yeah, it they decided it was out of bounds. Oh, so out. Okay. Yeah. So, so they just this they couldn't. Is, uh, yeah. This will be his fourth shot. So he's going to need to try to get up and down for his bogey here. Uh, this is not an easy one. Look no, he's got that birch in his way. Mm -hmm. It's and kind of a weird shaped birch. And, and even without it, it would be kind of a tricky shot. He, of course, he can go around everything. but he's a skip, yeah. like a backhand yeah, low, low skip shot with an overstable mm -hmm. driver? or what? That's what I'm thinking would be. But that tree makes that shot really kind of hard to commit to. Because going, yeah, because going in straight there, it's uh, such a low ceiling shot and so... I think that's why, why he didn't yeah. take his full meter. He's going to try to access that space on the inside of that birch and uh, try to fire a nice little skip shot, like we said. But he no, hits that he tree. And okay, oh. lucky there with wow. the second kick. A little ping pong, and he got himself to circle two. Mm, so now he still might a chance to save his bug. Yep, you're, you're <coughs> right. He might, he might actually get it, and that would be very important now after yeah. fighting all the way up to, to lead card. You don't want to give up that spot. As of now, that, that nine down round that Emmanuel put in is, is rated at 1050. So okay. That's, that's almost that's that's 90 strokes above his, uh, <laughs> his rating. That's going to boost him up a little. That's very impressive. What a, what a very cool underdog story. I'm rooting for the guy. It's always Local. fun yeah. to see those surprising names popping up. The beautiful shot. Beautiful shot from, from Josef. Well inside a circle. But he has also been out of bounds, so this he's going to putt for a bogey there. It's a tough hole. If you is telling me that Thomas Gilbert is ins inside a circle, I'm wondering if that is actually right. I, I think, think he's think just outside. Uh, would that would be my guess as well. <coughs> Might be hard to see for the scorekeeper from back where they were. Maybe they thought it slid up further than it did, but he's not far outside the circle anyway. No. I, I would put him at about 13 meters or, or 40 yeah, five feet, yeah. The way he's putting today, uh, it doesn't matter where he is. I think that he's gonna he could convert sink from there. that one. Yeah, for sure. Good observation. Big touchy shot there, and might. Ooh, I think it. Tried to dunk it. I thought it had a chance to go in, but not really. Right on line. Yeah. This is a look at a birdie. Come on, do it. Oh, oh. wow, it was a it good was bid, yeah. Great bid, wasn't it? He had that, that perfect kind of safe safe run at it. Just not gonna go far, but it, it yeah. had the chance to kind of just drop right in there. Nice Anheuser step putt. And now will we see a bogey or a double bogey from Thomas? I'm guessing a bogey. Like a little 42 footer. Definitely outside the circle. Yep. And then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter where he is. He's Great. finding that basket. Great putt. Huge save for Bogey there. Unfortunate to go out of bounds, but awesome putting performance from him. Another player who is struggling today is Baina Makela, also one of the favorites coming in today. He's also. Finishing at par. No, sorry, he has two holes still to go, but he's right now at par, so okay. not a good day for Vaina and not a good day for Vaina. Mm. There we go. 
Nice putt from Yosha. Some quick stats on uh, how Emmanuel got that got that job done today. Hundred mm, hundred percent C one X putting. That always helps your case, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> kind of does. Hundred percent scramble rate. Right? Yeah, kind of also helps. Not too bad. No bogeys, no OBs on this course. That is something special. And fifty percent birdies. That's a stellar round right there. That's good. And look at this replay. Thomas Gilbert. Oh yeah. He's putting so great today. Right there. Yeah. Left corner pocket. Beautiful putt. So dialed in. Yeah, but um seventeen percent parked. That helps too. That's so great. And if we can be even close to that tomorrow, he's gonna Yeah. Yeah, that, that's gonna be so exciting to see what he can pull off. I mean if he can replicate that type of performance, you know, there's no stopping the guy. And here's hole fifteen oh, hundred and eighty eight monster. This might be the hardest. I'm, I'm gonna guess this is the hardest one. Let's, let's have a quick look. And it turns all the way around, so it's oh. a U-shaped There's hole. a Mando there, so there's no no cheating this one. Sorry, I got too excited and I clicked some wrong button. But um, just this is this is so tough. If you don't get off the tee on this one, you're just totally in, in all kinds of trouble. Yeah, there is a Mando. Uh, just in that, um, and I was. What, uh, how, what do you say? <laughs> the, the, the top of the horseshoe, or yeah, yeah, or yeah, it's like a full horseshoe, right on the kind of um, bend on yep. the bend of the horseshoe. The bend, yeah. that's like. Yep, and it's it's like a. It's it's definitely the hardest. I I, I knew it was when I stepped up to the tee. I could just tell it was going to be the hardest when I was on the course. That's that's two, two rounds in, or two, venues in a row where where there was an <laughs> obvious clear, most difficult hole. And then you have OB on the right side, all the way up to that Mando. Yeah, this one will. This is almost like a par five in a way. I mean, it's like it's averaging four point six seven. Fifty two percent of the field is taking bogey or worse. And who, who have are been able to find the birdie? Quite a few birdies. actually. Yeah. Six birdies, and that is an amazing birdie. It must feel like an eagle, really. I mean, and they are all the guys who are up there at the top, more or less. Yeah. So a bunch of great dudes. I mean, yeah. Oivan Yarnes, Niklas Antila, Nut Valen Haaland, Raimo Soka, that's a new name, Lauri Lettinen, and Juha Pokanen. So some, some major studs, and uh, one name I haven't heard before. Let's have a look at this guy. Where is he from? He's from Porvo. Pretty pretty close yeah. to here. Not far away at all. Just a few minutes. Seppo having the box. And he is hitting the absolute <gasps> worst possible oh. three. And that disc is going to be shaped a little bit different. Yeah, and that's a long way to go. At least he's in bounds, though. Yeah, it, it kicked to the right direction also, so he can still attack on the second throw. Yeah, and with, and with his skill set, <coughs> you know... The I, w I would be mm. really impressed if he's able to par, but... Uh, Might have to retire that disc, though, because that's going to fly different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. going to be bent out of shape, isn't it? This looks good. This looks real good. That's All about the best you can the do. Way really up is. there. He's that's the sweet spot. Great. and He's having a look at the birdie. Sweet. Wow, I guess that's how you do it. I mean, I, I was kind of high <coughs> wondering how, how it gets done, but that's that's how you do it right there. Nice, like... Really super powered, heavy driver skip shot. Another boy who could, uh, what a, and another one who could reach it is <gasps> Thomas, <laughs> but he's shot. finding the same tree. It's so easy to do because you have to keep <laughs> it so tight in order to get yourself left. <laughs> he's laughing about it though, and I'm happy to see that. But yeah, you're right. It's yeah. it's a very like if you want to get some distance, you that tree is really disturbing you, I guess. Yeah, yeah it's but they're kind of lucky they kick to that side because if you kick on this side, there's nothing. I mean, you're just like. Okay, he's flirting yeah. with that tree, and it you have to pitch out for no, your third. He hit that second little tiny birch tree there. This tee shot is so difficult. I can't even tell you how hard this is. I mean, you can kind of see, but if you're standing there, wow. So just one clean throw here, and one half miss, at least, from Yusuf, and two big, big misses from... Yeah. It feels like even to play this one for par is kind of hard. You know, you just... And then if you get aggressive, oh, this, this is not, this is not, not good, even not good at all. What's going on That could here. miss the Mando. Okay, we didn't. It's rolling. Kicks out. He's ah, lucky. Lucky, lucky to get it, out, yeah. but still, <coughs> he's in big trouble. 
this is gonna be a bogey or at best. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bogey at best. <coughs> Showing a little bit of frustration there, mashing down his disc in the bag. And Sepp, what did he go oh. OB even? No way. No, no. I think he's okay, but yeah, yeah. He marked it there, so he's he was pretty close to going OB. That that would be worst <laughs> case. <laughs> that would be such a oh man. But he's got a lot of trees shame. in front of. It. I mean, the what is he gonna do here? Now? Gotta go forehand roller or something, or what? Or or just kind of like try to uh, get himself out and get up there and accept that he's going to probably have to take a bogey as well. Such a tight gap to even he's get going through. with the forehand roller, so this could this could get mm, ugly or, or it could be something real special. <laughs> this can end up a little bit anywhere. Forehand cut roller. Pretty cool okay, shot. Yeah, he's getting a lot of distance. It went in a little early, but I think he's mm. fine. No, no, that's okay. Could be much worse from that position where he where he was. Yeah, no, he got a lot of distance, and it's going to be kind of hard to cut the corner now, but I'm not really sure. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Let's see what he can do from there. Yeah, Thomas is... Uh, Looking less and less likely to to get himself up on that lead card now. He's, he's running into some troubles here on the, on the two most difficult holes. They this fourteen fifteen like just when you're kind of like starting to feel a little bit tired from the all the elevation and ups ups and downs and plenty of difficult holes before this. But then this is where the the course really kicks it into another gear and, and it really you really kind of uh, have to just sort of survive through these. It's also like this is the furthest part away from the clubhouse. You know you're. And these two holes are kind of away from everything else. You have to play these two and then kind of have a long walk back to, to get yourself to 16. It's it's very time consuming and very energy draining and very challenging and just beautiful course design. Two awesome holes, incredibly difficult, and it really tests everybody's kind of uh, skills. Ha everything. <laughs> everything. Stamina, like stamina <laughs> skills, you know. Uh, mental yeah all of it all of it and above it almost feels like it's going to test your spirit in a way above is just where joseph is going i think that's going to work out okay should have a straight right. up and down having a there. smile so <laughs> i think that is okay yeah four percent of the field taking triple bogey or worse on this one and i, I could believe it this kind of hold that makes my arm tired just by watching. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel, yeah, it's just like after 13, 14 holes, when you step up on the, it's like it's your energy start to, you, you are starting to feel a little bit drained after playing that many holes and yeah. that many long holes. And I can totally understand what they are feeling right now. I was told by a local that, that the basket was originally placed even further back. <laughs> <laughs> That's cruel. <laughs> yeah. And they had to get it was already too difficult, I guess, you know. It's just it's tucked so far back there and you just But then if you get it just right, you know, like uh was it Blair? Yeah. Yeah, then you know, then you you can really take a bunch of strokes on the field with a yeah, we see there are that. a lot of struggling here going on, so this is a chance for him to climb a few spots. Huge feather in your cap if you can birdie this one. Who's up next? It's it is Blair. See, but even with that perfect drive, it's just, it's a very difficult second shot. Oh, but he's already passed the mando, so he can try to thread the needle here. Do you think he will? Yeah, he's, he's looking at it. That's what he's lining up, but there's not a whole lot of space in there. It's very <laughs> thick. Okay, but, but, but he's he also... I guess he doesn't have room for the spike high there. I mean, or does he? It's hard to get it up that high and get it to, you know, still make the turn that it needs to to get all the way fading back over there. It's just a very difficult He is going to go for it. Look at this. 
Oh, good effort, but he catches some branches. And oh, okay, he did. Yeah, it might be buried in there kind of deep. He would have needed to put a little bit more on that. It's pretty thick in there, too. I mean, he might have a hard time even getting up and down for par. Super tough hole, but very, very beautiful place for sure. That boy, so you're looking at that same gap. Is it the same gap that we just saw? I think so. There? Sure so is. He's got to do a little bit different thing. He's got to reach out with a sta standstill forehand with that uh, distortion. This might shape up pretty good for that that kind of shot if he can really kind of force it over and just. Right through, did he get all the way up? Almost, I think he's just there at the edge. It's pretty I good. don't think he came out, but I think that's good enough. Yep. Still gonna be a bigger number than he wished for after that early tree kick. Really unfortunate. You see that Josef Barry is still staying in the top 10, but it's not with much. Here he is. Par at best for him. He's still got a few things to contend with. Yeah, this is not an easy par to get. Is that going all the way up to the basket? I'm not so sure. I think it died a little bit too soon. What do you think? Uh, I kind of missed it. Sorry, I was <laughs> checking <laughs> some stats. Sorry about that. I don't no know sure what happened there. And then it should be Thomas next up. And he needs to get really close here to not get anything more than a bogey. Yeah. Because this is his fourth throw. Looks like he's taking a more stable approach disc and just hoping to get it close. What could that be? A2 maybe or something like that? Yeah, probably. Seems to be a very popular. Oh, this is great. Oh, get in there. This is great. Oh, uh, perfect. What a shot. Yep, nicely done. He hasn't given up yet, even though he had will get now a second bogey in a row. Two bogeys in a row, but those are the two hardest holes on the course and uh Pretty hard to play those clean. But yeah, to get on to that lead card, he would need to get at least two birdies on the last three holes. Very doable. Mm, should be able to. Yep, yep. The next two, I think, are, are a couple of, of the more easy ones relative to par anyway. Uh, we can grab some stats on those real quick. Yeah, Josef did not reach it. He's, he could, of course, run it, but it's a very tricky one to get. So 16 is averaging 3.9 and 17, 2.8. So they're both averaging below mm. par the next coming. Okay, th then it, it, it could be done. Yeah, 18 is a little harder. That one's averaging over par, but... Oh, this is... Just a bit too high, and right it's right top. Yeah, right at the top. Good try. So close. But he's going to have to accept a bogey. And what does Blair have from deep inside the forest here? Maybe that <coughs> wasn't the best decision to go. Okay, he, he does have a kind of a look. <laughs> if he could make it from here, that would be so cool to see. That'd be a highlight. Wouldn't Can't it? even see him from the other camera angle. Just has a tiny little window that he needs to. This is for birdie, though. Find his way through. Yeah, it is. Oh, come on! Oh, great effort. That's <laughs> a close for par. That's I really went for that, laying yeah. flat on the ground after. Full commitment. Yeah. Punching through nicely. Hole 17 is kind of, uh, I guess, this plane has the easiest one on the course. Averaging 2.8, and that's the easiest. So that shows you the level of difficulty here and, and the great course design. And Seppo did almost get out, but not all the way. 
one of the OG holes as well, 17. Imagine if you would be able to... This is for par, right? Yeah, it is. To save par after wow. hitting that. That would be remarkable. I think. Yeah, that forehand roller was really good. That's ah. almost what we're seeing. So close. But yet again, he is so close, but not there. And that's the story of the day. Yeah, or just, just a little bit off. It just continues to go just a little bit wrong. There we go. He, he did really well to put himself in position for par after that. And that forehand hit, roller though. and then that like sneaky way through really yeah. almost yeah, got him there for the par. And flex was really great too. Distortion shot. Unfortunately, he's going to have to take a bogey, but uh, pretty good effort to get a putt. And he almost c cashed it in. Just just he'd been a little bit on that left side. If he can, if he can just kind of get it a, a few centimeters further on the right, those will, those will stick all, all day. But... Yeah, we are seeing three bogeys and one par here, so not yeah. the best scores, but it's kind of a long traverse to the next, and we're going to take a commercial break, so make sure you check out. Avocado, take seven. Action. And caught. Perfect. That's a wrap, everyone. For the win. Yes, he gets it in. Wow. So well deserved. Silva Sarinen on hole seven. Oh, oh my oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. What an incredible ace. Oh, boy. Todella kaunis putti peltoselta. Having my own line of discs, all named after sound design terms, is a dream come true for me. After all kinds of testing and throwing different molds, I was easily able to come to a decision on what molds that I wanted. So the reverb for me is a perfect distance driver. It's going to cover almost all of my distance driver needs. I'm just so thankful for Prodigy for believing in me and giving me this opportunity to have a couple amazing discs under my name that I can trust. I'm back and thanks so much to all our sponsors. Three holes to go. Yep. Final stretch on this beautiful, legendary Yarva disc golf part. This one. Yeah, this is one of the easier holes. Uh, yep. Par four, hole 16, uh, straight shot and then turns to the left. Yep. And you just want to kind of put it out there somewhere in the fairway and then see what you're dealing with for the upshot. It's, uh, 194 meters or 636 feet. Not too much elevation change on this one. Kind of a one of the flatter parts. Uh, quite a few trees and a very beautiful meadow fairway. I think that th these all holes are so beautiful and I'm so jealous of all the players being out there today. And now it's not raining anymore. Okay, let's so see. It, 
looks like the weather is being nice to these guys yet again. Yeah, and those guys at the top are sitting pretty. They're going to be on our lead card tomorrow. They are. We still have uh, one guy who could push in there. Well, Josef Berg could potentially also birdie out and uh, maybe... Maybe get, get a share that time, yeah. but I, I think... That doesn't seem very likely. Kind of, kind of, yeah. I, I think he, he could definitely birdie out, mm. but I'm not sure what, it, what his PDJ number is or, or where that... You know, that, 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 of course, yeah. Uh, or, or how? Or I'm not even sure what the criteria is for this event. Um, no. I think I saw in UDISC that when Thomas was up there, he was actually in front of some of those Norwegians. Could uh, be the case. He's, yeah. he's, he's been playing for a little while. and uh, So if he's able to get himself a share of that fourth place, we, we might see him again. But otherwise, the, the top few guys we're definitely going to see. Yeah. I think the top three for sure. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if I was... If I actually was right on that, but we have to wait and see. It's still possible that they might push themselves into that lead card, but they have to work really hard then. And Blair earn first. Nice slow hyzer. Just safe and easy right in the middle of the fairway. Another one of those and you should be up, up by the basket. Yeah, that was a good looking shot to me at least. Yeah. Yeah, there's not nothing too much to this one really. You just kinda just wanna put yourself in play and then just kinda see what you're dealing with after that. Similar shot yep. from Seppel. Totally fine. And Thomas. He looks like he he's going a little bit wider, higher. Yeah, he knows what he needs to do now, so I guess it's I wonder if he he be cares so much about getting on that on that lead card, I think. He would like to be there. Seems like He's gonna give it a try. He's definitely gonna want to get as many birdies as he can that's anyway. True. Just yeah, to keep that's, that's in true. Position. Yeah. You know, even if he doesn't get the lead card, he wants to be, you know, up on that chase and yeah, as, I mean, as many strokes within uh, the leaders as, as possible. He's a I mean from the T I don't think it's gonna change anything. No, he's but I mean this will he get really a little bit extra aggressive from out of position, maybe. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't think he's gonna he, he just probably wants to put himself in position. Mm. There's no, nothing can go too wrong on the, on these last holes, really. Here we get another course close-up. Yarva. Number, uh, the second highest rated course in Sweden. Mm -hmm. I think only Disc Golf Terminal in Skellefteå is higher than yeah. that. Yeah. But it used to be number one, yeah. as you saw the you know before the 2020. Uh, Not only in Sweden. Construction began in, yeah, the, in world. the world. Yeah. So this, you know, the legacy is firmly in place. It's just it's now uh, rated a little bit differently with the <coughs> changes and so many signature holes as, as you've seen everyone is a signature hole course design superb fantastic work from everybody involved and a real pleasure something for everybody here mecca disc golf In thank you udisc for keeping track on this of the scores without them <laughs> we would have been quite lost sitting here yeah a lot of great stats they're providing and uh Make sure you follow along on UDISC. Erik Tegenfeldt, who was playing really strong on the first half, he has slowed down here a little bit on the back nine. It's not, a bit, yeah. Yeah, it's not really in position anymore to attack, but he could well reach a top 10 position. He's right now four down with two holes to go. Going to have a little bit of a blind mm -hmm. approach here, but not an easy one. Just kind of a, a bit of a spike hyzer up, up and over all that stuff, and hoping it comes down nice and soft near the basket. Looks pretty good. It gets it up high at least, and uh, oh, if it just stops there. Yep, that's hit. right in his range. He's been, he's been nailing those. I'm not worried when he's there. <laughs> yeah, he's such a good putter, <laughs> I, isn't he? I know he can get it from there any time of the day. So confident from any, anywhere, like <coughs> 60 feet and in, really, like 20 meters or so, you know. Similar position here for Blair, Earn.
Keeps us a little tighter. Yeah. Could be a little better. Just a bit tighter, but also yeah. also similar distance, maybe a little bit closer. A little closer. Than, yeah. Circle's edge. Well executed. This boy is now sporting his sunshades. Sun's back out. Yeah. Rain's moved away. Everything's probably still a little wet, but... Okay, he actually has a little hole to go through there. I think he's going to go up over yeah. the top, though. <laughs> Which would be surprised if he actually... That'd be a cool shot, wouldn't it? Yeah. That might not actually be worth it, but... It'd be fun. Entertaining. He's taking a driver and going with a big spike hyzer, just trying to get the disc to spike in, yeah. and he does and it he perfectly. Know. He knows how to throw that shot. Yeah. To perfection, and that... That's a tap-in birdie right there. He's not going to miss. Yeah. That's nice, and that's going to that's gonna put him under par, is it, or not? No, because he just took a bogey, did he? Yeah, he he's going to get... Uh, yeah, to to even par if with with a better here. Yeah, back to par. Yeah. Joseph. Also good. Very good. Yeah, this might be a potential star frame with the uh, some big Thomas, bucks, Yeah. Yeah, Thomas Gilbert first up, I guess. Mm hmm. Mm, but. Yeah, he needs to get at least two, maybe even more. But uh, he has put himself in a position here to get one of them. Uh, a par round today is rated right about 978. Tells you a little bit about how difficult this course is. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, he's <laughs> behind a few branches there. Also, does he even see the basket? Because I don't see his oh, head. He's got to go back down to the knee here. Yeah. Just kind of got a little bit of a roll back into that. Uh, and now I see a little bit of wind also, so I wonder if it's not too much. Ah, okay, maybe not. Maybe not. Slight breeze. He's good at these though, isn't yeah. he? Puts a great spin on the disc, so. Yeah. Great wrist wrist action. Oh, but not this time. Uh, not this not time. But short. Okay. Yep. Needs still needs two birdies and uh with two holes to go. We looking less and less likely to see him tomorrow on the lead card. See if player can connect. Mm, he's actually down to two under par now, so he has really picked up the pace. And now nice. he's three down. Okay. Just one behind Josef. Nice. He was the one that kept it together when, when Josef and uh, Seppo and Thomas were struggling here on 14 and 15. He so parred both those, yeah. He did. Well yeah. played. Things can happen quickly. We know it. Yet it's so easy to forget. Yeah, there, there you some, go. Some very clear momentum shifts during this round. Mm. Josef now also tied with uh, Thomas. Okay, nice. Five done. down. So he could still reach the lead card as well. Because here we see Thomas getting a par. And Seppo with the easiest birdie putt of his career, maybe. <laughs> One of them at least. Here it is, hole 17, the easiest one, 2.8. Still not easy. One of the OG holes, original. Course layout, 94 meters, 308 feet. Brought to you by Discounter. But with a 38, 31% birdie rate so far today, yep. it feels like a must-get birdie. Yeah. Especially for these guys. Yeah. And here you see it. Josef Barry and Thomas Gilbert, five down. Still with a chance for that lead card. At least Thomas is placed 
over Joseph Berry there in that leaderboard. I'm wondering what they are. Let's see if that if it's the PDJ number that it's easy to find out. If it's yeah. uh, if it's the clean round, then that that's going to go to Newt. He, he played bogey free. That's right. Thomas Gilbert with a PDGA number eight five eight five zero, and Joseph Bay with nine five. Okay, so that means that Thomas has a lower PDGA number than Joseph Bay. What do they have, the Norwegians? Newt looks pretty young. Oh, but he's got a really low number. He's okay. got the lowest, so I think he's going to be our face on the on the lead card. He's without an ace or something. This is just passing that wall but does not have enough power to get all the way up to the basket so he's looking at a long birdie putt there yeah i think we have our, our lead card secured, okay. secured for tomorrow exciting yeah two norwegians a swede and a finn but still a chance for for these uh, two guys to get close get and close be and in striking position for yep. tomorrow yeah that's gonna hit that tree right yep. yeah it did yeah connects on connects on that guardian tree and uh not really a look for a birdie from there not too much yeah <laughs> still uh, yet another one of those misses that he has had he has had so many bad breaks today and just a little bit off once again i think he's gonna be so eager to go out and play tomorrow and really prove himself yeah he can do do a lot better this is looking so good though this is looking really good. That's a good line. Wow. Yes, that's how you do it. That's how to throw your disc to get a birdie. Nice line there. Some kind of slower disc and just put it perfectly. Thomas is going with that FX2 mm -hmm. forehand. Uh, he was talking about it already yesterday. A little bit low, but... It's way too low, right? No, ah. it's okay. He's fighting through, but uh, no, that's not going to be a birdie. Nope. And he's not happy with that. I think that was a complete misrelease. It didn't look good out of his hand. Yeah, no. I think he was trying to go higher and, and get between those two trees and over that fence, but uh, <coughs> it really didn't have the height mm. to, to do any of no. that. There you see our lead card for tomorrow. And what a surprise name there in the top. Amazing. Emmanuel Bengts from Hundal, Dalarna, Sweden. Dalekarlia. Maybe that rings a bell <laughs> for <laughs> your English speakers. It's um, just a few hours north from Stockholm, so he has probably been playing here quite a lot. It's probably not too far from where you're from, is it? Not really in the same direction. I'm oh, okay. from Hanesand on the okay. east coast, oh. about... Uh, it's so more more to the inland central yeah, part, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's more northwest, right? Mm. But yeah, not too far. Thomas has kind of a difficult lie. A lot of a lot of trees in the way, and he hits some of those trees. He's gonna have a tester putt for par. He's gonna have that. Yeah, that's a long one. That's like circle two's edge, maybe. Or we actually have one guy from my hometown playing here today. I want to give him a shout out. Uh, he's not doing super well today. Uh, his name is Anton Lind. He's one of the biggest arms in Sweden. I think that he's actually former distance world champion. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. He is rated oh, high. Yeah. Pretty great bid from Seppo. Long range. Got some metal there. Good, good try. Yeah, but Hanesand is a. <laughs> I want to keep talking about my hometown. It's, it's a small town, it. but there is a lot of great players uh, from Hanesand, and they have won the club championship many times in okay. Sweden. Nice. They keep on producing great players, and I'm not counting myself in among those. <laughs> no, but nice to be from a place with a rich heritage. Yes, yeah. disc golf. It is That's something to be proud of. Okay, Thomas isn't quite as far as I thought, but he's still outside circle one anyway, about 15 meters. This is in his range. It is. We have seen it many times. Yeah.
and he does it again. <laughs> what kind of putting percentage does he have? Has he missed anything today? PA3 right in the heart there. Huge par save. Yeah, 86% circle 1x putting, so <laughs> must have missed something. I Very good. He's got quite a lot yeah. of circle 2s, though, as well, doesn't he? That's right. 44% from circle 2. Connected on four circle two points. No, sorry, I was looking at Josef Barry now when I was talking about that 86 percent, 67 percent circle one. I guess that's strange. Has he missed anything? Low. Yeah, a little low. I don't remember. I guess he's only he's, he's either been parked or he's hit mm. circle two putts. So, he, but look at that. He's only made two, two circle one putts and missed one. So yeah. two two for three. C one X. Josef Barry got himself that. Yeah, nice the birdie. One. Great bird. So he's gonna overtake. Thomas Gilbert there and put he himself is. on the top of the chase card. He's right now tied with Laura Lehtinen and Otto Mäkinen. Nice. On tied for sixth place and uh, he's in the mix. Yeah. And now Thomas is going to need a, a birdie on the next hole to get himself on the chase card. Otherwise, he'll be on the top of the third card. Great putt there, though. That's Putting like right that, he's, yeah, he's going to be dangerous. Like, even if he's not really up there, don't count him out because he has shown what a great player he is today. Here's the iconic hole 18. So many amazing moments in history taking place here on this hole. It's a par four, 194 meters, 636 feet. Playing as a sixth hardest at 4.14 and sponsored by Prodigy. 14% of the field burning it and. I remember Ricky Wysocki taking down the major here from uh, 2016 at the European Championships, I believe it was called. Or the European Masters, sorry. European yeah, Masters, yeah, 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 yeah. that's, that's right. Me. That's right. <laughs> Came down to the last hole, and him and Paul McBeth had, have had so many great battles throughout history, and that one, Ricky came out on top, and that was that was kind of a, one of the first ones that he actually he was able to come through in those in those tight battles with, with Paul. Yeah, I hope Good we can turning see, point for his career. I hope we can see some of those big players here in Europe next year. That'd be on, great. On yeah. this tour. Big high hyzer. Mm -hmm. Flips up nicely also to flat and gets quite a lot of distance, yeah, I think. That's, yeah. that's right where you need it to be. Nice shot. Yeah, we can birdie from there. It's easy to forget that this is only the second ever European Pro Tour event in yeah. history. Yeah. And it's already such a high quality event and high quality tour and high quality players and everything around it is just yeah. like so. Seems so well established mm -hmm. already. I guess that just uh, that goes to show you how, how much work they put in and how, how uh, serious they are about uh, building this, this great. Um, Tour. And Blair missed that and is quite far up to the left side and cannot really attack for a birdie from that position. I would be very surprised to see that kind of result from him. And this looks really good. He's putting a lot mm. of distance on this and look Huge how move. far up he is. That Falcor fly is like <laughs> really far. He's it? really trusting it and wow, with good rush in it. Mm. He gets huge distance with that. He is. Perfect amount of turn and just like he knows exactly where that is going to land. And one tee shot left today. That needs to turn a lot. Mm. That is not didn't coming anywhere. Didn't quite get the turn he wanted on that and he's going to be kind of walled off in those trees. Yeah, similar to Blair's. Flat yeah. earth shot. Not really birdie position. No, he really needed to birdie out there. And uh, so far only two pars. And it doesn't look like very likely to get a birdie here on 18. That was a great, great shot. Felt very safe. And you yeah, yeah, he knew right away that was, that was all he really needed. Got a full, full flight on it. And in the air for a long time just making sure it doesn't roll away and he's happy with that he has really stepped up uh, like level or two level or two since last year that 
really putting a lot of trust in his new discs that he has yeah. gotten. And, uh, He's having a great season. Mm. We saw what he could do last year on the European Championships when he was playing lead card two days of the two of the three possible lead cards. And that was very impressive to see. And uh, he's just keeping on after that. And Thomas Gilbert also really stepping up a level from last season. He has been up in the top 10 so many times this year on, on the US Pro Tour. Yeah. We're going to see a lot of him. A lot more of him this season as well. Certainly. It's not slowing down. Boy, I'm threading the needle. Pretty this good. This is really impressive. He found, uh, he really trusted that <laughs> little gap yeah, that he would hit it, and he really did. Found a line, got himself up there. It's it's pretty far to the basket still, but easy par. Could try to give it a run. Mm, got a lot of distance from that very tricky position. Yeah, this is super uphill here. Josef got great distance, and Seppel's even further. <coughs> But first, Thomas. Not really great position. He's mm. pinched off in that bush. And yeah, this is, uh, okay, he needs to, like... Yeah, reaching out with the forehand. And, I wonder uh, if he can get anything from here. Is it just like trying to... Some kind of weird roller play? Yeah, that's what he's doing. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's going to be weird, but it's going to be a roller at least. Well, there's no airspace, so no. he's kind of forced to do it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's weird for a lot of people, I guess. If you got the skill, then it probably feels pretty comfortable, but things can happen. That's a, a pretty good effort. I he's think that was he, quite he, good. He's out of the worst of it. He caught mm -hmm. something, but was able to keep keep moving forward, and that's going to be a pretty routine upshot for him, I think, from there for par. I think so. Uh, yeah, sadly, he was not able to then get any birdies here on the last three holes. He would have needed at least two, most likely three, to get up, but he didn't. He had yeah. a great, great down run going there yeah. in the middle of the, of the round, and then he slowed down quite a bit near the end. But slow start, slow end, but uh, in the middle there, he picked up a ton of birdies. Feels like that rain really slowed him down. Maybe he got tired and they needed to wait a little bit, and then he had a yeah. misrelease. Miss yeah. yeah, he slipped. Yeah. Uh, After that, he hasn't really been the same player, but... He has shown his qualities more than enough today. He's still in this. Yeah, he is. He's not too far off the, the lead pack. He's and only one four strokes behind the leader at the moment. So Definitely is in there is Yusuf Bari. Yeah, he's <laughs> even closer to it. He's <laughs> only three strokes back at the moment and putting for birdie from circle two. Yeah. He's played really well today. Stayed in their battle. He has you know, a couple tough moments, but he's bouncing right back with birdies every time. A bit of work to do for Thomas. That looks overturned a little. Yeah, that came out with the wrong angle, and oh, he's gonna yet again he's going to be from that putting from that distance. Not that I think it worries him because he's so. S yeah. Yeah, he's so good from there. I mean, <laughs> maybe that's uh, you know he's just trying to rack up as many highlights as he can. <laughs> might, might be. <laughs> I, I would be surprised if that was his goal though. But why not coming to Europe and making trying a name for yourself and I guess yeah. a highlight putter. Trying to make a European highlight putting reel. Yeah. Well, he's done just that today, hasn't he? So far, so good. But uh, I wonder if that was actually <laughs> his goal. Would this probably not? But he's hit a ton of them, hasn't yeah. he? He's, he's hit four. Four for nine from circle two. Very impressive. 44%. He's checking out the drop off behind. I think he's always, always seen who's up first. Flyer lining up a step putt. See if he can get him. 
himself on that highlight reel. It's just a little no, left. Yeah. Not today. No highlight. Well, he has been okay. throwing some really good shots, but uh, not yeah. been any highlight putting action from him. Thomas, right in his range. Yeah. Bit of a, bit of a <laughs> the scary one. Yeah, this drops off like, like mad behind there, but I believe in him, though. I really do. He really believes in himself. I really do. No, oh, that looked good. And he it's thought little, it was a little bit left. Yeah. But yeah, it would look pretty good. It had the had the right right pace and height and speed and just kind of a, a slightly too left to connect or to to end up in the bottom of the basket. But let's see if Seppo can finish with a nice birdie he here. Can. Awesome. That's a really good get. There, Blair, tapping in his par. Yep, good one. <laughs> Joseph getting a, most likely a very easy birdie from here. Super well played, yeah. He yeah. finished really strong, didn't he? he got he those last three that he needed. And he did. Ended up in a tie for fourth. He's up there together with the Norwegians, but he's not going to be... No, with, with sorry, with with Knut, Knut and Vile, yeah, Ahokas tied with them for fourth, but yes, they'll be on uh, him and Vile will be on the top of the chase card, and Knut will be on our lead card. So we're going to see two Norwegians, uh, Niklas Antila and the underdog, Lo Swedish story, yeah, Emanuel Bengts. And if there is something I'm excited about for tomorrow, it's to watch him and see how he handles this, this situation. It's going to be... And Swedes on top in the FPO as well. <laughs> yeah. There so is. they really, really came to play. That's blue and yellow colors. They are the colors for Disco Stream and they are the colors for the, on the Swedish flag. And uh, yeah, they are... They are on top of the charts. They are playing for really the well. first round and Jarva. Jarva opened second stop on the European Pro Tour. It's been really exciting. So much incredible action, such a beautiful course, so many great players from so many different places. What a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. And um, we have Niklas Antila there also. That's It's always a joy to watch him. It's a, yeah. we, we know what we, we get when we see him. Yeah, he's, he's never, well, I, I shouldn't say never, but very rarely... He, dis disappointing us in any way when he's out there playing. He's a, he's a world-class player and uh, not too surprised to see him right at the top again after that win last week. That's right. It really fired him up. He was telling that, like, finally I got that victory. It felt like he had been close, but yep. not really getting it. And yeah, we saw Christian Guokso edge him out in Tali for the first stop on the Prodigious Pro Tour. And then he didn't, uh, didn't really have his best weekend in Hainola at Disc Golf Park World. Uh, but then he came in the third stop on the Prodigious Pro Tour and took down that big victory in Oulu. So here he is trying to make his name on the European Pro Tour scene, and uh, we'll s we'll see what he's got. Doing well two. so far. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. And two Norwegians, uh, Eivin Jarnes and Knut Wallen Holland, uh, gonna be really exciting to see. They are really good players, so um, they are gonna put up a show. I'm more than certain about that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's for sure. Here we get some really cool drone shot of the property. You can see the, all the elevation change and all the beautiful scenery. So many great trees and lush green grass. Beautiful city of Stockholm behind. Very, it's very a, cool drone shot. Yeah, uh, this is, uh, if you, if you want to visit Stockholm, do it in the summer. It's one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. And if you want to visit a disc golf course in Stockholm, go visit Järva. Yeah, most definitely. Fully recommend it. And if you want to see some great disc golf action, join us tomorrow because you're going to see a lot of exciting yep. <laughs> a lot of exciting games. Yep. <laughs> Come on back yep. for moving day. It's going to be great. We'll be here and we'll be loving it. Swedes in the top. Yeah, we've got some, some Finns, uh, Estonians, Norwegians. Yeah, it, it will be exciting. But can't, now wait. can't wait to see you all there. Now I'm going to go home and uh, take a nap, wake up tomorrow fresh and ready for another day of 
action here in Järva Disc Golf Park. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us on Disc Golf Stream. Andrew Gum here. Victor Torgestad here. Signing off. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.